Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. It's just starting now. We're gonna put the show on. World champions will be crowned, legends will be made. This is gonna be epic. dream come true and let's go for the next one
Resort Group believes in Cabo Verde and may you be very successful because success of the Resort Group is also the success of Cabo Verde. Thank you very much. Good morning everybody and welcome to Punta Preta Cape Verde day number three. The swell has arrived. Finally Joe, this is what we have been waiting for and what I've been talking about on the live stream all week so far. It's pumping today and the riders are getting ready and it looks like we're in for a good day of action. Yeah we are, I've already seen the athletes, they are pumping up their nines, their eights and their ten meters. It's looking like the wind is starting to increase. We're going to go right into the action with heat number two, round number three. So make sure you stay tuned. And good morning everybody and welcome to day number three here in Punta Presa. And just look at the lines that are coming across this beautiful right hand point break. I'm Josie Ashton, join me in the booth today, Tom Court. How's it going mate? Great to be back, Joe, and today, like you say, finally the conditions are here. I've been talking about these waves for the last three days. We've seen it on the forecast coming in strong from a long way off. This is a, a really long period ground swell hitting these tiny islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and it's looking like an absolutely epic day for Punta Preta today and speaking to some of the riders on the beach earlier already getting ready there is a lot of excitement out there. There certainly is you can feel the energy the fire the fuego as we like to say back home we saw the guys surfing out there this morning we were going to be trying to start and you can see already some of the guys on the waves look at the quality that is out there that's Roberto Robert Nibaras one of the local Cape Verdeans one of the top surfers as everybody is just going to be starting to enjoy the quality, and if I'm not mistaken, that is looking like Cash, the Maui wing athlete. Let's not forget, this is also a double event where we have our sister tour of the GWA Wing 4 World Tour here in Cape Verde. Day number three is the name of the game, and the swell has finally hit. The wind is kicking in slowly. We threw a pe few people out in the water to give it a go, but conditions are not quite there yet. We are calling 16 to 18 seconds at 2.5 meters. It's looking like that is what we got. We got about six to maybe even some occasional eight foot sets rolling in. Wind speed at the moment, probably around 12 knots. So we're waiting for the conditions to just get a little bit windier, Tom, to start to get our guys and girls out there to the action. Yeah, I mean, you can see the wave quality out there by those surfers. I mean, there's already surfers, been surfers in the lineup this morning since the early hours but as we can see there it's not gonna be easy work on a kite that is for sure the name of the game is to stay at the top of the reef and uh, staying upwind in this light conditions is going to be really hard especially when there's so much water moving in the ocean um, we're going to progress straight into the first round today. It's going to be an exciting one with two big hitters. We've got Pedro Matos from Brazil and Clement Rosero from France. Two epic riders with very different styles. Pedro favoring a much more of a surfing, connecting turns, upper body movement, uh, flowing style, and Clement with his big wave experience which i think today Absolutely. is going to come into play yeah and also you know the eternal battle in between the front side athletes to the uh, backside riders we've got a you know quite a few of them out here on the water so pedro machos brazil against clement rosero from france that is going to be the first seat we can see them out on the water and they are trying to get into position but conditions are very light at the moment but we will be here ready to go as the currently AP flag is in the sky, meaning we are on standby, but we are just waiting for these conditions to improve and start off with a historical day here in Punta Preta. All right, well, you know what? As we caught up this morning with our tour manager, Tom Hartman, let's see what he had to say 
coming down, seeing these conditions, I mean, Tom, just look at those lines. You can see that set rolling in out the back. You can see how it's about to hit the reef. I mean, that's what we want to see as uh, the conditions develop today. Um, let's hear from our head judge and tour organizer. Sorry, let's hear from the tour organizer, Tom Hartman, as he's down on the beach right now. Yeah, <laughs> it has paid off. Yesterday we've been sitting all day, uh, biting our nails. Uh, it was windy all day, it's been sunny, but the waves just didn't arrive. We tried to start a heat, uh, we ran one heat, but then, um, yeah, it just didn't, it didn't seem suitable at the end of the day. And then basically by sunset, uh, the waves started to come in and overnight it was just building. And you can see now, we got pushing sets in here. We got amazing waves coming in today. I can see another big set just rolling in right now. But the wind is still light. It's pure surfing conditions, it's nearly glassy. Uh, we still get a lot of clouds in the sky, but the forecast is pretty solid also for the wind this afternoon. So I, we really hope that uh, the clouds clear up a little bit very soon and the wind is going to kick in. We got an hour now still till the, uh, till the official first possible start. So I'm quite confident we're going to start competition this morning and we're going to see amazing action. So tune in. All right. So we are back. So yeah, good to catch up with our tour manager, Tom Hartman. They're just giving us the ins and the outs of the day. We caught up quite a few people this morning. We'll be throwing that into you guys and girls so you can see the vibe, the feel and how this day number three is going. But just enjoying that beautiful drone view. Okay, we can see we've already got a kite out there, out the back, and it's almost the inverse of yesterday. We had really strong winds yesterday, keeping the waves off the coast, and today we've got the waves hitting hard, but the wind is slow to pick up. But that's going to be a make for a really technical kite surfing competition, because it's all about managing your upwind space, staying at the top of the reef, being able to ride your kite in these really light winds. But once you do get onto that wave face, we're really gonna see them let fly. Because of the side offshore winds, as soon as you're on a wave, the wind strength essentially doubles and you're gonna be able to see how kite surfing is done properly. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, and we can see some of the guys just enjoying the surfing out there. We've got a paddleboard out. I'm pretty sure that's going to be Benoit Carpentier. Let's not forget a ex-world champion on the wave disciplines. And here you can see event is on standby here for the GK Kite Surf World Cup Cape Verde 2024. We are going to go and grab a quick coffee to get this one started and leave you with these beautiful drone images just to start to wake yourselves up, depending on where you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Make sure you stay tuned because as soon as the wind is in, I reckon we're going to be in for a banger, Tom. Yeah, it's not going to be long now, Joe. It looks like the wind is starting to fill in, as you can see there on the surface of the water. I can see kite out the back. looks like an 8-meter. So not on big kites. Obviously, riders are going to prefer to ride as small a kite as possible. So again, the gear game comes in what kites you're going to choose, what boards you're going to choose. I mean, it's a completely different set of conditions to it was yesterday. So although these riders are warmed up, we're about to see Punta Preta bare its teeth, and uh, the game has definitely changed in terms of performance.
Il n'y avait pas de vent, du coup euh, les moustiques là, là, là c'est dingue, j'avais une tique sur mon visage, c'est horrible. Je peux regarder un petit peu. Du coup je suis rentré à la maison. Et du coup on est rien pour emmener euh, les... Ouais, Mais bon c'est chaud quoi. Eh hey, les gars, vous savez quoi première taille ce soir là Ah ouais, ah, 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 Vas-y, vas-y, bon, bah, on va regarder ça, on va filmer. On va aller manger un petit déj. Après, ils ont lancé quand ici ou pas Hey, il se passe quoi ces jeunes qui se gagnent Ah, c'est pas dès la première vague parce que tu pourras pas en choper une deuxième. C'est sur la dernière Ouais. C'est chez j'ai perdu. Ouais, mais si vous êtes là, vous allez vraiment pouvoir venir, je vous connais pas. C'est pas la radio. Ouais, je filmerai de là.
welcome back welcome back everybody and we are going to be going into action as it looks like the wind is starting to appear and we're going to have that first heat in between pedro matos and clement rosseo out here on the water straight into a banger this morning this is going to be a great heat two very strong riders with two very different styles um, it's it's looking absolutely epic out there, I'm not going to lie. The swells come in overnight, this is what we were hoping was going to hit yesterday afternoon and have been waiting for for the week so far, but finally is here. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's looking like a big swell. It's two plus meters, 15 seconds, right here on one of the world's best right hand point breaks. I mean, look at that drone shot, Joe. You can just see it lining up off the point, and it's going to be a good show. Yeah, and no, the boys are going to be battling it out and throwing it against Mother Nature. So Pedro Machos, Brazil, Clement Rosseo from France. We mentioned before Clement Rosseo, he was in the WSL XXL over there in Nazare. So, you know, a rider who is definitely used to sizable ways. We've got probably about six to eight foot sets at the moment. We've had some... Now, obviously, the tide will be coming up on the push. We are currently just past low tide. So we high tide is going to be at half past three in the afternoon. So we are starting to be up on the push. And there, if I'm not mistaken, that is looking like Finn Spencer, one of the wing foilers, if my eyes don't trick me. And you can see just starting to get into action. Oh, Barros. Barros looking for a barrel there. Yeah. Getting the shade early doors. What's so good about this um, sort of event is all of the riders involved are such rounded athletes, you know. And, you know, riding waves on a kite isn't just kite surfing. To be a good kite surfer, you do need to be a good surfer. And you need to know a lot about the waves, the waves themselves, how to read the waves. So you've got to be a good surfer. And you've got to be a really good kite surfer just so you're getting both of those things right because it is technical, especially when the waves start to get sizable like this. And not only that, the jeopardy is high. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this w this is a way that is breaking on a very nasty reef. It's, you know, you can see if you go scuba diving over here at Punta Preta, you will have you see a lot of the urchins, especially when those waves start to get to that hollower section. As it's bigger, the right-hander starts to open up a lot further up on the point. And I mean, Tom, look at the lines across the horizon. There on your screen, Pedro Matos, the athlete, the Brazilian, one of our top surfers. And it does look like there's some energy starting to come our way. Yeah, exactly, Joe. And, you know, if you're new to surfing or you're new to kite surfing and you don't know a huge amount about waves themselves, you can see there on the screen how the distance between the waves is huge today. And that, that's what we're talking about when we talk about wave period. And the period is created by how far the swell has traveled. And uh, a high period swell tends to be a very high quality swell as well, especially when you're on as exposed an island chain as here in Cape Verde. It is um, great to see it just, uh, it just lining up like this down this amazing point break. Going to be here on the live stream all day on the desk, so make sure you get involved in the comments. Want to shout a big shout out to Asha Voyas. Just said hi on the comments. Big up, mate. Hope all is good, and I hope you're ready for a good show. We've got Pedro dropping in to his first wave of this heat right now, and uh, it's looking a little slack on some of the waves, but the riders are going to be taking this first few minutes of this heat to be, uh, 
to size each other up and uh, see how that reef is starting to work. Yeah, and we have 18-minute heats. The top two scores out of 10 possible rides are the ones that are going to give them the numbers that come up here. And here we can see the replay of that first wave for Pedro Matos. Nice outside break. Getting a couple of nice powerful carving turns. But yeah, like you're saying, Tom, you can see still wind is on the lighter side. But now the both of the boys are out there. So we are going to have Pedro Matos, Clement Rosseo from France. First heat of the day, round number three, heat number two. And first chalk on the board for Pedro with that wave. Um, when the wave's looking, you know, the, the waves are building. I think they're going to be building all day today. And the way, when, when they're this size, board choice really comes in and makes a, makes a massive difference because you, they're gonna, the riders are going to need those bigger boards, those longer boards to get back into the wave and also to keep up with the speed of this wave because uh, when, when these big swells start to hit this reef, they really start rifling down the point. And that's what makes it such a great kite surfing wave because unlike surfing, you can skip sections, you can draw out bottom turns and you can really race down the line a lot faster than you would if you were straight surfing. So although the wave is uh, looking a little flat at the moment, not flat, a little, uh, a little slack at the moment, it's, it's, gonna, it's just going to steepen up as that tide moves. Yeah, no, and we can see, you know, with the push, I mean, we're just past low tide. I was just saying the high tide is at half past three this afternoon. So we have prime time now because this is when the ocean is really going to start pushing. All right, Clement Rossovel, again, here we have a front side versus a back side battle. Oh, was having a look, but decided against it. Yeah, you know, wave selection is going to be important today because, you know, when you choose to take one of these waves, not only are you 100% committing to dropping in and, and heading down the line with pretty much zero escape, you're also thinking about how much downwind space you're going to be losing in that competition area, which is going to take time to get back up to that outer boy so that you can get priority again. So if you get a really long wave um, and it's not a really good long wave and you waste your time going downwind, you've got to remember that these guys have to get back to the top of the reef to start again and um, yeah I know from riding this wave it really is not easy especially when there's this much water moving and the waves are this big it's not easy to stay upwind to stay in uh, in that priority spot at the top of the reef yeah no and also you know to, to be able to you know with the lighter wind conditions it's even harder to be in that spot because you know, we, we've been saying it all week on the stream here. Wave selection is key. You know, Clemani had a little look at that last one. Just look at that view. You can see Punta Preda starting to open up. Nice one turn off the top, keeping the speed so he can get past his section. This is where it starts to get hollow. Oh, decides against him. I reckon that was a good move. Did he lose his board there? Pulls out of that one. Yeah, the last thing you want to happen out there is a leash to snap. Um, it's very easy to lose your equipment to the rocks. As, uh, as the waves start to get bigger and um, also with a kite as well, you've got that added chance of just putting that extra strain through your leash. Because obviously with surfing, you don't have a, a kite to pull you. But if you do get your kite wrong and you wipe out in these waves, you can get strung out between your leash and your board. So it's important that the riders make the right wave choice, um, make the right choices when it comes to pulling out and... Uh, you know, I think take take their time to warm up this morning, but look at that backhand hack from Clement. Nice oh, drop. Oh, nice drop Back there. into the base of the wave. It was a nice move um, and uh, and a big drop. I mean, you've got to warm up those knees. Uh, these boys are keeping busy. Let's not forget they've got 10 possible rides to be able to get the scores on top two are the ones that are going to be counting. Again, what we're looking for, 100% surfing. You can see here Pedro Matos already kind of in the lead. Big open face hack off the top. Now these boys are starting to get a little bit looser. I will say you can see they're really having to get that kite down because it is a little bit more offshore than we saw yesterday with this direction. But nice all the way. Wave selection is going to be key so you can get past that middle section is the section where it does start to barrel. So you either have to be able to pull into that or kind of make your way around it to be able to get the waves all the way down to the end.
Yeah, here you can see, love those first turns from Pedro. You can see just driving, pushing off of that back foot, keeping the speed all the way along. And these are the kind of the first open two hacks. Now, this is when it starts to hit the bottom part of the reef. And this is where you can start to see the wave getting a bit steeper. As the sizes start to push in, we will be able to maybe see some barrels out here, Tom. Yeah, I think as that tide changes, I mean, as we've seen throughout the week so far, this wave, this place um, changes in nature very quickly um, from one minute to the next. As that tide drops out, it's going to sort of expose those rocks, steepen up that swell. And obviously, this is, uh, this is early doors for this for this hitting and rising groundswell. So it always normally takes a few hours or maybe even half a day to get organized um, and to start sort of settling in to, to rolling through onto this, onto this reef break. Um, but, you know, as it changes, the riders are going to have to adapt. And uh, it's all about, like we were saying yesterday, making those last minute decisions, you know, whether it's a decision to take the wave, to commit to the drop and commit to losing all that space downwind on your wave or the decisions to hit the lip, go under the lip, go through the lip or, uh, or hit the rocks. Absolutely. It's, you know, left, right, center and all around with a little spin, mate. Uh, you know, the top of the top and the best of the best out here. Pedro 7.0 already. Let's not forget that day number one where we saw the scores to that were hitting and getting those top spots, Ayrton, 15 plus. We saw, you know, the likes of Seb, the likes of Pedro, who's on the water, you know, and, and a few of the other riders. It was in the 13 to 14 area, of course, because these guys are starting to score seven, eights. We have seen tens here in Cape Verde. Conditions are there. Wind is said to increase a little bit. Having a look here at the forecast, it says, you know, around 10 o'clock in the morning, which is just about, you know, we're 9.15 at the moment. As of 10 o'clock, the wind starts to pick up to about 20 knots. That's probably, what would you say, Tom, in between 14 to 15 knots out there at the moment on August? I mean, there's light patches. You can see there on the water, again, if you're new to kite surfing or wind sports in general, the way you can tell how, what, how strong the wind is is by its effect on the water. And the better you get at kite surfing and wind sports, the easier it is to start reading wind strength. But you can see here on the inside, there's a real lull in wind. So the riders are going to be using that wave, as you can see there. They're using that wave to create tension in the kite. So once, you're, once you pick up a swell, the wind strength naturally picks up as you're riding the wave and the uh, apparent wind starts to sort of kick in. Yes, so I would say, you know, it's, li it's definitely on the light side. I mean, uh, a rider like myself, 90, Kilos would definitely struggle to stay upwind out there, um, um, but these guys, these guys know what they're doing. Clem is an artful wave rider and uh, an artful wind sports athlete on on everything from kites to wings to to big waves. So uh, he's definitely got an advantage with his multi sports background. However, Pedro, probably the lighter rider finding it easier to stay upwind and uh, holding that top spot on the reef and really taking his time to choose the bigger swells that come through. But look at this. We've got a massive, massive swell period. Yeah, uh, you can really see the distance in between them and already back up score. So Pedro's back up. So Clement is comboed at the moment because Pedro's back up is bigger than Clement's best score. But, uh, I mean, just look at the lines. I think, you know, I was talking to Pedro a little bit before there on the beach. He was had an 11 a 10 and a 9 already pumped up and he was out there you know starting to rock up and get his gear set up so i'm going to call he's on an 11 meter obviously because the wind is a little lighter but then talking to the likes of meter montedo he, he is one of the guys that loves small kites he just wants enough kind of like sometimes you can see the windsurfers when they just float their way out but yeah there let's not go. forget also the priority a little battle for priority yeah, here there. there you go all right so that is cleman is out on the complete blue neo from duotone we can see yeah. hedger the white lycra is on the purple and orange we could call it yeah both choosing the neo which is the classic wave kite 
Um, in wave conditions like this, I mean, it's, it doesn't get too much better. The, the wind conditions are perfect. The wind direction is perfect. Look at that, just straight down the line with a slight side offshore wind. R Clem really using his upper body to keep that pressure on the wave and uh, taking both hands off the bar even just to, to keep his upper body in a good position on the for the set up for the bottom turn. That said, light wind doesn't make it easy. Um, once you're on the wave, you, you do have the pressure of riding uh, the wave itself and the power from the wave. But as you can see, it is all about kite management. And um, as well as being a good surfer and a good wave rider, you do need to be a Jedi with, with the kite as well, just to make it, just to make it work sometimes. Watch out, stand to attention, ladies and gentlemen. The military is here. A big shout out to all our organizers and friends and, you know, really looking after the, the setup that we have here for the Cape Verdean event. You know, Jo and Giada, thank you so much to the two organizers that make this possible. And of course, you know, our sponsors here, Duotone and F1, putting that extra effort to make this event happen. But looking at conditions like this, this is why we push so hard for Cape Verde to get onto the tour calendar. And I mean, Tom, what a way to start off the season with just, you know, look at that. There we can see Clemartin dropping in. Look at this, yeah. I mean, this is what I was really hoping for. I mean, for myself to come to this event and to be here in the box with you and to be able to commentate on some of the world's best kite surfers and some of the world's best conditions. I mean, mm. it, it's a rare lineup out there. Uh, it's difficult to, to score a trip where you get both wind and waves on one of the world's best reefs. Uh, some people will struggle to score waves like this all of their lives. Absolutely. No, no, you can see it. And it is constant waves nonstop out here. But yeah, just look at this replay. You can see Clement here just all the way down. But I will say that you can, you know, that kite really is pulling them off. But yeah, here you can see sets are coming in. And while we're waiting for the guys to get out on another set, I caught up with Pedro earlier this morning. Let's see the vibe he had before going on the water. Yeah, look like we're gonna have sick waves today. Uh, the waves are amazing. Uh, just hoping the wind pick up a little bit, but already inflating my kites, 11, 10 and 9. I think that's going to be pretty much what we're going to have today. And I'm pretty stoked, like, I think we're going to have good conditions today. I'm hyped. <laughs> Yeah, good to catch up with Pedro there. You can see him as both of them are waiting out the back. And, yep, you know, Pedro definitely, I will say it, he is one of the guys who is hungry. He wants a world title. He wants to be that number one out there. You know, he came third on the overall ranking last year. He won the event over in Dakla, Morocco. So this guy knows what it is is to be on a podium. He knows what he has to do, and he is a specialist when it comes to wave riding. One of the interesting things with Pedro Matos is originally, he only wanted to wave ride. He hated strapless freestyle, but hey, if you want to be a world champion, you've got to be the most complete rider on the planet, no matter what you have to do and no matter what the conditions. He started to get very, very good on the strapless freestyle. And now look, third overall, you know, we, he is behind Ayrton Cosolino and Matsu Lopez. That was your podium for last season. And now, you know, just two and a half minutes in, he is in the lead. But anything can happen because top two waves count. You can get a wave on the final second of the heat. It will count, and you could take the win. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you can uh, you can take the win at literally any point. But like I s I've been saying all week so far, 
20 minutes isn't a long time on the water and when the waves are this big and when the period is this long 20 minutes is even less time yeah i mean absolutely we've got three minute transitions out there as well where we'll be throwing some interviews at you guys once again get involved on the comments give the goods the bad ask us you know if you have equipment questions if you have rider questions you know a big shout out to sweden as we can see teddy d joining in good morning mate Give us some info, you know, what you guys want to hear, what you guys and girls want to want to know about the athletes, the tour, setups, anything Cape Verde. We can tell you the nice place where the coldest beer, you name it, we have the info. Shout it out here. Get involved as we are coming to the final 90 seconds of this heat. Round number three, heat number two. What a day to start off as the waves are here and the swell is hitting Punta Preta. Exactly. Make sure you tune in live on the... GKA YouTube channel, you can follow along on the GKA social medias too. I did a 45 minute live GKA TikTok yesterday if you're into that and uh, also across the GKA Instagram uh, as well. It's all there. Here we have Clem. He's struggled to get the wave quality so far but this is looking like an absolute fire. Three massive turns straight out of the cannon. And uh, it's looking like it's going to carry on down the reef as well, which is, at the moment, it's been rare that we've got a wave that links all the way down the reef. But this is this is going to be a score that he really needs. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be need to get above an eight if he wants to be able to take over Pedro. 4.1 was his best wave. I reckon that is going to be increased after that last one. One thing you can see is the wind is really pulling the guys off of the water and off of the way. So, yeah, at the moment, Pedro Matos is in the lead. Shy of a score there from Clement Rosier. It is going to be tough. But as you can see, there it is. Closing out first heat of the day. First one in the chamber. Let's check out the highlights of that last heat. Okay, look, we've got Machu Lopez hitting the water there. Interesting board choice. He's gone for the Duotone Whip. It's a small board, I would say, for, for, for this size swell. Um, it's a different board set up to both the riders we've just seen on the water, which are favored longer boards, yep. all thrusters. Um, this That board is designed for sort of a much more skatey style, I would mm. say, of riding, which is... Uh, which is, I guess, Machi's classic, uh, classic, relaxed style. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, one of the things I always say about Machu, for me, he is the Rob Machado of our sport. He is that laid back, loose, easy style. Backside for me, him and Kiahi de Boites are the two top riders. That is what I want to see. That is body language and energy. Let's not yeah. forget, he was the champion last year, and he is going out there hitting himself, getting himself a little spank on the, you know, getting <laughs> himself into action. Whatever you have to do to get yourself in that zone. Getting himself fired up, yes. Yeah, like you say, Joe, he has a really special style. He is a tall guy as well, standing at six foot, skinny, but very light built, and he just fits himself inside those barrels like nobody else I've ever seen, especially on his backhand. 
Um, he, he's ridden this wave all his life. He's ridden waves all around the world and has more experience than a lot of the riders put together out there on the water. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he approaches this style-wise. Um, I can tell you that that board is, is very fast through the turn, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how he's uh, controlling it through those longer drawn-out bottom turns. So we are ready going in to the next heat, which is going to be heat number three. Machu Lopez up against Charlie Martin. Those are the two athletes that are going to be going in the water as we get our groove on. You can see both of the athletes all the way out the back. All right, so we can wait as we can see both of these athletes looking like there might be a wave coming their way. Is Charlie going to engage? No, he isn't. We're going to wait to see if Machu is going to go on a wave. It doesn't look like he is. And Charlie turning around there, Tom, and going here on the inside. There isn't a lot out there so far. It's looking a little morning sick, actually. Like, the you know, the way the swell's hitting the reef is a little mixed up. Um, typically it hits the top of the reef and then rolls down through, but we've got a, you know, a few funny angles coming in, but that's to be expected at the start of the swell. Why don't we go over and hear from Machu Lopez whilst there's a little break in the sets? Machu, hometown, defending champion. I want that trophy to stay home, huh? Yeah, brother. Uh, today it's a different talk. It's big waves. The wind is tight. We're just waiting for the wind to increase a little bit. It's going to be action time. It's my favorite setup. I just need to get the things together and make, a, make it happen. So, as I say always, let's go wave by wave, step by step. And slowly, slowly we catch a monkey. That's what they say. <laughs> Ah, uh, the smile says it all, Tom. The smile says it all. And, he ha you know, we saw him spanking himself to get out in the water. Someone's hyped. He's pumped today. He's pumped today. I think nothing brings the locals here greater pleasure than seeing their home break. Especially in the middle of a uh, World Cup forecast. Okay, so it looks like there's quite a big lull in the swell, but you can see some lines lining up there on the horizon. And like I said a, m a minute ago, 20 minutes is not a long time when it's such a big period ground swell. Because not only does that mean that the swell's size is bigger, but it also means the wait between the sets is longer.
All right, so there's not a lot, not a lot of waves coming through at the moment, but, you know, just as I say it, here they appear. Yeah, here we go, here we go. I mean, it's, it's corduroy to the horizon. It's just a waiting game. And like you say, Machu taking his first wave. He's pumped. He's spanked himself. You can see him wrapping the turns on that, on that board and really staying deep in oh. the pocket. I mean, you know, one thing that he really does is make sure he's in the right place in the wave. Um, you know, the last thing the judges want to see, are you shooting too far down the yes, line, absolutely. getting out of position on that wave? And le he's, he's just linking seamless turn after turn before clearly deciding to call a day on that one. Yeah, no, and really nice there for match. You can just see, you know, eyeing that bottom turn, staying nicely on the foam ball and then going up. You know, interesting, as we were mentioning before, going out on the, the let's say, the stubby nose boards. These are kind of the more skatey freestyle boards than the traditional surf, you know, kind of down the line uh, sort of construction. That's kind of, you know, there's two types of things out there. One of the interesting things with this, maybe as the wind is light, that board does have a little bit more buoyancy. Could that be a reason? Well, it's actually one of my f it's one of my favorite boards purely because it's very similar in style to a twin tip, and that means it's got very straight rails from nose to tail, and that's uh, often why they square off the nose of the board like that, so that you can keep a straight rail from nose to tail, which means you've got a lot of drive and a lot of grip through that for, through the rail of the board, but it sort of detracts from the ability to take some of those bigger drops and keep that speed sometimes through those bottom turns. You can see here with a completely different board style, he's taken his first wave of the set, um, but it seems to have backed off. Yeah, Charlie Martin, I always say it, one of my favorite athletes, kind of one of the underdogs, and you can just see lines all the way across the way. All right, Matthew, 7.83 as he just landed that. It looks like Charlie, if I'm not mistaken, okay. is out there on the Cabrina Phantom. But now Matthew Sh taking off on an outside just bomb. An that one is opening in really nicely down the reef. Look at that. You can see the white water of the wave before. You can see the road map for what looks like the perfect attack. He's taking his hands off the bar, using that upper body to drive back up into the pocket. Um, but Siding there, against it there. Yeah, there you go. He's obviously, you know, that first turn really counts because, like I said, the waves are not rolling, like, as deeply on the reef yeah, yet. Absolutely, yeah. You can see, obviously, you know, this swell hit last night around 6 o'clock. Just as sunset, we started to, you know, see the first little waves kind of coming through. Then through the night, there was actually a little bit of a storm. We had some rain last night, and then this morning, as soon as we got up for breakfast, we could hear the ocean roaring, meaning that this is all here. And this is just the iceberg. Looking at the forecast and what they're saying is it is only going to get bigger. 2.3 to 2.4 meters oh. all, the, all, the, all the way. And there you can see, and the period is going to be improving. Charlie Martin, nice to have a wave there. That was big. That was big. You can see some of these sets are coming through at least double overhead right now, if not bigger. Yeah, it's interesting. It's kind of like what you were saying there before, Tom. Some of the bigger first sections then kind of back off completely on the shoulder. You really have to, you know, listen in to the skippers meeting this morning. That wave selections, picking the ones that kind of go all the way down, like we saw there with Pedro, is definitely going to make a difference. And at the moment, we can see already Machu 7.83. There's a replay of that last wave. Yeah, the two biggest scores of the day so far are the waves that have linked all the way down the reef. I mean, obviously, the beauty of Punta Preta is the ability to link wa link turns, um, really, you know, connect with a long wave, um, you know, we see a lot in kite surfing in general, those one hit wonders and those sort of uh, one snap, nice move turns. But to be able to have a wave where you can link five, six, ten turns all the way down the reef is what is going to score really highly, I think, out there today with the judges. Having said that, 
because of the direction of the swell, because of the new nature of this uh, this wave that's hitting at the moment. Um, the judges did say in the in the skippers meeting that that first turn really counts because the wave might not connect all the way down the reef. It's not looking like it's running quite as well as normal, uh, but that is expected to change with the tide. Yeah, no, I think you know that's a, that's an important thing to say. You know, also head judge was. Every skipper's meeting, they give the athletes the ins and the outs of what they're looking for. You know, in the end, this is a competition, so you have to play to the judges. Of course, they're going to be looking at, you know, those top scores. But here you can see Clement Rosario there with a little bit of a smile on his face, still waiting for his results. See what happened in that last week. He did get that last wave. I'm just going to be having a look and updating that. Once again, I mean, Tom, these sets are rolling in. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he scored for that last wave because that was by far one of the longest rides of the day. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for Clemon to go through. Pedro Matos advancing through that last heat. Clem's not going to be happy with that. But I feel that that was, that was really the ocean just making that decision for him. Absolutely. Um, just uh, not delivering him the waves in time. Um, and like I say, that those 20 minutes just whittle away. Like you can, um, you know, you can spend five of those 20 minutes going upwind. So uh, it really makes a difference that you take every chance that you get, and the, and the waves that you do choose um, really do link down the reef. Yeah, we can see there Charlie also at the moment trying to get in. There we can see Machu about to drop in the man. I mean, for me. One of the best backside riders. Look at the verticality, Whoa. how he just goes off and off the top of the wave. That board's really working for him. Yeah, that board is working for him. And he, you can see he doesn't rush anything. I mean, he's a, he is a very chilled guy naturally, but he, the key in my eyes to his surf style is the fact that he never rushes. Yeah. And, you know, a critical situation on a big wave is very tempting to let panic set in. Very true. But the key to a good surfer is timing, I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's Cape Verdean. No stress, mate. <laughs> yeah, no stress. And when the white water is tripling behind you. All right, so 11.93 uh, versus a 4.83 so far. Machu Lopez definitely in the driving seat. Yeah, looks like Matthew is in uh, a good situation here with that 8.0. That was a solid score for a first wave, but that's how it's done. I mean, if you can get an eight-point ride on your first wave, um, you're in a very good position because, like I say, with a long-range ground swell, if it doesn't go your way, you could be waiting 10 minutes for another set, especially with, you know, 15-plus uh, seconds on the period. Um, the sets are there. But they're a long way between. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing probably in between well, about three to four sets of heat and now looking more on the free side. 8.0 for Machu, that is a very important number. Ayrton had the highest wave on that first day, 8.23. So Machu is right up there. We saw on that day number one where we knew, you know, in the end it came out that it was a tactic to stay, you know, kind of on the other side of the ladder. But now we know Machu still has the juice and the fire going out there, giving himself a little spank. We can see the body language. Talked to him earlier this morning on the beach. He is the defending champion, and he doesn't want to let go of that trophy. No, yeah, it's, uh, it's an important event for him, definitely. Um, to win in front of his home crowd last year, I know it's one of the highlights of his career. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's uh, hungry for more again this year. Um, it's looking a little slack. We've got three minutes left on the clock three and a half minutes left on the clock there is there is a set lining up out mm. the back um 
can Charlie Martin answer back? But he looks like he's going to need two convincing long waves in order to do that. And in three minutes, that is a that is a tall order. Yeah, very true. You can see Jan Alstripper here just asking, where are the strap riders as well? Uh, you can see back in the days of Martin Barry, yeah, I, Martin, a very, you know, probably one of the main instigators of the kiteboarding movement back in the days of Space Monkeys. You can ride straps if you want on tour. It is not just a strapless tour, but, you know, in the end, what we're looking for is the execution. So it is riders' preference to be w there without straps. Hey, if you feel you can come down, throw it down with the big boys with straps, where uh, you are more than welcome, get yourself out here and in the water. Well, I have to admit that that's a really good question. Yeah, to, absolutely. To be fair, because you know, why don't more riders ride mm. straps? I mean, obviously, from a le legitimate wave riding and surf style background, it makes sense to be strapless. You know, I personally prefer to ride strapless on a nice wave like this. It feels more connected. It feels more natural, and and you've got a little bit more jeopardy just keeping that board on your feet. That said. You know, there is the possibility, I was talking about the air game and how the air game could develop, uh, especially with kite surfing. And we've seen, I see it with riders like Jesse Richman and, uh, you know, riders around the world. There's a few of them that do ride waves in Hawaii and other places with straps. And you do see them going big off the lip, throwing inverted rotations, flips. Um, you know, even ri riders like Kai Lenny do a lot of toe in with straps and are pushing the air game with rotations and, and flip rotations these mm. days yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. It, it's a good question i know a lot of you know the, the riders here tend to be pure classic surf style you know devotees and and in the end that is what the judges are looking for but it would be very interesting to see how a rider with a different approach would would fare in these in, in these conditions yeah no i mean also i mean i think so correct me if I'm wrong, it was Patrick, uh, Patchy from uh, Maui just got the Guinness Book of World Record for the yeah. biggest kite surfed wave exactly. in history. And he obviously, in those kind of conditions, you're going to be wrapped in with some straps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was at Jaws, the famous Jaws on the island of Maui in Hawaii. And Patchy uh, set Guinness, Guinness Book. Guinness Book of yeah. Records record for the biggest wave ever kite surfed. There's been some amazing conditions, amazing big wave conditions in the Pacific Ocean this season. I know the boys always struggle to leave Maui because if you live in paradise, <laughs> it's hard to leave paradise. And that's probably why we don't see the likes of Jesse Richman at an event like this. But, you know, I think big waves for sure, straps, you know, come in uh, because not just for control, but also, you know, for the ability to hold speed and to, to really put extra power through the turn. But, you know, just, just like we've seen in the development of big air riding, you know, it used to be if you'd, no one would ride a handle, you know, for example, to take the board off their feet. And now all of a sudden you see riders having handles and, and starting to push the level in a, in a different direction. So I think there is space for you know all sorts of uh, kite surfing wave riding styles yeah no i think it's important to you you know to use the equipment to your advantage so great heat there machu lopez going through let's get some highlights of that last heat <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. There you can see Arthur Moraes from Brazil going up against Mitu Monteiro from Cape Verde. Mitu Monteiro, a past champion, a past world champion, the godfather of the strapless discipline. And you know what? Before we go out and start to get to the action, I caught up with Mitu earlier this morning. He was in his car. Let's see how he feels about this day. Well, finally, you know, like we had some really nice wave. This is the first day of swell, so sometimes it's a bit like, uh, you know, break a little bit everywhere. But uh, there is already some surf from the water. The wind's still light, but it's normal because uh, on the next hour we're going to have some really nice wind. So looking forward, man, I'm really stoked about this condition. So let's see. <laughs> One word that I could hear there, it is the Stoke, the Cape Verdean legend is happy that his local break is firing and showing the world what it's got. Yeah, exactly. I mean, these boys uh, are excited on, uh, on a flat day, let alone when it starts delivering like this. Um, I mean, there's nothing quite compares to the excitement of a, of a swell hitting. Um, I think yeah, any surfer out there will share that feeling of the search, you know, when you, uh, when you see a forecast coming in and, uh, and you know you're going to be in the right place at the right time. It is one of those magical feelings. I um, mean, you can see there the setup here on this sort of desert scene island. Um, we've really got uh, an, a relative paradise of, uh, of a setup for this event. You're going to see the crowd start to build later. Everybody can stand right next to the wave as it wraps down those rocks towards the beach. And you can see the town of uh, Santa Maria there in the background um, where all the nightlife happens. Um, and this place just uh, just continues to, to deliver. Yeah, I mean, just look how that wave just rolls across the rocks there as we are enjoying this third day of competition here for the GK Kite Surf World Cup Cape Verde. Punta Preta delivering and just look at the lines all the way across the horizon. This is what we want to see where we are coming to a location and here we can see the tour opener. So Mitu Montello, the F1 rider up against. We can see Arturo Moraes from Brazil. All right, Mitu starting off strong. All right, you can see staying right in the pocket up the top. Boom! Coming down, keeping the speed. This one is opening up all the way across the reef. Oh, a little bit of a fumble there from him, not quite being able to engage that turn. And now this is that section where it starts to get a little bit more hollow. As the speed goes in, me too. Shampoo all the way. There we go. I'm going to say maybe first barrel or first shampoo. First little cover. Definitely first little cover up. Finding some shade. That's how well he knows the wave. Oh, he's went. he also went... For Went for it too, but could not make it out. Artur Moraes from Brazil just uh, just parting his hair there. Okay, let's go to a beach interview right now to see what he has to say. Bom dia. Cabo Verde, paraíso aqui do Kite Surf. Estou muito feliz em estar de volta aqui ao Cabo Verde e estou me preparando para a minha próxima bateria, que vai ser contra o local daqui, Mitu Monteiro. Vamos para cima. Valeu! Yeah, there you can see Arthur uh, just, you know, kind of saying he's very happy to be here. It's an honor for him to be out there in the water with the local Mitu Montero and saying a big hello and bom dia, bom dia, galera. Everybody from uh, Brazil tuning into the stream or the Kite and Alemão and everybody over there. Thank you. Muito, muito obrigado for be joining us here. What a day. The waves are pumping and still having a little look-see, waiting for some scores. It looks like Mitu is going to be around the high sevens for that wave and Artur going for a 2.37. So let's um, kind of recap on the scores. Ayrton, day number one, he had an 8.23. Then today, highest score so far is 
Matthew Lopez with an 8.0. And uh, the drone just cruising and perusing out on the break. And having a little look, see left, right, and down. So there you can see on the duotone, that is Artur Marais. And uh, the man himself on the left-hand side, just out of the screen, that is Me Too, who by the looks of it, he's going to be out there on his bandits. Bandit number 16 already for the F1. A big shout out to Raphael on F1 for always helping us out. And he's going to be out there on his Me Too Pro Carbon, if I'm not mistaken. His pure 100% dedicated board. Nice little kind of fishtail as well to that one. Great for all kind of conditions. And yeah, this is the one that he kind of develops over here in Punta Preta. So I guess he, you know, you can just press a button and ride the wave, mate. I mean, it's great to see the brands, you know, really supporting the riders with uh, with the equipment design, you know, especially for the conditions, and uh, you know, developing boards for the riders with the riders. Um, developing kites for the right conditions, for different ways of riding. I mean, it's always been something that's been great to be part of in the industry is developing equipment for the different styles of riding. Because as we were saying yesterday, kite surfing is so, you know, varied and has so much variety in style. So, you know, you can just see if you look at the different uh, setups that f1 design or geotone design or any of the other brands design you have so many different elements from different board shapes different volumes different fin setups different kite shapes for different wind strengths and different ways of riding and um yeah you know big up big up to all the brands out there that support their riders and that support different styles of riding out there on the water yeah, me too. Obviously, you know, he has uh, two boards. He's got the Pro Carbon and also the Pro Bamboo. And then he also has a Pro Flex. So different constructions underneath that shape. We've seen quite a few of the F1 riders also out there on the Shadow, which is kind of a little bit more of a round pintail one. So, yeah. Also, you know, depending, again, you've got to choose your weapons. We saw Matthew out there on the, the whip, the stubby nose there from Duotone and Charlie with the Phantom. You know, there does seem to be two big differences. You have athletes that are going for a little bit more volume to be able to kind of get through those lully sections because I mean Tom you were you've been out there this season it it there are quite a few lulls when you get to that midsection yeah I mean it's a it's a tough wave to ride I mean there's there's lulls not only in the wave strength but also in the wind strength so you know once you're out once you're on the water here um you know anything can happen it's difficult to know you know what to expect when you drop into that wave all you know is when you do take that drop you are committing so you've got to you know get that kite movement right you've got to get those bottom turns spot on in the right place and as as we've been saying the bottom turn is often more important than the top turn in kite surfing and the way you move the kite with your body is that extra layer of complexity that you know surfers do not have you know you, it's hard enough to you know, get your upper body moving right when you're surfing and get that board flowing nicely just using the wave. But when you've got to combine that with a kite and, and you know, get all those elements bang on to make that perfect ride, that's, that's what really makes this complex. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's kind of like, you know, setting a line. You see it in surfing, those athletes on that bottom turn, like you're talking about, Tom, where you can see they just, you know, fully commit and then they draw that line all the way around and follow it until as much as possible. Match you, perfect example out there, especially on the, you know, the backside riding. We were talking to talk to Gabrielle, who we'll catch up with a little bit later. Is he says it's so important to be able to, you know, open those shoulders, like you're saying, to be able to go vertical or even sometimes pass vertical, which is where the judges are really going to be giving them those, uh, you know, that extra bit of lunch. Talking to head judge Paulino Pereira today, what they are looking for is verticality, that first turn of the wave, to making sure that from second number one, the athlete is connected and he is committed, leaving nothing in the tank. If you want to get those top scores, that is what's going to give you the love. And we've already seen a little cover up or a barrel, which is also one of the things they're looking for here at Punta Preta, as we do have that scoring potential. Me too, Montero, a high seven for a barrel. If we see one of those bigger waves and then get the barrel, I reckon we could be seeing some tens out there today. Yeah, I mean, the judges are obviously 
setting their score standard to the conditions. So, you know, like we saw Ayrton getting an eight-point-plus ride the other day in a lot smaller conditions. You know, obviously the conditions today are triple that at least, so the judges are going to be scaling their scoring accordingly. So to get a 10 out there today, you're going to not only have to get one of the bigger sets of the day, you're going to have to smash every turn. You're going to hopefully you're going to have to find a barrel section and you're going to have to connect the wave down the entire reef. And, uh, you know, there's, so there's some big asks there, I think, to get, to get a 10 today. But, you know, getting a 10 at any point in any competition is one of those magic moments where everything lines up, you know, and you, you get the wave that you're looking for and the timing and everything just comes together, which is often, you know, out of your hands. It's just, uh, it's just what nature's going to gonna provide yeah here we can see Artur he is hunting for that little cover-up section we can see some of these bigger sets they don't quite have the all the way down the line he's been caught up in that foam ball pretty much from the beginning of this wave so kind of missing those first two to three sections and looking out the corner of our booth over here Tom as well we got prime seats like you said get the popcorn out match you as mentioned no matter what you want get it on as we can see and there's the replay of that last wave, Artur Moraes from Brazil. But here you can see that wind just lunning him, and this is where he got he into got trouble. He just got he just got munched by the white water there. Bogged down, um, and you lose board speed. Mm. I mean, you do have a kite, so you can build speed again quickly. However, if you lose board speed, you lose that surfing flow. It's the same in surfing as well. If you get bogged down in that foam ball, it can be difficult to get back out. I was actually doing some late night research last night watching the WSL out in Sunset at the yeah. moment. It was live last night and um, you know they're, they're, they've got some tricky conditions there as well. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see. And it's always great to watch how people interpret waves, how people ride them. Uh, you know how how people handle those varied conditions and just looking back at the YouTube comments Jan again um, f coming back at us about the strapless wave riding saying that you know by not using foot straps you're actually detracting from kite surfing which I would say is a completely personal uh, opinion and style point um, because you know what you're looking for in riding a wave is to be as connected to that wave as possible um, is using that wave as much as possible and although yeah I, I agree in many ways foot straps can can definitely add to kite surfing and make it its own sport in many ways but does it make it more legitimate when you're riding a wave that's a good point that is a good question I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, kind of always going by the phrase of it's, you know, it's not the arrow, it's the Indian. If you can, you know, you, you could give Kelly Slater a door and he would <laughs> rip. We've, see, we've actually seen that out there. You know, I think those yeah. good guys or good girls, when they get into the zone and they find those magic boards or those magic setup, you know, sky is the limit or wave is the limit. And I think, you know, that is... Sometimes a lot of, especially let's say on the the mass market, so your your average Joe or your average athlete, athlete, sometimes we get too caught up in, ah, oh, it's the equipment's fault, or ah, oh, no, we don't have the right board, the right this, the conditions. In the end, it's about going out and having fun. And when you get the top athletes, they make anything work. Yeah, it's always nice to have something to blame, Joe. It as is. we know, it as is. we know, you know, it's... That's it's usually the board's fault. Always the board's fault. You know, I it's mean, usually the board's fault. But uh, this is why I love photography. You don't have to hand <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why we're here in the box because they just can't make good enough boards. No, bro. it's all about that. <laughs> <laughs> there we can see the the Brazilian mafia. There you can see Leo, Gabriel, and Pedro just hanging out. Obviously, Gabriel, Pedro has won his heat. Gabriel is going into action coming up next as he is going to be going up against Gray Foster from the US of A. Walking past the booth here, I could just see Machu Lopez. He's got a smile on his face. Yeah, he, you can tell he's enjoying himself out there, feeling very relaxed today and obviously very confident with his technical or, you know, his choice yesterday to um, pass up any waves. He was the only rider not to catch a wave in his heat yesterday. Uh, Back nice. to the action oh. there. Oh. 
Going over oh. the front edge there. Oh, just missing out on the old washing machine. Now you can see that's another advantage of having a kite up in the air. Assuming you don't get it wrong, you can save yourself from going over the falls. But let's look at this replay. Look, nice but bottom turn. Had everything perfect. Just buried that rail. He had this feet slightly too over the uh, toe edge and um, yeah just didn't have his feet quite in the right place and uh, yeah, that's another massive point as well foot position foot placement is something that you really need to think about it's something you have a lot of time to think about when you're on a kite you can really you know whilst you're riding move your feet get things positioned well and you've often got more time than when you're surfing a wave but Somehow when you're surfing a wave, you, you jump up, you stand up, and you don't even have time to think. You're just, you know, there on the board. But when, you know, when you're kiting into a wave, you've almost got too much time to think sometimes. Yeah, you, that means you're using brain power, mate. Nah, that's not, that's <laughs> yeah. not a good thing, especially if it's an early morning surf. You just want to be able to go into it. But, yeah, I mean, complete athletes out there, you were saying at the beginning of the stream, Tom, is people, you know, you can tell people that can surf without a kite you can tell people who have learned to surf on a kite there is a huge difference and as the equipment has evolved i mean you know remember back in our days you know the days of you know like for example the rhinos or the switchblades or there was no deep power there was not deep power in that at all now you yeah. go to kites with the bar throws that you push the bar up it complete the the tension of the lines completely goes so you can perform those surfing maneuvers then grab it back i mean it's so impressive to see how far it's come yeah, I mean, it goes back to the point of, you know, having the brands developing the gear for the riders, for the conditions, you know, making specific heights for wave riding and specific boards for different styles and, and different riders. Um, you know, back in the day when I first started, it was it was two liners, mate. We started, yeah. started with yeah. two liners. Oh, we're peakers. <laughs> Bring them on. Which seems crazy now. I reckon, I reckon we should we should get a, cont a contest involved. I'm going to shout out Martin, Jaime, Andre, all of the old boys. Yeah. A competition on the old Wapika Classic. Who would Who's win? Who's got one? Who has got one? That, those things are relics. Yeah, yeah. Drop a comment in the YouTube uh, channel right now. If you've got an old Wapika Classic, maybe we can get that. We can get that off you and we can... Uh, Start to get some some extra extra things going on. Yeah. Artur here dropping in a wave. You know what? Me too needs to watch out. He has a 7.8, but Artur has dropped him. But now looking out nice. of the booth, Me too Montella dropping in. Boom! First top turn. Boom. Yeah, that was a nice wave from Artur there. He really needed that. Um, but following it up, Me too straight away with his second scoring wave which he's, he's in a great position with a 7.8 as you know having that first solid foundational wave is gonna mean a lot out there Cause as we see it's only 10 seconds left on the clock no chance for anything else i think on the water right now and uh yeah the, those next riders are going to be thinking about starting to ride that wind already i reckon yeah let's have a look and now so me too montedo is going to be official Mitu is going to be making his way through to the next round. Intelligent move there for Mitu to grab that wave because Arto is going to be scoring around a 5.0. So he could have been in a very sticky situation. Contest experience. Let's check the highlights of that last heat.
All right, so welcome back. Coming up next, we are going to be having out there on the water is going to be Gabrielle Benetton is going to be going up against Gray Foster. There, the two getting getting ready to rumble. Yeah, you can see the waves just starting to come in as we are going up with the green flag is in the sky. All right, so while we're waiting for the action to happen, let's catch up with Gabriel Benetton as he is in the water. Gabriel, good morning. The waves are here. You are one of the backside riders here in Punta Preta. Where's the tricks? Well, riding backside in Punta is like such a hard thing, you know, because of the offshore wind, the angle that the wave hits the, the rocks. So. It's kind of hard, but you can get it. You can imagine to do it, you know? So I really love to do backside because you can do like super like straight snaps. So I think we have like quite advantage if we do the right tricks, you know? So yeah, let's go. The swell is here, the waves are big. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so we can see out there on the water already, Gabriel getting a very nice wave, getting ready. Um, it looks like we are going to be going down to the beach. Okay, Joe, we're here on the beach at Punta Preta. The waves are pumping today. How are you feeling about the day? Yeah, I feel super good, super happy to see this condition. So we have, uh, we're gonna have uh, such a nice action today with a big wave. We're gonna see some barrels, many local guys with technique. We just see me too around there, just looking for, he gets one good barrel there. So this is gonna be really fight and uh, outside the big wave. We're really happy, we're super stoked to have this event here. And uh, we hope it's gonna keep and go all day and then we can go run more and more and more event like this. Okay, obviously you, you ride this wave all the time, you know this break like the back of your hand. Talk us through how it could change throughout the day. We've been talking about the tide and the timings of this new swell coming through. Um, how do you see it developing? Yeah, it's super, um, today like it's going to be super challenging because especially when you go upwind, uh, when you try to get some wave, you have to uh, take your upwind easy. You see the guy there and make a little hard move his kite, so you have many technique to understand this wave. But soon you are on the wave, you are good, so try to focus choice, the really good choice, uh, the best wave is really important. So you have to be focused all the time to check the good one, and then you can make long open, you can make much towards as possible to impress the judge, so this is good. I'm happy so to make this event also to participate, to be fun. Why not you organize a party, you don't go on a party. So this is my point. It's super stalled also for my daughter Julia is inside on this event. So she's been training, she is so motivated. So just to give her power to go more and uh, bless of the God, we keep and go and let's see what's going on. Yeah, it's great to see you out on the water. It's great to see such a great local crew here as well. Such good vibes. And as always, no stress here in Cape Verde. Yes, no way. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. It is always cool to catch up with the local boys, our event organizer, together with his wife, Julia. A big obrigado, Manera, for making this event happen. Now, back on to the action. As we can see there, Gabriel Benetton is going up against the beast. 
That is Gray Foster, and there we can see Gray Foster dropping in. Gabrielle, 4.40 as it stands. Gray Foster now going to be scoring after that last wave. Let's see who is going to be able to go through to the next round, because let's not forget, let's have a look and look see. So this is going to be heat number 21. So the winner of heat number 21 is going to be going up against the winner of the next heat, which is going to be in between Sebastian Ribeiro and Josh Silva, who we just caught up with. So great action. Keep your eyes out if you're just joining us. Welcome to the stream. As we were saying before, get involved on that, the comments again. Jao Alstrip, strapless, making it look much harder. I will say one thing. Yes, it does separate the boys from the men, but in the end, it is the most important thing is having fun out there. Cool to catch up with Joe, Tom. Yeah, that was nice to catch up with him. It's, uh, it's awesome. He's one of the you know, main event organizers here locally. And he's, like he said, he's, uh, he's enjoying being part of the event that he's putting together and uh, enjoying the fact that the conditions are delivering. I mean, as an event organizer of any type of event, the, the most you can hope for are the conditions to deliver. And uh, it's not easy to organize an event. There's so many elements to it, so many people to bring together, so many aspects, both from a local perspective and obviously, you know, from a tour management perspective as well, just getting everything together, getting all the right people in the right places. It can be tough, stressful, but as he said, there is no stress here in Cape Verde and he was looking relaxed. No stress. I mean, you know, we've got beautiful views. We've got the screen in front of us, Tom, with the waves of the drone. You look out to the left out of the window. We've got Punta Preta firing. Doesn't get much better than this. If you can get two days in a row for them to bring fries to the booth, I will be very impressed. A nice coffee <laughs> would be handing out as well. Just throwing it out there. But no, I mean, the sets and the waves that are starting to come in, it is just, you know, it's picture perfect. To be able to start off the 2024 season on a high such as this we are pushing forward to see if we can go all the way today and we are just you know it looks like there's been a little bit of a change in the heat order so we after round number three of the men we are going to be going into round number two of the women then back to the men so it looks like we are going full steam ahead pedal to the metal it is on yeah it's time to uh to really start moving up through the ladder getting this event started kicked off into the later heats and uh, i did i did 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 we go back to Jan about the the strapless comment again? He's he's replying on uh, on the YouTube comments. If you've got any questions, make sure you ask them, and we will do our best to uh, to come back to you on them. But um, yes, strapless kite surfing is definitely harder than strapped kite surfing, and you know it has taken a lot of people a long time to look anywhere near as good strapless as with straps but that is as they say what separates the men from the boys um and you know kite surfing is all about having fun so i would always say you know if you're a free rider you're a rider that just wants to be out there and enjoying themselves then it's about what setup you want to ride you know how you ride it and um you know it's about the fun of the sport so if you don't enjoy strapless don't ride strapless, that's what I would say. And uh, these guys are the best riders in the world. We've just seen Me Too pass through that heat there um, with some good scores. Um, one of the strapless OGs um, and uh, makes this wave look easy. He does make it look easy. I mean, let's not forget guys and girls and everybody watching us from all around the world. The number one thing you have to do when you are out on the water is have fun. Doesn't matter if you're kite surfing, windsurfing, wing foiling, swimming, surfing, no matter what, you have to have fun. I mean, it is all about the stoke and all about the vibe. If you can enjoy your session and just go out there, have some banger, have some really good jumps, waves, whatever, you name it. If you were just getting into the sport, I mean, some of the best memories I have in kite surfing is that first water start, that first back roll, that first wave. And, you know, you can see here we have the best guys in the world surfing it out, and they equally come out with a smile and a stoke. That's what we want to see. Gabrielle there. Oh, oh no. This that is, is not what you want to happen. Ooh, well, well recovered. Now, I tell you what, that core can relaunch. <laughs> that was well recovered. That could have been... Uh 
could have been nasty. But yeah, Joe, it's really interesting what you say. That first back roll, that first wave. And uh, that, it goes back to that comment about uh, learning to ride strapless. Ultimately, when you've been riding for as long as I have, I've been kite surfing for over 20 years now, same as, you, as yourself, Joe, you know, where we've, we've ridden every discipline from waves to freestyle to wake style to, you know, to whatever. It's about the learning process and enjoying the learning process. So if you find something harder, you will eventually realize that actually that's the most fun because, you know, it's not about n being good at something the whole time. It's about learning things. And I think that's where, you know, you really start to get the pleasure from sports is when you understand that failure is just part of the learning journey and, uh, and, that, and it's all about learning that new thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's those, some of those memories, you just those those key moments like you know i think you both of us have been very fortunate that our dads were very involved in our in our kiting life and, yeah. and you know I, I remember my dad being you know standing on the on the beach for most of the, you know days in and days out and you know landing that first back row and you see him there with his hands up in the air or going you know the some of the, the surfing I know, I know you surf with your dad and full and he pretty much does anything when it comes to water sports i think you know it's it's such a cool thing to be able to share sports with family and friends and sometimes when you get in the marks of the stress or the you know the outside worlds or what you forget about this and you know let's not forget it is a privilege to be able to get out on the water and enjoy yourselves and it doesn't matter with what you do it as long as there's a smile and now that you know we're we're legally We've got a legal age because, you know, we're young whippersnappers. If there's a cold beer at the end of the session, <laughs> even better, even better. Yeah, I still remember that day that I saw the look on my dad's face when I first got better than him. <laughs> it was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> I, rec I reckon, Andrew, you would differ to that. Yeah, but we're yeah, not going to yeah. get into that Bigger. debate. We're Bigger. not, not going to get into that debate. Yeah. Anyway, as you can see, all of us just enjoying ourselves down here for... The season open of the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour here with the Cape Verdean World Cup. Gabriel Benetton from Brazil. Gray Foster from the United States of America in the white on the core. Looking like he's on that new section, if I'm not mistaken. The new Wave Warrior section four from Core Kiteboarding. One thing I will say after that little fluke there, it's got good relaunch. It's got good relaunch. Yeah, that was, uh, that was well recovered. If you drop your kite in the lineup here, it's... Oh. It's brutal. It's, it's worst case scenario, and it's probably game over for the equipment as well, um, especially when the waves are this big. It's definitely game over for your heat. I can't imagine uh, finding it easy to get back up wind and recovering a down kite in the lineup when the waves are starting to pump like this. I'm just looking back up the uh, the YouTube comments. There's uh, there's actually a lot a lot of, lot of comments coming in. Big up to Asa. And um, is it Lou Edge at Tom Quiet GK World Tour? Please settle a long lasting dispute between my, me and my boyfriend, Dices or Evos. Wow. I mean, sounds like you guys have spent some long evenings talking about that together. But it's a difficult one for me. Uh, I mean, I'm, I've always ridden a Dice. For me, it's like a, a nice sports car, it drives really well. It handles well, it does everything pretty well, and you can go fast and high with it. But theref therefore, it's not, you know, it's not, it's sort of good at everything and, and master of none in some ways, you know. It's a simple kite, um, it's got, you know, four lines, three struts, it's light in the air, and uh, for me, that's my choice. But then, you know, it, my personal experience with the Evos is that it's also a great all-round kite with a little bit more low-end power, maybe. So it depends on the conditions. Yeah, I think also, you know, obviously, you know, both the Dice and the, and the Evos has evolved. It's kind of those, you know, going across the other brands as well. It's kind of when, you know, going to that kind of open sea feeling with the, you know, with the fifth line, which which suddenly appeared to the 100% kind of bridal uh, delta shape that appeared the delta original delta shape like the evos or 
or you know the bandits they have a little bit more umph like you're saying a little bit more low in they're kind of sat a little bit further back in the wind they have a bit more pull then when it came to the dice or those kind of c shapes it's kind of in between not pure c where you know it's quite a technical kind to ride where you would have the vegas the razor or you know a lot of the other pure c shapes it just sat a little bit easier back and kind of would you say it kind of brought freestyle a little bit closer to the mass market Definitely, definitely. I mean, I know personally that the dice was actually based on the Vegas. The Vegas is the iconic sort of sea kite shape that a lot of the freestylers and wake stylers choose. But the dice was based on the Vegas. And what really changed those kites, and this is, goes across all the brands as well, is when they started to put um, sort of three-dimensionally designed bridles to support the leading edge of the kite, but removed the pulleys. So the bridles are then fixed, so the, it gives the rider that really direct feeling in the bar. So that was what always made sea kites so good, is you were directly connected to the four tips of the kite. So you could feel everything that the kite was doing. Oh, let, let's just go to the live action here, because this is a nice looking wave. We've got Gabriel, Gabriel Benetton. Nice backside. This one's opened up. It's been far and few between, and this here big, big open face hack. You can see slacking out the lines at that little down section where it kind of gets loose. He's got a smile. I can see the teeth. Yeah, that was one of the better ways of the heat, definitely. And he needed that. That's a good, um, a good second score to have. I think that's going to up his current situation at the top spot of this heat. Um, and with the sets looking, you know. Big, but few and far between. It's important to uh, to get those turns in. Yeah, it is. And there it is. They're coming up on the final 90 seconds. Gray Foster all the way down on the left-hand side from good the size. United States of America. Had a good event in Dakla. And now looking to try and get past Gabriel Benetton. But he is in a sticky situation. He has a 1.17. So he's going to need a 7.01 ride if he wants to take the win. And here, just not quite catching up on the big sets. He's got one minute to go. Is he going to have enough time to get back into position? I'm going to dare to say not. It was a good answer back, though. It's a nice long ride. It's worked it all the way down uh, to the end of the reef. But not, not the biggest wave, but definitely a connector. Um, and I think, you know, being able to string five, six, seven turns is definitely a multiplier on the scores. I think the judges are, you know, obviously rewarding wave size, but I think over the, over that is that surf style connectivity of turns. Yes. And just fluidity down the line. Yeah, I mean that's what they that's what they want to see and that's what we want to see over here on the stream as you can see wind is a little bit light as well. And just coming up on the final 10 seconds. So, yes, that is going to be official. We are going to be seeing Gabriel Benetton is going to be making his way into the next round. A big shout out to Gray Foster also for great heat. Let's have a look at the highlights.
and welcome back everybody coming up next big heat very very big heat is coming up next as we are getting ready for these athletes to roll out on the water so we are going to have sebastian rubedo versus joe silver So, Tom, you just caught up down there with Joe. He was looking amped, and I caught up earlier with Sebastian. Sebastian, one of the top sports surfers on tour. Joe, one of the heavy hitter locals here. There's going to be fire. There's going to be fire indeed. And like he was saying, you know, locals have the advantage at this spot in many ways just because they get to ride it all the time. They understand what's required. I mean, just looking at Sebastian going out right there, though, it is it's light wind it's tricky <clears throat> and just like joe was saying it's all about staying upwind at this at, the, at this spot all right well you know what while we're waiting for the boys to get out into position i caught up with seb earlier this morning let's see what he had to say it's big it's really big and um, we can see already some sights coming the wind's still not strong enough to go on the water, but I appreciate today we're gonna have a super nice day. I have today of event. Um, I'm feeling nervous. I think it's because it's the first event of the year, and even after 10 years, I still get nervous sometimes. And I don't know if it's, I think it's a mix of, of just super excited to go on the water because it's epic and, and I just wanna grab some waves. Uh, but yeah, let's check the conditions and go to the water all right yeah so you can see he's amped he's ready and he is ready to go and we can see also here some of the people from brazil yeah están preparado esa galera i can hear here being saying llegó la hora do mejor and he is definitely one of the top riders out here. And I can see the Kitely family, Laura and Rafael, coming in here. Hello, guys, as we already are event organizers there for Brazil. And yeah, 18 minutes of action. Sebastian Ribeiro up against Joe Silva. It is on. Here we go. Here we go. I mean, the wind is light. You can see that. <coughs> Sebastian really using that energy that body momentum to uh to stay upwind and uh, and get to the top of that point he needs to you know once you can lock into a swell you can get onto a wave you can use the power of the wave to to keep upwind to stay upwind so it really is uh it's an important point to get into the right place to to find a nice set out back and just lock in lock into that swell nice and early so that you can glide into the right position yeah, you can see it is looking light though. I mean, Joe was going out on a 11 meter and I think Seb is also on an 11. Here you can see the difference of, for example, compared to Matthew, Seb is on a traditional surf shape. If I'm not mistaken, would that be the Wham? It's definitely yeah. too small to be the session. Yeah, I think it's the Wham, if I'm not mistaken. And we can go back as well. There's been some another comment regarding strapless riding, uh, which is a very good comment and very topical to this specific situation. If you're riding straps on a kite surfboard, you can't move your feet around. And I can tell you, when you're out there and you can watch these riders, you can watch the, them riding upwind right now, they are moving their feet yep. all over that board to very make good sure point. they are balanced, they are trimmed optimally, for riding up wind and in these light wind conditions if you are set in your foot strap position there's no almost no way you would be able to ride up wind with your back foot in the right place for a wave great insight so absolutely it does make a big difference so you know if you had straps on you would find yourself taking your feet in and out of your straps the whole time just to stay up wind um, and then obviously once you drop down the face you would slot into those straps but it's a very good point um from the bug skiers on youtube 
the so Bucks gears. Thanks for the insight. No, that's, yeah. that's great. Absolutely. I mean, you know, get involved. This is what it's all about. Share us your experience you had in these conditions, equipment. We're trying to get to you guys and girls, all the equipment that is out there. As we said, Sebastian Ribeiro looking like he is on the new Wham D Lub there from Duotone Kiteboarding. He is a traditional surfer himself. Very, very, he's been a QS surfer. So obviously likes that traditional pointy kind of shape. A little bit more of volume in that board compared to for example the session which is let's say the more down the line option that duotone kiteboarding brings but yeah there you can see he's out on an 11 meter i'm gonna say one thing it looks like the wind has backed off yeah there's lines there's lines in the wind as you can see there you know there's a big lull on the inside there's a bit more wind on the outside but we're talking <coughs> you know definitely low double figure knots right now probably 10 10 to 12 knots mm. um, and depending on what, you're, what kite you've chosen this could could potentially go against you I mean these riders are used to riding in light wind and obviously you know as a top level wave rider you have to be able to deal with light wind conditions because that's when the waves get the best there you can see Teo Demanis there on the on the left. He's going to be coming up next, getting the tunes ready. We we'll wonder, we'll have to ask him what music he has before he gets on. Then we can see the Brazilians, Kessiani Rodriguez and Arthur Marias there, who was just out on the water and in the back there, Camille Losaransa. All of the guys and girls getting ready. And here, the eye in the sky. And that just looks like a screensaver, doesn't it, mate? <laughs> yeah, it does. Um... Not a bad screensaver, mm. to be fair. Absolutely. If you're at home or in the office watching this, big up from Paradise. I hope this is uh, cheering up your day, making you uh, not giving you too much FOMO that you're not out here with us in the sunshine. But that's why we're bringing it to you live from the studio because this is worth watching. It certainly is. And, uh, hello, on Gia Melissa, who's just uh, tuning in from Cape Verde. Great to see everybody here on the stream. And um, what a day to be watching some kite surfing. The name never better representing, especially for the surfing side that we have here in Punta Preta. This is the season opener for the Qatar Airways at GKA Kite World Tour 2024. And we are here down on the beautiful island of Sao Punta Preta. As you said a few days back, loved it. One of the kite surfing paradises, one of the kite surfing's wonders of the world. And this is definitely one. And a rare, you know, a rare wave, a beautiful right hander. We probably only have two of those. I'm not going to say in the world, but two of this kind of quality. You've got Dakla off there of West Point where we have the event. We have also here a Punta Preta. And I know you've got a very nice one in front of your house as well, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, there are definitely more right-handers than we know about. But there's mm. maybe only two that we know about, yeah. Jared, that's for sure. I mean... Like, don't want to get killed on the stream. Yeah, mate. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't, be, uh, don't be disclosing my, uh, my location. Yeah, <laughs> watch out, watch out. We're not, we're not going to mention any of the you know, secret waves that are around here in the islands. I know a few of the boys have been rocking out as well because then they will come and burn down the tower. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, there's a funny, you know, there's a culture in surfing of, you know, having these miracle waves in front of your house. Um, or, you know, it, not in front of your house, on your islands, on your places that you live. And like, everybody that gets into surfing, kite surfing, riding waves on any form or another loves to have that pleasure to ride it on their, on their own and to ride, um, you know, to ride empty waves. But, you know, for these guys to share it with us, that's a really special thing. Yeah, and there we can see that he unfortunately has been cancelled as that wind has backed off. They were, you know, they were out there with bigger size kites, but it's just not possible to get into position. So, heat is cancelled. It looks like we are going back on to standby as we are here for day number three of the GK Kite Surf World Cup Cape Verde. Stay with us as it looks like maybe it's just a couple of clouds and the wind will be coming back in. I tell you what, we're going to jump out for a quick coffee and we will be right back. Coffee time.
on as it is a go, go, go. So Sebastian Ribeiro, Joe Silva. Sebastian is going to be out there on the, the water with the white light crutch. Joe Silva is going to be in the blue. Sebastian, do a tone rider there. You can see. Trying to keep his weight up. Win Joe Silva out there on the F1. Joe, one of the top local athletes down here. Also event organizer again. Thank you very much to... Joe and Giada there from Nautic Sport Events. These guys, they have an awesome center over there in Kite Beach together with me too over here on the Island of the South. If you are in Cape Verde, make sure to check it out. The best pizzas on the island and right in front of the spot. Cold beer doesn't get much better. There you can see him making his way down as we are going to be starting off. We got 18-minute heats. And we are currently in heat number six of round number three. After round number three... We are going to be moving over to the women. So we continue on and moving into the women. We are going to be seeing Serena Luce going up against Sofia Monti. All right, so we are back in the water as we continue on. Sebastian Rubedo in the whites, Joe Silva in the blue. On the left there with the F1, that is Silva. On the right with the Duotone, that is Rubedo. Looks like a set is already starting to appear our way. Let's see who's going to fire the first bullet out of the chamber. Sebastian Rubedo coming out of Brazil, one of the top surfers we have on tour. He is one of the best guys when it comes to being connected to the wave. Came on fourth on the overall ranking last year. He is always a force to be reckoned with when it comes to pure surfing, and he only comes to the pure surfing events. Here you can see him right there, rocking out the Ram, the Wham D-Lab, and also the Neo, looking like he's out on his 11 meters, if I'm not mistaken. Wind speed, you're looking in between 15 to 16 knots so far at the moment. It's about 23 to 24 degrees. A beautiful sunny morning. And we are here for day number three of the GKA Kite Surf World Cup. All right, Seb, dropping in. Here we go. 
Starting off with that first wave, but I'm getting way too excited. He, 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 just, he just let me down there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can see the pressure is difficult. Pressure in the kite. The wind's actually swinging more side shot, which, um, you know, typically when you've got offshore wind, you, you gain pressure on the face of the wave. But when the wind swings more side shot, you need to use the kite more to go down the line. So with lighter wind, it becomes a lot more technical, a lot more difficult. And there you can see the weather is sunny down here. It's probably That's six that. foot and increasing wind That's speed, 60 that. knots, 26 degrees. So it's even hotter than I expected. And you are currently watching the kite surf men division. That is what's happening. That is what it is down here. And just look at the color of the water. Crystal blue all the way. Palm tree sand. Cape Verde, no stress. Yes, please. No stress. That is the island's motto here in Cape Verde. And I have to say, you do feel it from the minute you land. Um, it's very relaxing. It is. You can just feel those gears just kind of lulls just ever so slightly. And there we can see Sebastian Rubedo staying in position. He's just waiting out the back to make sure that he is right in that section when the set starts to happen. Wind is definitely a little lighter. I think we were up to about 18 knots earlier this morning. It has slightly backed off. Let's have a little look at the forecast. It's calling that the wind should be increasing throughout the afternoon. And let's not forget we have that high tide at half past three in the afternoon. We are just coming up about midway through. It is quarter to 11 on this beautiful third day of competition. And there you go, dropping in, making a little look-see. Sebastian Rebedo, he's going to engage. He's going to engage. He's chosen the drop. You can see the slackness in the lines, but it becomes all about the drive and the board and the commitment to that turn because you slack the lines on the bottom turn, but when you hit, as long as you follow through into that top turn properly, you re-engage that kite and you re-engage the lines so that, you know, so that the kite doesn't fall out of the sky. But that was really well played from Sebastian there. Three banging turns, really light wind. You can see on the chat on YouTube, there's guys saying, you know, it's, it's only 10 knots maximum, 10 to 12 knots. I would say that's probably right. And there is lots of holes in the wind. I mean, look at look at that. Look how smooth that water is right there. Yeah, Anderson Rebolsa, dude, we are missing you. As I can see here, so obviously you are a windmaster. I didn't know that. You are missed out here on the water. And the river also a very talented athlete, local from down here, hanging out and living in Germany. Get yourself back, mate. Yep, there are definitely holes. I do disagree with that 16 knot as well. It does look like that reading is maybe coming from the wind meter that is up high. So a little bit more. But yeah, it is definitely holy out there, as you can see. When you see the locals not being able to get into position easily, you know it is coming. But yeah, I'm calling like you around 12 knots. But yeah, as I say, mate, better than watching it. Get yourself over here and get back into competition mode. Exactly, exactly. I reckon 90%, 95% of kiters would probably not be able to get out wind in these conditions. Yeah. No, because not only, you know, what you can't see, I mean, you can see the fact that the wind is light, but what you can't see is the the, the movement of the water down the point. Where when you've got waves this big, it starts to drive water down the point, and a lot of surfers will know this as well, because when you're out there paddling, you end up paddling constantly up the point just to stay in position. Mm. And it's l just like that with a kite as well. You can see there... Joe De Silva just resorting to body dragging on his board, basically, just to not lose any downwind uh, pressure. So, like, you know, if you're t to get up and riding on your feet, you have to move your kite. Yep. That's going to drag you downwind in these light conditions. So, this is a technique that you learn when you first start kite surfing. The old hand in the water. And you wouldn't believe it would ever come in in a world championship event but <laughs> it has done right here look at that you cannot forget the basics mate always never forget the basics they will be handy body dragging deep water pack down you never know self rescue <laughs> you never know self rescue ladies and gentlemen if you do not know how to get back to the beach wrapping up your lines and holding that kite by the ears you need to learn that skill you would never know when you need it yeah exactly exactly if you uh 
follow me on YouTube. You will see on my vlogs uh, many a deep water pack down, many a session gone wrong. As uh, yeah, look for me, Tom Court on YouTube, Tom Court kite, and uh, you will see many a sketchy session both on a kite and on a wing foil. I've illustrated many a time what things can go wrong um, over over the years because uh, one thing I'm never afraid of is uh, the worst case scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Anderson here also saying, yeah, beautiful that conditions separate the man's from the boys. Yep, that is true. It's incredible to see, you know, those top athletes, they just maximize efficiency and they That's really it. can be out there on a small kite. This morning, when it was pretty much like this, I was talking to Mitu, and Mitu is known for going on smaller kites when it comes to being out there. And he was saying, yeah, it's almost eight meter over. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, I would need maybe a 20 just to get up and going. It just shows that, you know, knowing your equipment, being tuned in with your gear, it does make such a difference. You know, talking about equipment and construction, light winds is becoming a big thing because not everybody has perfect you know 15 to 20 knot conditions every day you know hydrofoiling foiling wing foiling and then you know what what a lot of the brands are looking into instead of redefining kite design where you know kites are pretty much where they can be with slight tweaks every year is the construction you know we've had the appearance of alula we've had the appearance of different materials in boards that make them lighter stronger have similar flex patterns you know being able to you know, be out in less wind or go out in more wind. And also, you know, that kind of plug and play feel that we can see worldwide is that now, you know, these days you can go and buy a 10 and the wind range and, you know, with the deep power throw and how much one kite will allow you to enjoy this sport. I think it's, a, you know, really hats off to the brands of how far they're taking the, the design and construction. Yeah, I mean, it really is the next step when it comes to design and development of gear. Uh, I mean, over the years, I've had the pleasure of working with, alongside like Ralph Grossell, who's been a long-term designer for, for Geotone Kiteboarding, and he's been, you know, instrumental in this next development stage of going from changing design to changing materials and changing materials like we see in f1 racing like we see in all sorts of other sports changing materials can have a huge effect huge. on performance and especially comes into play with the, these light wind conditions i mean first we had the sls which was lighter weight materials and then we've got d lab as you mentioned, Alula materials that many brands are now choosing to use to reduce weight of the leading edge tubes and uh, thinning down their bridle lines to much thinner, much thinner line materials so it reduces not only weight but drag because you've got friction of the wind, you've got all sorts of things when it comes into your know, aerodynamics. You're playing with aerodynamics and aquadynamics. Yeah. You've got the board, which is all to do with aquadynamics and efficiency in the water, flat rocker lines make it easier to go out wind. And then you've got aerodynamics of a kite, which is essentially produced of a very flimsy um, material. And it's very difficult to predict how the aerodynamics flow around you know, a, a material canopy. Yeah, and it's multiple variables out there. And it, like you say, it's so hard to predict and to do that. And that is just, you know, testing and testing and testing and trial and error and ideas and construction. And also one of the, you know, long, you know, longevity of equipment as well. Not everybody can change their kites every year. You know, not everybody can buy a new kite every year or renew a kite. So also, you know, what brands are looking for is, you know, that kites can last for, you know, if they're looked after and in the proper way that that kite will last you because, you know, in the end, the reality of it, it's a it's a beautiful sport. But I think one of the, you know, one of the most important things that has been achieved is that kites one size kite has a much bigger wind range now due to you know bridles due to bar throw due to you know the fact that they can put it into different positions which makes it a lot more accessible for your average public for people who you know can only have one and not have a you know a whole quiver of kites i think that is awesome because then you can you know enjoy the sport no matter what no matter how and still you know be able to have other toys in the garage because you know the garage is getting bigger and bigger mate yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah, wind range is a big topic, you know, because, you know, the kites definitely, you know, every, everything's gone up in terms of, you know, living costs and, and things over the, over the last few years. But you can have a quiver 
of just three kites now, which covers every condition from the lightest of light winds all the way through to those storm big air conditions, you know, and, uh, you know, as well as offering, you know, kites that have bigger wind ranges, you know, we've got kites of different constructions, so you can have stronger kites versus you know, lighter kites. So, you know, there's, there is the, that option for, for customers. Okay, so it looks like we've gone back onto standby. The wind direction shifting a little bit side shore and definitely dropping off to a sort of sub 10 knot level. Um, but the land is heating up. It should, in theory, start picking up. Yeah, and I've just been told also by a little birdie in the ear is that we won't be restarting with this heat. We will start with the next one. So the next heat that will appear when conditions come back is going to be in between Teo de Manis and Woodley Hall. So those are going to be the two athletes that will be going back on the water. But as it stands, the wind is light, uh, too light at the moment and has died out once again as it is very much now I can see a reading of 10 knots so that's not suitable so we are going on to standby here in Cape Verde stay tuned make sure to tune in also to all of our social media channels we will let you know as as it stands we are just going to be going on standby and I can see Copper Kitely Bon dia, bon dia, bon dia. I hope everybody is okay back there in Brazil, enjoying Cape Verde. Tom Court here with me. Behind the scenes in the box, it's all going well so far. We've had some great conditions today. Um, we're just on standby for, until the wind picks up, but it's looking like it's going to be another bag out of an afternoon.
Okay, guys, and we are back. The event has been called back on, and we are on to the next heat right now. It's looking like it's firing off straight away. Two young riders on the water with some good sets coming through and is opening his account straight off the bat. Oh, straight over the falls. I think that was Theo there just getting it wrong on the inside. With Woodley Hall stuck in the foam ball as he goes down the line, but working it to the inside. Okay, there we go. Theo Demanes and Woodley Hall. Two young riders looking to prove themselves out there today in these challenging but big conditions. Oh, getting absolutely munched at the end of that one, but Teo already taking off. And here we can see as what Decent. kind of scores are coming up. Still nothing on the board so far. Similar ways for both of them, as I can see some of the judges start to drop some numbers. Yeah, it was a good open, good opener for the Heat. Nice to get Chalk on the board straight away. Because, um, like I say, there's a lot of uh, time between sets, so you want to set that first wave score as high as possible so that it gives you the rest of the heat to take your time, take your pick of the next wave and get back up into position. Theo taking a bit of a fall on that wave, but locking in a few nice turns before, before a non-completion. How do, how do the judges feel about a, a fall at the end of the wave, Jay? Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're going full commitment, it's going to affect on your, you know, your end score. It's not going to be the same as if you do land it as it's as it, you know, kind of finish off on a high. But if you are getting down and already and really risking it on that final section, you're going to get extra kudos. But yeah, if you land on your feet, you're obviously going to get the highest scores. And you know what? Yesterday I caught up with Teo Dumanis just while he was waiting as we had no wind there yesterday. Let's see what he said because he's looking on full action today. All right, Stan in here with Teo de Manis. Teo, welcome to Punta Preda. You had some very nice heats out there. How are you feeling this morning? Feeling very good, thanks, Joe. Yeah, it's my first time here in uh, Cabo Verde, so I, I've been having probably like six or seven sessions in Punta Preta. This wave is very magical, like uh, the way the wind gets in, the direction, and uh, it's such a nice spot. Yesterday, I managed to take the first uh, place in the round one, so I'm super happy to go straight to round three. Today should be an interesting hit. I mean, this spot is hard. Those hits yesterday, like sometimes there were no wave and you had to wait for the big set. I managed to get the right wave and I think that makes a big difference when you get the good wave selection. For sure, give you a big advantage. So I'm happy of the it went yesterday and today I'm giving, gonna give it all to, uh, to do my best and uh, keep going into this comp. Yeah, one of the things everybody is saying is selection is so key, especially, you know, when those sets come through, if you can perform out there. But let's talk a little bit about gear offshore conditions what's kind of your setup for these kind of waves yeah definitely i used to ride a lot the drifter with cabina this is my go-to wave kite you know when i as soon as i go in the wave but this spot is so offshore that i could almost have ride like a moto x which is like a more versatile kite so it's pretty interesting most of the wave you want like a proper wave kite but this wave is so offshore that you want a kite maybe that goes a bit more more forward in the windows so it's not like necessary, I think, to have like the best wave kite, but you can have a kite that's really great in uh, those uh, upwind performances. That's gonna give you like as as long as the wind is offshore. But uh, yeah, definitely. Yesterday I was on the Phantom uh, five six from Cabrina and the a drifter, and it felt so good, like on the nine meter drifter. So yeah, it's good out there. And uh, today condition, as long as the swell is showing up, it's gonna be insane, and I'm looking forward for those conditions. 
Absolutely, and we're looking forward to seeing you out there, Teo. Teo, good luck, and we'll see you on your water. Bye. Boom, there you can see Teo Domanis just giving the ins and the outs of what he felt about the equipment and how it is out there as we are here in the booth. Beautiful day, the sun is shining and we have about 12 knots. It is pretty light out there, Tom, but now we can start to see some of those sets coming in. The left also off of Punta Preta is going absolutely ridiculous we we're just talking to some of the guys because you know normally when it's lighter wind they kind of you'd think hey walk up wind and go it into the wave on the other side but they can't because it is so big and so dumpy so they're really having to body drag use a boat paddle up into the section and hopefully the wind's going to increase because as it stands we have tail demanis is in the lead we have everybody starting to arrive on the beach the vibe is here cape verde full steam ahead but let's not forget no stress no stress at all, yeah. I caught up with Teo on the beach in the last couple of days as well, and he's such a cool kid. He's a young, keen rider, obviously really enjoying himself here on the island of Sal in Cape Verde. Um, look, look at the beach, it's starting to fill up right there. We've got, uh, I mean, all sorts of people, all sorts of characters cruising the sands on their uh, fat bikes. This place is super popular for tourism from all over Europe. It's an amazing island graced with some incredible conditions. It's pretty much a flat 26 degrees every day. Uh, it's sunny. The, I haven't seen a cloud since I've been here. The watercolor is insanely blue. Uh, I mean, what more could you want, really? Um, yeah. It's it, doesn't, just, it doesn't get better than this, mate. It doesn't get better than this. It does not get better than this, especially for kite surfing. I mean, even if you're just here for sunbathing, it's still an absolute spot. Tan? Have we got tan yet, mate? It's, yeah, you're getting there. Not, not too bad for two, you know, white palms. Mate, I've got a burn, mate. It's not a tan. <laughs> this is a burn. I'm fried. I've only actually just stopped having pains on my back of my neck, carrying my backpack in every day because uh, that classic British burn has just set, set, settled right in yeah we don't need candlelight we just need to you know get the old legs out mate <laughs> don't need a heater that's for sure <laughs> so yeah as you can see action is out on the water we have uh, already got a couple of scores tail to Manor seems he is in the lead of 4.03 versus woodley hole coming from oz with a 3.40 very nice style this one is young australian great to see him here with us the island of Sao Cape Verde, Ponta Preta, and it is going off. Just need a little bit more wind, but hey, there I can see it looks like Woodley's going to be taking off on a nice set wave. Look at how this one is starting oh, to ramp that, up. That is looking what we want to see. That's oh, nice heavy start to the lineup. Boom. Oh, getting yanked there. Let's try and get that kite down now. This is the section here. Let's see if he can make it around it and get a good turn. Mm. Trying to make it past the foam ball. Here we go. Big. Oh! oh. Again, That's similar to what happened to the Brazilian where he lost it and went on that toe side edge. Yeah, we've got a lot of support for Woodley coming in on the YouTube comments. Um, obviously, a lot of support for him around the world. He's a good rider. But it is tough to be riding these conditions. You've really got to commit to that bottom turn. And as you commit to that bottom turn, you're going to feel that kite slack right out. Yeah. But if you don't commit to it 100%, you don't get the pressure back on that top turn. So, you know, if you're not used to conditions like this, it can be really tricky to co commit to that bottom turn and get your head in the game when it comes to uh, linking those turns. And obviously having your feet on you know, in the right place on the board is uh, is critical yeah and a big shout to everybody watching us back there from down under in australia it would be great 
to have an event back in Oz. I can see Kaito Australia here joining in on the stream. Freestyle event in Woodies. Go back to Mars for some waves. We are all about it. I will have a Cooper's Paleo any day of the week, please. Oh, my that goodness. That would be so good to be back in Oz. Help us out. Hey, it would be great to get across the ocean and start to get some Australian vibes. But, yeah, cool to see some more Aussies coming back here on tour. And Woodley at the moment looking. He's got some solid... Definitely doing good wave selection out there, and he's going to be dropping in on yet another one. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I mean, Australia, talk about a great place for kite surfing. Both east and west coasts ha are blessed with some of the world's best conditions. But look at this. He's really making the most of this wave now. He's got one that's linking down the point. He's, it's a good recovery after that last, after that last wave. He's making it happen quickly. Well, it looks like he just, uh, just didn't, couldn't quite take that yeah, foam got, ball there. I got some great memories back from what was the days of, you know, the Eros days when they had the HQ there. We would go up to Nalu or also, you know, the Sunday sessions at the court after oh a nice little bit of a Woodies. I know you remember oh those, mate. Big up the Fremantle crew. Yes, yeah. please. Perth, West Coast, Australia delivered some of the best uh, kite surfing days of my life, I would say. It was, yep. I, Wood I Woodman's agree. Woodman's Point. Um, the pond, uh, Margaret River, yeah, all the way up to Nalu, Cottesloe Sunday sessions. Oh, I mean, uh, oh. Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Max and the Cooper's Pale Hour. It does not get much better than that. Seems like a dream now. It does. It does. It seems like a very long time ago. That's a worry. <laughs> yeah, that, that was when the the pound was three dollars to the pound, and I believe it's probably the other way around now. Yeah, that was when I could actually. <laughs> that's when I could actually still freestyle, mate. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> And now Oz, one of the absolute killer locations. And like you say, you know, we had a we had the Kaisen event over there in Torquay. You know, our, one of our ex-world champions, James Carew, who's injured at the moment, but he's coming back strong. And yeah, always great vibes down there on the Australian coast. So hopefully it will be great to be back. But continuing on on another coast here, Cape Verde Islanders South. Waves are good, but once again, we're starting to see the old doggy paddle. This yeah. is not a good sign because it means that wind is dropping. And I'm looking up at the race tower and I can see them starting to eye up the conditions. I tell you what, it would be good not to be eating the Mrs. Max on this because you need to be light to be get going so far. Yeah, exactly. you got to have skipped breakfast to, uh, to stay out wind today, that's for sure. But it's a good technique, you know, lying on your board, um, bo body dragging out wind. You, you lose as little ground downwind as possible and it really uh you know it can make the difference can definitely add an extra turn to your wave and um like because the wind is so fluky and up and down out there as well it just helps you get through those lulls until the wind comes back fills in and allows you to to get back up and riding which we can see right there but yes <coughs> i remember I, talking back back about australia i remember judging the australian nationals actually now that now that i think about it years that was ago true and yeah i think i think even kiahi was freestyling mate yeah kiahi also another big australian name remember daniel anderson oh daniel yeah, big up yeah. if daniel anderson is uh still into kite surfing and still watching this good lad got me uh in fact i met him at one of my first world cup events yeah no it's 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 such a cool crew down there on you know uh, woodies and Fremantle and that side of them what was that event where they'd have a big kite event once a year and we'd all go kite fest it was kite fest kite fest, kite fest. yeah wow the nightlife of kite fest is will remain censored for the general <laughs> public no, no, i've got it all on my hard drives Joe. one day <laughs> oh don't one bring day those out. you know when we don't mind it's all gonna come out on my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll keep, I'll keep that, I'll keep that secure. Thank you very much. But no, <laughs> great, great times. I mean, you know, all of us are so fortunate to have traveled the globe. You know, following our passion. And I think, you know, sometimes we've been talking about it before. Don't get caught up in the moment. Like, enjoy every single moment as you can. But do remember, sometimes when you're, you know, for lack of a better, better word, complaining about, oh, it's a gusty session, or oh, I didn't have this, or I didn't land this move. Remember, you are still enjoying yourself out there in the ocean. Yeah, even if it was the board's fault that that... <laughs> even if it was the board's fault. <laughs> But yeah, it's definitely, you know, something that 
you know, sports like kite surfing, surfing and you know, wing foiling as well really bring to, to the forefront of attention is, you know, how, how to appreciate nature around you, how to appreciate those days, those conditions and, uh, you know, the bountiful plenty of, uh, of fun times that there are to be had yeah. out, out there on the water. No, no, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it is all about the stoke. We've heard it from a few of the riders. It's all about going out, enjoy yourself, having a good vibe. And, I mean, what a third day of competition is given to us. But I am going to say it. The wind is playing games. Yeah, the wind is always, is always playing games. And, you know, especially when you're combining different elements of conditions from waves to wind to water, chop, uh, and all of that. Um, You've got a lot to you've got a lot to line up and a lot to play with, but I know that uh, you know there's a lot we can learn from conditions like this. There's a lot we can learn from understanding the wind and understanding the waves. I know fellow commentator um, Lewis Crathens big into his wind education. Absolutely, and uh, talking a lot about you know understanding the environment and how wind can be good for all of us. Yeah, no, big shout out to Lewis. Looking forward to seeing him very soon. He was. One of the main mans down there, the Red Bull King of the Air, and also on a lot of the GK events that we have here. So nice to get be getting the family together and get the team back on it. And you can see there Woodley going down on a very nice wave, just not being able to get engaged. It looked like it was closing out. Big first open face hat, keeping the speed there on that one. Two solid good turns. Now let's have a look at the scores because it it, it is looking good. And at the moment, it looks like Woodley has the upper hand here. 7.40, and his smallest score is a 3.4. Maybe improve it, maybe not. It's going to be close. Yeah, not much time left on that clock. But he's sitting in a good position. Here we go, though. We could have an answer. Teo Demanis there. Cabrina Affley out there. Coming down with the drifter. Let's see. One minute to go. This could be the nail in the coffin. Does he get a good wave? First good turn. It's looking like it is opening down the face, but very close to the rocks. He's going to have to risk it. Turn number two. Doing wow, Tom. There you go. It's linking onto the inside section. The wind is going it's more offshore as he goes down the wave. You can see him really, ah, oh, really amping up that amplitude of turn as he went down the line there. Such a shame he didn't get the finish. Woodley answering back, open face carve, holding on nicely to that rail, almost got pulled over again. Just not quite going all the way to the top of the way, but still nice, setting that bottom turn, getting into a groove. There we oh. go, full screen action. The Aussie, 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 Aussie. A little bit of Pantan there as he shampooed on that one. That was nice, two nice waves, delivering in hard conditions. But you can see as they get to the end of the wave, Pressure gets slightly more as that wind goes slightly more offshore. So you really can start to see some more vertical turns. But that, there's going to be two good scores dropping there. Yeah, there you can see. So we're going to have to wait for those results to come in. But while we do, let's check the highlights of that last heat.
Good morning and good evening. We are back in action here for day number three. And coming up, we're going to have Sebastian Ribeiro, Josh Silva. This is a big heat. It was cancelled before due to conditions. Now it is looking like conditions are on two very heavy hitters. Caught up with Sebastian earlier as we had that interview where you can see one of the words he said was, it is big out there. There's definitely some size coming through. Um, they have to wait for the sets, but once they come through, there's, um, <clears throat> there is definitely some size to it. Uh, this is a rerun heat, as you say. They were both out on the water already, so they're going to have they're going to have burnt a little bit of energy, um, just working their way up to the top of the box for the first for the first 20 minutes, and now they've got to do it all over again just to get round uh, just to get round through this next round. Um, so, at, when the wind is light, it does take a lot more energy. Um, as a rider, you know, to get upwind, you're doing a lot, a lot more with your kite. You're working the kite a lot harder to generate power for yourself. You're using your body to, you know, tweak the board and moving your feet on the board a lot just to make sure you're balanced correctly. So it can often be very tiring to ride in light wind. Yeah, and also, you know, you you can't relax like you're saying. You really are pushing against the board. You're pushing against everything. You're really racking those kites up and down, up and down. Because you know, one of the things especially with some of these wave kites they have that heavy bar pressure which is actually that's probably a good thing to be able to bring up you know guys and girls back there on the stream what do you you know what are your views on bar pressure wave kites they normally have a little bit more heavier bar pressure so you know it's not as as reactive that you kind of yank it really when you want to some of the let's say big air kites or more free ride kites you want that that kind of uh, automatic replay as if you were kind of using a steering wheel with, with you know a abs what what are your views tom well, it's an interesting one because bar pressure is, you know, is a combination of many things, you know, because it could be just bar pressure or it could be feedback directly from the kite. And this is, goes back into what I was saying about kite design earlier, uh, like the, the difference in design between wave kites and sea kites and freestyle kites and big air kites. They all have different feelings. Yes. And... You know, that, that translates often in a simple term into bar pressure. But my feeling of it is, you know, a lot of kites that have more complex bridles mm -hmm. on them will have a high bi bar pressure, but they'll, they'll also have a little less feeling as to where they are in the sky. So you often need to, like, look at where the kite is to know where it is. Whereas the more simple designs with the fixed bridles, with the no pulleys, um, direct and, uh, and yeah a much more direct and that translates down all the way into like a C kite where the lines contact directly to the tips of the kite and that's why a lot of like core riders prefer you know having C kite especially freestylers because they they know where that kite is without ever even looking at it because the feeling is directly to the bar and that can translate like you say into bar pressure or it can be bar feel and I think you know that's down to every rider's individual preference individual style and as we've seen um, with riders like Ayrton they're, they're not necessarily riding the kites you might expect them to be riding true um, for for the conditions true because you know wave kite characteristically is a very good kite for drifting downwind is stable in the air, it's slightly lower aspect ratio, so it makes it stable and r goes down the line with you so that you need to do less with the kite. However, on side offshore conditions, can make it tricky for re-entry. Yeah, and here we can see, making it look easy, Sebastian Ribeiro first, big oh. open face all the way up to the top, driving down. You can see connected 100% to the way. Three already good hacks, keeping the speed so he can make it past that end section. Oh, Goes nice. off again. That is what we are talking about. This could be one of the best scores, vertical all the way up. And you can see he's not even looking at that kite. No, nope, like, It was almost like there was no kite there, so that... It's going to be a high-scoring wave for the judges, definitely. Like once you lock in to that flow and that rhythm, you can just see his kite sitting there. He's hardly doing anything with it. He's using the power of the wave and the momentum in his board just to set himself up for these turns. I mean, look at this, bang. His upper body changing through the turn, locking into that smooth bottom turn to just attack the lip again. 
Um, I mean, that is um, as good as it gets when it comes to flow at tree on the water. Yeah, and Joe Silva coming down. Oh, a little wibble, a little wobble. You can see he wasn't quite happy with that getting pulled off. Going to be interesting to see that way from Seb. Ayrton, 8.26. Match you today, 8.0, the best score so far, and an 8.67, well deserved. So, Sebastian Ribeiro, highest score of the competition and of the day so far. And here we can see Joe just got caught off the top there and then kind of fumbled down. Kite wasn't in position, not being able to make it through on that section. Yeah, and you can see there, that's the consequences of getting your kite position wrong. You know, like everything was looking perfect for him on that wave initially. But as he locked into that bottom turn, he didn't have the kite in the right place. So when you hit the, hit the lip at the top, you're not ready for re-entry. And then you can see that the knock-on effect of that is it bounces your feet off yes. position on the board. And then you spend your time A, correcting the kite, B, correcting your feet, C, correcting your body position. And uh, you start to really sort of lose that flow. And look at this. It's probably about, you know, nice, solid five foot coming in on some of these sets, maybe even bigger and Seb is starting to really seem at ease out there. Back to back, two good ways. But that first one, that 8.67, and we can see we'll find a replay of that one because I know that Josh Silva has also had a wave which we will be catching very shortly. Here we can see Josh Silva. This was the one as he's starting to get into a groove. Yeah, here we go. Local knowledge starting to pay off but I bet these boys are very pleased that they re-ran this heat all right here we can see it Joe Silva Going to be dropping in. Here we go. This was that last wave there, Tom. Yeah, I saw a few nice turns out of the corner of my eye. But look at this draining on the inside, starting to steepen up. That was a real nice in-the-pocket top turn. That's tricky on the face when it's foamy like that because you've got, obviously, the bumps of the wave before. Um, and, uh, yeah, unfortunately, just sort of dying off on the shoulder for him there. Yeah, not quite being able to get underneath and get the kind of wave that he wanted. Still wave selection, but at the moment it is definitely looking like Sebastian Ribeiro is in the driving seat so far. So waiting for scores on that last wave. Joe looking like he's on a bigger size board. I mean, he is one of the heavier guys out there. Very powerful rider. He's obviously going to be wanting maybe a little bit more wind. And here we have Sebastian Ribeiro. Oh, okay. is he getting in? Oh, a little shampoo. He was after it. After a little Pantene action. But you can see he's really starting to feel the flow. He's getting back up the point really quickly as well now. You know, it looks like the wind's starting to fill back in. Um, and the waves are just coming through quite consistently, which is what more can we ask for? As uh, Anderson Robocas is saying, wow, it is looking good now. And it is definitely looking good now, I can tell you that. What would you give to be out on the water right now in these conditions? Yeah, it certainly is. And we can see people happy about Woodley getting through as well. Here's that replay. One of the things I love about Seb is he is always connected to the wave. So he's not going out far out in front, which is you would only be able to do with a kite. He is really surfing it. He's using the board speed that you were talking about there, Tom, and maintaining that all the way. He isn't using the power of the kite. He only uses the power of the kite when he needs to take it to his advantage. So maybe to be able to go off the top better, to be able to get back into that position around the around those sections. This is why he's getting those high scores, highest competition and wave score so far here in Cape Verde. And he's just gone and pulled off go. the highest combo. combo. So he is the high of the high of the high. Triple threat, Sebastian Ribeiro, 15.80. He is meaning business out there. Yeah, that score dropping at a 7.13 for that third wave in his heat. And uh, yeah, you can start to see he's feeling the flow and the ocean is delivering. 
getting back up the point nice and quickly, getting ready, locking and loading for that next set wave around that outer marker boy. Joe De Silva just finding his feet um, with a 3.40 um, on that last wave. But like you say, he's riding a bigger board, um, which I think he's been unlucky with the waves that he's chosen so far. They've had a few lumps on the face. And, uh, you know, as soon as you start hitting some hitting some chop, it's hard to keep the flow. But there we go. Look at that. Oh, that was, that was critical and really used his weight to kind of come back down and land that. Oh, Just land getting that powered off. But he was pulling right in the pocket there. Joe Silva starting to connect. Seven and a half minutes left. Let's not forget we've got a bout. 18-minute heats are what is happening out here on the water so far. And here you can this see Joe Silva. Turn. This first turn. Bang. Really hard to land that. It is, yeah. And you can see it. He kind of got him on of a wobble. And here again, good off. But this is where he kind of starts to lose it. It's just, you know, a lot of power going through the kite. Not easy, especially if you're going to risk it to, you know, hit it at that critical section. Still, Josh Silva, seven minutes to go. And it looks like out the back already. Sebastian Ribeiro going for another wave. Another bullet in the chamber. This right off the peak of the reef here. What's he going to do for his first turn? Big foam bounce off the lip, locking in. Once you're into that flow, you can oh. you know that he's he's got that tension in that kite and he's using his board to full effect. And he's just keeping the speed all the way along. Three big open face hacks. Nice and vertical. This is looking like maybe even a better wave than one he had before. We leave it down to the judges. Let's not forget for everybody here on the stream how they judge. They're looking for commitment, dedication, pushing it into the pocket. And this is textbook. Look at that right on the lip, all the way down, drives through the fins. Here you can see that kite tension. No tension in the lines. So he can get to that vertical point and then pushes it back down. Keeping the speed all the way along. Sebastian Ribeiro absolutely killing it out there so far. He has the highest score from before with an 8.67. I reckon it is. There it is, Tom. 9.43 Sebastian Ribeiro. Bada bim, bada boom, ladies wow. and gentlemen. Wow. That is a, that's a high score. That was a pretty pretty close to a to a perfect way for the conditions right here, and the judges said at the beginning, like like we mentioned earlier in the riders meeting at the beginning, it's all about that first turn, and from from that first turn, he just did not stop. He locked in the flow. And I tell you what, I want to go and see the replay of that last wave one more time. Look at this. You can see right from the top of the reef, he got that first turn perfectly. And as you can see, you see him moving his foot positions here. Bottom turn, line slack, top turn perfect. And he actually brings his back foot further forward after hitting the lip, which means that you re-enter that wave with speed. You keep the tension back in the kite. And I mean, there's, there's a lot of technical aspects to riding a wave like this uh, with a kite in the air. Yeah, I mean, this is why Seb is one of the top riders when it comes to surfing. Here we have, let's not forget, Seb last year, he was fourth on the overall ranking. Uh, and you can just, you know, he had there with 2,510 points, you know, shy of for that third position by about 400 points to his fellow countryman, Pedro Mata. So, you know, Seb, he concentrates 100% on the surfing and you you know watching waves like that we know why i mean yeah he's he's comboed joe de silva right now with an 18.20 combined score total i mean there's you know it's not you can't get much higher than that that's 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 a big combo right there and uh joe's definitely going to struggle in the next three and a half minutes to uh to put a dent into that yeah, I mean, he is comboed out, like you say, and he needs two big waves. Seb, he, you can see 
when an athlete like this starts to get in you know linking and in connection with the ocean let me just look at what we are starting to have out there as you can see here he goes dropping in sebastian ribedo coming together up and away boom Bang. this could be another absolute banger shaping up really nicely this wave nice steep sections connecting seamless bottom turns different quality top turns you see a wrap on that one vertical hits on the first one and uh yeah like no no fault between each turn you know look at this nah and he's just you can see keeping the speed oh, a hard little tail whip there as well to break himself up and in some style here sebastian ribedo on fire Oh, Makina. Oh, look at the smile. It says it all. Oh, that go. is what we want to see. You see an athlete like that showing a smile like that. He is meaning business. Yeah, Grande, Sebastian. He is feeling it for sure. Nothing quite like that feeling. Look, right from the first turn. And there's pressure in the lines the whole time. He's got the kite perfect. And he is just slamming that lip right to the top from bottom to top boom all the way look at that opening the shoulders getting that board around dragging it and every single time hitting it on that sweet spot you can see how he pushes on that back foot then brings it forward to keep the speed the brazilian is on fire And here we can see watching to see the live score. And let's not forget we got live score. And there we can see Mikaeli So probably yeah. wondering what the score on that last wave was. We're going to click the button here. 9.80, Tom. Two nines. That, that is close to the perfection. That is the, close to the perfect T. Combined score of 19.33. I mean, 20 is as much as you can get with a two-wave score of 10. But that's uh, Sebastian's going to be happy with that. Sebastian's going to be happy, and a lot of people on the beach are going to be very concerned. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, a lot of uh, a lot of talk on the beach about that for sure. But like, where do the you know where do we go from here? This, uh, the conditions are looking like they're improving. The wind direction's getting better. The waves are getting more consistent, and um, yeah, like you say, going to start to see that flow really start to engage on the top riders out there today. Um, unfortunately, things have just not gone Joe De Silva's way. No, they haven't. He hasn't really been able to connect, but still. Eight seconds left. He's coming into a last wave here. Yeah, looking, let's see what he has to go. Still, Joe, is this one is gonna count. So final glory run here. Let's see what he's got. Joe Silva starting to come down. Nice open face hack there for him. Links it up again. Past that section, making sure he has the speed. This is where it starts to get interesting. Boom! Right Very. on the lip. Now we are talking. And here he goes. Will it open up at the bottom, Tom? I mean, that was really nice. You know, he uh, re-entered really nice. You could see nearly nosedived onto the back into the base of that wave but kept it together had his weight perfect like three or four of the best turns we've seen from him definitely on that wave so he's going to improve his score but it's not going to be enough to combo the uh the two nines yeah no it isn't going to be enough and you know what while we're waiting we are going to go and check the highlights of the best heat so far of the competition
welcome back everybody as we continue on so now coming up next Edson Corsolino versus Arsenio Diaz now Tom we just saw the biggest heat of the competition Edson had the best heat yesterday now the best heat hands Bastian Rebe 19.33 gonna be interesting to see how Ayrton answers back indeed Joe I mean talking I of I was uh, saying to Tom man this day gonna be the best day in the history I think because now the tide is wrong but later on bro it's gonna be fiery and then the swell is yet have to come and today man I don't know I, I don't know I don't want to release the you know the fire yet man just want to Come with my uh, romance music, you know, and later on, I just, just my fucking can talk, I think. Let's keep it for Yeah, well, it's like, it's gonna be the day, I think. Stay tuned, take your popcorn, your beer, whatever, <laughs> and let's go for it, man. Action on. You! Okay, and we're back into this heat. It's one of the most exciting heats for sure so far. We've got Ayrton Cosolino out there on the water, probably one of the most high energy riders of the event, um, and definitely he's been one of the one of the guys training the hardest for this. Here we go on his first wave, not the biggest wave, but he's probably going to make the most of it. That's for sure. Guys, straight off the bat. Waiting for scores to drop. It's a good question. We got questions on YouTube coming in. Why aren't there live scores up on the heat, up on the TV the whole time? It's a good question. There are always a few issues, Techn technically here, but we are we working on them. We're going to get live scores up for you as soon as possible. But this after that last heat, it's going to be hard to match, even for Ayrton out there. Sebastian scoring two nine-point rides with an over an 18-point combo. Knocking Joe De Silva out of the event, who is one of the event organizers. But like he said when I spoke to him on the beach earlier, you don't cook a meal without eating it yourself. I'm not quite sure what that meant, but it pretty much means that you don't organize an event without being in it as well, which is a good ride. Unfortunate, happened to go up against one of the best wave riders. Unfortunately, didn't get the re entry. Arsenio Diaz just struggling on his backhand with that wave. Um, but both riders out there, Ayrton and Asano, just have, opening up the, the accounts getting some scores on the board and uh, feeling those sets. Uh, as the waves start to become more consistent, it is looking like there's going to be non-stop action today. And the wind's looking good too. These guys are not showing any signs of struggling. Here we go, look at this backhand attack. Super vertical, but just getting his weight wrong on the re-entry. As we saw from Sebastian Ribeiro in that last heat, which is really interesting to see and to notice, when you're attacking the lip, you want to be ready with your back foot really far back on the board so you can crank that top turn. But the minute you've snapped on the lip, you can move that back foot further forward. It aids your re-entry and just means that you're not going to struggle to get back into that wave. So foot position is so important. I mean, look at this replay of Ayrton right here. He is the master of this wave. He's the master of strapless kite surfing in general. And we were talked a lot earlier about why riders are not riding straps. But when you see a rider like Ayrton ride, you realize that you don't need straps to ride like you've got straps on. When you're as good as Ayrton, you can pull airs. You can, you can do pretty much anything even when you're strapless. Okay, so there we go. We can see the scores starting to drop. Ayrton with a 7.77 and a 6.93 already. Big chalk on the board uh, over Arsenio Diaz, 3.18. 
And a 2.83. Um, looking like he's in the back seat, but fairly comfortable on the water. And uh, yeah, they're both riders looking like they've got a lot of, lot of energy to give here. 12 and a half minutes on the clock left to go. And uh, yeah, looking like both of them are having fun. You can see here Anne's technique for getting back up wind. You want to stay as close to the rocks as possible to get back up wind as quickly as possible. And if anyone knows how to operate Punta Preta, it's Ayrton. He can get from the bottom of the reef to the peak in seconds. And in the competition scenario, that's where we're going to see riders really winning out. You saw it with Sebastian Ribeiro, how many waves he took in his heat. Um, let me just see if I can bring up the, the wave scores here for this heat. Um, yeah, we've got two waves scored for each rider. We've got Arsano just dropping into this one. Backhand attack again, struggling, going over the falls. Failing to use his kite to get himself out of trouble with that one and uh, yeah, taking a, a big slam. Let's hope he hasn't dropped his kite. Looks like he's managing. But we've got Ayrton committing front hand to this one. It's an insider. It's looking like there's a lot of white water on the face. Can he lock the barrel? It tries. Fails. Wanted a little bit of shade there. But one thing that's really challenging um, with a kite is okay yeah one thing that's really one thing that's really challenging with a kite is taking a barrel and uh, it's all to do with timing all to do with body position and kite control kite control is a major part of riding a wave on a kite obviously as you would imagine uh, the Physics of riding the wave itself is much like surfing, but when it comes to getting a barrel on a kite, it's much more technical because you've got to have that kite in the right place. I mean, you see Ayrton there positioning himself, not just on the wave, but with the kite in the right spot as well to get barreled, but unfortunately not making it. You know, it's, uh, it's hard enough as it is to get barreled on a surfboard, and yet when you've got a kite in the air, it becomes even more difficult. Yeah, so make sure you get involved in the chat on the YouTube channel if you're watching live. We've got three scores dropped, judged from each rider so far, with Ayrton looking pretty comfortably on the top. Yeah, he's got an 8.23 and a 6.93. But knowing Ayrton, he is hungry. He's seeing what Sebastian just did that in that heat before. I mean, Sebastian had pretty much almost the, you know, the Hail Mary, the glory run, 19.33. But in the end, you've got to win your heat. You've got to be able to pull that off in every single heat. But I know the Brazilian is going to have a smile. And Ayrton, he is going to want to bite and get into those kind of scores. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and we've got some questions also coming in about what board Ayrton is riding. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's a Concept Blue. Um, it's one of the new prototypes. We've got you know riders testing boards, obviously all the time, making tweaks to equipment that can be translated straight back to the best gear on the market. Um, but he's obviously riding a board that's working for him. That's it all I can say. It definitely does look like it's working for him, and he is making a groove so far. Your current world number one, and he's up against Arsenio Diaz, who Cuncuña, one of the local boys here from the island, two very good friends. But you know, one thing about competitors: as soon as you get in, out on the water, there are no friends. There's respects, but it is game on. Game on, indeed. And we got the big hitters out there at the moment, <coughs> looking to have Pedro out there soon as well. He's up in the next heat, Jay. 
Oh, coming up in that next seat, we're going to be seeing out on the water. The ladies are going to be coming out as we're oh, going okay. to be going into round number two. So Serena Luce is going to be going up against Sofia Monti. And look at the lumps coming our way. If I'm not mistaken, is that Ayrton on the right-hand side? He's got priority. By the looks of it, he's upwind. He's committing to this wave. He's deep on the reef. Look at that speed. He's driving down the line. Kite consistent, looking for that first turn, locking into the pocket, hooking it around and just getting ready to flow into that second bottom turn. Yeah, nice little pump back there as well. So this one, it looks like it's opening up as it comes down the reef. He's keeping himself close to the foam ball, and now this is where it starts to get hollow and vertical. So here we have Corsolino, your world champion, dropping in. Big hack off of the top. Now is this going to go? He's going to maybe be looking for a little bow section, but no, he is all the way down the line, looking to improve on that backup score. Probably not the wave he was looking for, though. No, that was not the wave he was looking for. Definitely not. It sort of flattened off there. I think they can look really tempting when you're at the top of the reef, but it's very difficult to know how a wave's going to develop. You know, um, that from that first turn, you'd hope that it steepens right up. But you can see here as he goes into the second turn, it just starts to flatten off and uh, lose lose a bit of power as it goes down the line. But yeah, typically you get a big two or three turns at the very top of the reef and then as you hit this section here would be the section you would go in for the barrel if there was one opening up and i think as we start to see the tide changing this afternoon throughout the day we're going to start to see the wave uh, change and the sort of nature of the wave change and hopefully it's going to start opening out as that swell really starts settling in and delivering those higher quality uh, long lines down the point. Yeah, and it is literally just halfway on the tide now, so halfway up, so we're still on the push, which is very good news for what we have out there. Now, Arsenio Diaz locking in, and we can see Ayrton there on the back, and here, Arsenio backside. That is looking like a very nice opening wave. Let's see what the young uh, Cape Verdean can do for us. Foam climb there, almost going off, but it is flattening out in front of him. This is what I was talking about, hey? That first section teases you in. And then before you know it, look, look at that reform. He really got skunked on that wave there. Disappeared down the reef whilst Ayrton oh. straight behind answering back with another wave. Looks like it's also slackening off, but it won't stop Ayrton giving it his best. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I love about Ayrton is how he throws his body into those turns. You really, you know, almost like double pumps on that roundhouse, gets that board all the way around, almost going horizontal, then flicks it back to get that power down the line. That's what we're talking about. And here we can see our oh, Bom Dia desde Portugal and Bom Dia Cabo Verde. Uh, great to see you here, Nuno Reis. I hope you guys are enjoying the stream as right now we are five minutes to go in this heat. Ayrton Corsellino versus Arsenio Diaz. Another beautiful day in paradise. Doesn't get much better than this, Joe. <laughs> this is uh, what dreams are made of. When I was a kid sitting at home looking at kite surfing magazines, watching kite surfing VHS videos, I believe they were, or even DVDs, seem old at this point. Um, I, wow. would, I would dream about days like this, you know? Wow. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm, I'm just, you know, they, as my wife would say, silence is deadly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, oh man, I remember I remember the first Space Monkey movie on VHS. That is throwing it way back. And there you can see perfect views of Ayrton out there on the Rebel. We caught up with him over the last few days saying he prefers the Rebel on these types of conditions. Gives him a little bit more pull, a bit more connected and works nicer in his opinion on these waves. I'm going to say I reckon our drone almost took a swim right there. <laughs> It's good to see the drone angle there. It really gives you the uh, gives you the, the knowledge of what the riders are doing with the kite. You know, it's important to see when you're riding a wave with a kite what the rider does with the kite. And I think that's what also the judges are looking at as well. Like something that you can't necessarily see on the live stream unless you're watching the drone angle. But when you're watching the overall picture, you see how the riders control their kites. You see how the kite turns 
reflect the turns in their body and how they're connecting with the wave and the wind at the same time. And I think, yeah, going back to and using the Rebel, it's such an efficient kite mm. upwind that he really doesn't need to do too much with the kite, especially in these side offshore winds, because the kite itself is just gliding upwind in the window versus where, you know, like a typical wave kite, it's slightly lower aspect, slightly deeper in the window. Although it drifts a lot easier, when you're as skilled as a rider as Ayrton, you can uh, really leverage all of the uh, different elements of your equipment to your advantage. Yeah, absolutely, and especially when it's light wind conditions like this, you need to get back up onto that point that could give you the extra edge, because all of these guys and girls, they don't want that kite pulling when they're on the wave. All right, Ayrton, looks like he's gonna be testing off something here. Two minutes on the clock, let's see. Oh, he's coming in with speed, watch out. It's a airline Corsolino. Oh! Does he land it? Oh! Almost. That was huge. This is when he? Ayrton is dangerous. He's having fun. He's having fun now. He is having fun now. That was huge. Who needs straps? Ah, who needs straps? <laughs> the debate has been thrown out here all day long. Who needs straps? But I will say that someone might need a rescue boat. Oh, no. Because his kite is down and he is in the impact zone. Look at that one there. I mean, if he landed that, that was massive. It was definitely a big air, and now just having a look, see, yeah, Kite is in the air. Expertly thankfully, done. Thankfully, because he is right, having a little look forward, a little look back. So, Cosolino Airlines just not quite getting the landing. Yeah, uh, last time I was out here filming with Ayrton, actually, um, he he just got, he just recovered from a, a really nasty moment on the rocks, um, like where he, you know, he's he obviously always pushing the level, always pushing himself going for these big critical moves and airs, but of in inherently something something can go wrong. And he actually got pinned to the rocks for something like 10 to 15 minutes with his lines all wrapped up in the rocks and you couldn't actually get himself out of the water because he was uh, stuck on the reef for, for quite a bit of time. So he knows better than anyone the consequences of uh, of getting it wrong here. Yeah, I mean, and one of the things we always see when you see the top athletes starting to try stuff in their heat, he knows he's in the lead, he knows that he has this one in the bag. It's an important moment for him because, you know, he can start to invent, they can start to kind of train and, you know, try one thing and try the other. But Arsenio Diaz here, unfortunately, is almost comboed out. Ayrton just going off of the top of that one as he knows he is in contention to take the win. But anything can happen. But yeah, Arsenio being comboed, that is not going to be, that is going to be it for him. So a big congratulations to uh, Ayrton Cosolino continuing on with fire. Arsenio Diaz also, a big shout out to him. As unfortunately he has just not been able to put the goods together. Let's have a look at the highlights of that last heat.
Welcome back, everybody, as we continue on here for the third day of competition in uh, Cape Verde. Coming up next, we are going to be moving over to the women. Serena Luz, Sofia Monti, about to go out there on the water as the green flag in the sky. Let's see what the girls can throw down here at the beautiful island of Sal. So there on the blue is going to be uh, Sofia Monti with the with the pink helmets and then we're going to see Serena Luce is going to be out there in the white lycra the powerhouse surfer coming out of Brazil let's see what both of them have as the waves are starting to pick up and it is looking beautiful great to see some good action from the girls today I mean we saw some heats the other day and unfortunately they got the harsh end of the deal when it came to the conditions, uh, the wave dropped just sort of as the girls' heats came came in, but it's uh, it's great to have good conditions out there, see what they can really deliver and uh, see them having fun out there on the water, because I think, you know, that's it's the most important thing. When you've got a point break like Punta Prata, you've got two friends on the water at the same time, there's no better feeling than just uh, taking a few of these waves. Yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. This is the kind of conditions that we're looking for. And ridiculously, you know, to be able to land this inside of a competition waiting period, it's kind of, you know, picture perfect and a dream come true. Serena here starting to get, she's already got a couple of nice waves on her way, just powering her way down. Very talented Brazilian surfer and looking forward to see her out there on the water. Let's start and see if some of the judges are going to be landing some scores. All right, well, it's looking like around the medium to high twos are there for Serena. And there you can see the beach is starting to get packed and the style and the flow of the locals coming down on the beach as well. Yeah, it's good to see the crowds coming out. And it doesn't get much better than this. It's a spectator spot. Um, you can literally stand 50 feet from the wave itself, from, from a breaking wave, which is in itself rare. You know, we see a lot of uh, events happening, places like Mauritius and, uh, well, actually, I guess Morocco is fairly similar as well, actually. You've got a very good uh, spectator area there, but this wave specifically just offers such good options for, for viewing, for the public. You know, everybody's free to walk up and down right here through the event site, get up close and personal with their favorite riders and see everything from, you know, from the rigging area to the, to the wave action. Yeah, it's cool because they can be part of the event as well and, you know, really get to know the athletes and, you know, show them the stoke because it's very cool for an athletes as well because they are so close to the break because these, these, you know, Punta Preta spectators wise, it doesn't get much better because you have one of the best world, you know, waves in the world and you are probably as a spectator about four meters away from the action and you can be safely there just shouting. So you could be on that wave and your friends, family or enemies can be shouting at you and giving you that extra fire, that extra push. And talking about push, lines stacking across the horizon. Yeah, sometimes the enemy shouting is just what you need, you know? <laughs> Looking down the YouTube comments, we've got Kite Surf Punta Cana, Kite School, big up, what's up? From the Dominican Republic, another kite surfing paradise out in Punta Cana. I know that Dominican Republic being one of my Second favorite places in the world. Yeah, uh, it's another, beautiful. Another kite surfing paradise, which just delivers so many varied conditions, warm weather, and uh, stress-free vibes. It certainly is. I think that's where we met, mate. You suddenly left me Toby Bromwich's camera randomly, uh, and suddenly Toby ran up to me and went, ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another big shout-out. Toby Bromwich took me to... Dominican Republic in 2005. Yeah, wow. I think it Back was. Back in the day. For my first BKRA World Tour. That's yep. where we met. Yeah, yeah it's a long time ago. And then, of course, there was the, the unofficial competition, which went in between Onos and Lax, and Lax to Onos. <laughs> Whoever can remember that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, DR, a paradise and can't wait to be going back there yeah i can't wait to get back there oh my god goodness going back to the action we have just seen a d lab go down in the impact zone this is not looking good oh my word construction test 101 is about to happen i mean can it, it take a pounding well i mean this is a dangerous situation actually because it dropped out yeah 
uh, you know, out wave of, of the rider. Um, this is pushing the kite towards the rider, which means it's pushing the lines towards the rider. Um, it's time to release. Yeah, that is when you have to let go of that kite. And also, when your kite gets caught by a wave, ladies and gentlemen, the best thing you can do is release. Because if you keep tension on the lines, that's when the kite can actually start to break because it just yeah. you know, gets pulled or it can you know, get kind of twitched out of contention and flying through the sky there. Little kite loop involved as well for the Brazilian. But yeah, Sofia Monti, the Italian, she is definitely going to be out as that you know that kite is going to be coming up onto the rocks and hopefully she is okay. We'll keep you guys and girls informed. There she is. Yeah, looks I mean, like she is just having a little bit of a washing machine though. Yeah, we're about to see the consequences of exactly how it can go if you drop your kite in the lineup. Um, I mean, even as a surfer, you know. A good hammering from a proper point break is uh, not something to be envied not at any all. time. But um, when you've got equipment with you, like kites, lines, um, a board to deal with, and uh, you're, you know, on technically in a heavy point break, um, it looks like she's all good. Yeah, it looks like she is okay. She's getting a little bit of a whitewash, and now this is where, you know, she kind of just has to. You've got two options. You can either swim up the point and go to the sand. I would release that board. Uh, but, yeah, she does look like she is okay. And I know she is going to be getting assist, as I can see here on the beach. She is getting looked after. And all of the local boys trying to know how to get herself in. So, Sofia Monti here. But this is where you've got to be really careful yeah. because right there where she is now, you can see how much water is moving around those rocks. And water moving is when water is really dangerous because you can get strung between your leash. Like, there you go. She's released her board. She needs to release her lines. You do not want the pressure of the w moving water hitting you to the rocks, holding you down, because you, uh, you can really get yourself into a tricky situation, even in shallow water. Yeah, and there you can see everybody making sure she's okay, coming in. And now looks it looks like the kite is okay as well. So the kite's absolutely fine. A small rip on the tip there, but actually... You know, coming off pretty well. D Lab holding up. That's what we like to see. That's how we test products. Dropping the kite into a 10 foot wave on one of the biggest point breaks in the world really is a good test of the performance of that new material. Um, and uh, just to see it still inflated and still ready to fly, still ready to ride is, uh, is a result. But here she is, she's being taken off the rocks now seems to uh she's definitely going to be disappointed with that one i mean it's difficult to get back into a heat after a full reset like that she's going to need a caddy to get her a new kite set up a new gear set up she's going to need to get off the rocks and get back out there if she's if she's okay yeah and uh, you can see looks like she's coming in and she is okay a big shout out to everybody for Helping her out to get back in. And there it is. Dry land, dry land. So Sofia Monti back in. And I can see that she is A-OK. -okay. And back to the action out on the water as it looks like. But yeah, you can see comment from Tom Prescott getting worked. And that is exactly what just happened. We, um, we really... Uh, saw what could uh, you know what can what can happen out there, and you know it's one of those ways where you are right next to the beach. So you know, regardless of what happens, you've got you know people right there to help on hand, and it's a relentless point break, right? So it just keeps on firing down the line, um, and, and non-stop. You uh, you. Yeah, if you get on the wrong side of it, it's going to punish you. But you are also going to be on the beach very quickly. It just pushes you straight up the rocks. Um, and uh, there we go. We can see her walking that one off. Definitely disappointed by that result and uh, by that outcome. But she's all good. No injuries by the looks of it. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show how a heat can turn around.
There we can see the locals, the paramedics, everyone on the beach crowding around, making sure she's okay. But it really does highlight, you know, the potential uh, consequences of getting it wrong out there. It is tough just to keep your kite in the air um, in light winds. So the skills of these riders are really, you know, impressive. You know, you've got to be a good rider to be on the water. There's always potential consequences. Um, and, you know, when you get involved in a top level sport, uh, any, on a, in, in any sport, you're taking risks because top level athletes are asked to perform in some of the hardest, gnarliest um, conditions around and you know it can't you know there's always risks associated with it not just for yourself but for your gear so you know it's worth remembering if you are getting into wave riding on a kite you want to take it slow you want to take it easy you always want to remember you know that you've made a proper assessment of the area you've made friends with people on the beach that are going to help launch and land you and you want to make sure somebody's always got your back watching out for you and in many ways that's what makes kite surfing such an amazing sport such an amazing community is people are always going to help you you're never going to go to a kite beach and a, lo a local kiter is going to be like you know get out of here or not help you launch your kite because it's so important as kite surfers that we keep our community healthy friendly and approachable because it's really important that we all help each other out there that we've all got each other's backs whether that's launching a kite whether that's landing a kite whether that's you know help pulling you out of the water when you need help and you're in super shallow water on the rocks you know you you don't need to rush to get involved you don't need to put yourself in danger but everybody needs to know that you know, we've got each other's backs and uh, we're all friends, you know. So, I know, and I know that's a big topic in certain other sports where, you know, the atmosphere can get a little frosty and, um, you know, it can be a little um, unapproachable sometimes. I feel that I'm very proud that kite surfing is a sport where, you know, we are very friendly and inclusive and uh, you want to make sure that you educate yourself on the location, the people, and be respectful to the locals and uh, know that at any point you might need somebody to help you. So here we go. It looks like, you know, she's got the water to herself right now, um, which means she's got the pick of any wave she wants. Looks like she's going to be dominating this heat easily out there. Um, just waiting for her next set to come through so she can uh, cherry pick another good wave. There we've got the beach scene down in the launching area, sandy beach at the bottom bottom end of the lineup, where all the riders launch their kites, get ready for their heats, get ready to go out. Right in front of the beach bars, where all the spectators can sit, drink a cold one, have a cocktail, eat lunch. I mean, the setup does not get much better than this, to be fair. Just under four minutes left to go of this heat. And uh, it's looking a little flat on the horizon. You can see the wind shifting a little more side shore. And uh, conditions developing as the day goes on. Tide is still pushing, so the swell should still be building. Um, and uh, yeah, some quality rides to be had. Especially if you're out there on your own. And you've got the pick of the conditions that we can see a set forming on the horizon there. Um, ready for Serena to take advantage. This is round two, heat number one of the female discipline. <coughs> Saw some drama there with a downed kite in the lineup. Um, thankfully, everybody okay. 
No injuries, and the kite survived absolutely fine. Um, so that's good. Every, everybody off the rocks okay. I mean, it's obviously really shallow where the wave breaks here, so we've got a boat out the back, but you can't get a boat into the inside. But, you know, we've got people on the beach, paramedics waiting, everybody's around. Um, it's uh, it's a, a place where you've got to be aware of the risks before you even hit the water. And, uh, you know, as with any extreme sport, there is always a risk uh, involved. Um, but the riders, these riders are professional riders. Everybody out there knows what they're doing. And uh, everybody knows how to handle themselves in the ocean. So Punta Preta continuing to deliver today. And uh, here we got one minute 50 left of this heat. She's got a set on the way. Which one is she going to choose? That's the question. Okay, she's coming into the reef now. Not looking, not liking the look of that inside one. I think she knows she's got the heat though now, so she's probably not in a rush to, uh, to take a wave if there's not a, a good one to come through. Just over a minute left of this heat. No, she's in a good position. No rush for her. Here we go. This one looks like it's got a nice shoulder to it. It's going to steepen up down the line. Here she goes. She's committing. Nice high line there. Gathering speed down the line. Arcing that bottom turn. Back up to the lip. Just getting around that developing section. But like you can see, is that's when you start to see the benefits of having a kite. You can get around those long white water sections and then back into that inside turn. But I think with 30 seconds left on the clock, she's she knows she's in the top spot. She's ready to come in and uh, cool that heat a day. Yep, and I just, well, just popped out there to see exactly what the consensus is. So after this heat, we are going to be moving over to the men. So the AP flag is going to be hidden in the sky, and we're going to be moving over to the men one more time. It looks like there's been a general decision with the committee together with all of the women's athletes. We're going to be going back to the men, and now we will see. And uh, answering on, I went out also, uh, Tom, to answer that question you were saying about the ski, the ski, and yet there is a rescue boat out right there so that they can be attended. But due to the fact that it is so close to the rocks, unfortunately, sometimes it is not able to get in there with a ski. So that's the official answer I've been given. And always thank you for your help and asking these questions. And of course, safety is definitely one of the most important things here uh, with this break so close. We have the life guides and all of the, all of the crew attending. And, you know, hope, hoping the best outcome for everybody out here. And the, one of the main reasons for the decision that has just been made, which has been made by our race director and tour manager, is that the women are on standby. And due to the fact of some of the level of the riders, and we are going to be moving back over to the men. Yeah, I just went over it actually, Joe. You know, and what makes kiteboarding such a great sport is, is the community. And, you know, also that makes it, you know, the, the good community of people willing to help each other and, you know, get involved and create a safe environment for people. There's always risks involved. I mean, you can't eliminate every risk. It's not possible when you're riding a point break like this.
Okay guys, just to keep those of you who are watching informed, the event has just gone on to a quick standby, but it's coming back very soon with the next round of the men's heats. It's looking like the conditions are perfect out there. Perfect side shore, side offshore wind, and there's some big sets rolling through still. So after this short break, we're going to be back with some of the best kite surfing action in the world. It's been an amazing start to the day so far. We've rattled through a lot of good heats. We've seen some amazing rides from riders like Sebastian Ribeiro and Ayrton Cossolino. Some high scoring heats, some really nice waves ridden, and it's looking like it's only gonna get better this afternoon. The tide is pushing, it's getting better and better, and the sun is out. People are filling the beach and uh, the vibe is starting to get buzzing. So make sure you stay tuned. Keep the tab open. Even if you're at work, don't worry about it. Just switch it over if your boss that comes over. Keep watching the live. We're going to be here all afternoon. It's going to be fresh action coming your way very soon and fresh banter as soon as Joe gets back into the studio. If you've got any questions, make sure you hit us up in the comments below the YouTube feed. The live stream is live <coughs> as we go on with the event. We've had some good, good comments so far. Some good interaction from the crew, and uh, yeah, we're just waiting for the event to restart here. So update from the race crew, we're going to drop straight back in to the next men's round. We've got riders just getting ready now. I think about five, ten minutes time, we're going to have fresh action for you here on the water. You can see the sets building, see the wind picking up. It's only going to get better here on the sunny island of Sal and Cape Verde at the beautiful Punta Preta. Like I said, make sure you get involved. Keep the stream open. Get involved in the comments. <clears throat> also, make sure you follow the GKA social media channels. Instagram, TikTok. I did a 45-minute live TikTok yesterday right here from the beach. I haven't actually managed to watch it yet myself, but let me know what you think. Make sure you follow me also at Caught in the Act on Instagram. C-O-U-R-T in the act yeah i've been uh in the kite surfing industry for a long time now along with joe siastela we are some of the ogs of the kite surfing industry i would say having seen a lot of action over a lot of disciplines it's an absolute pleasure to be here to narrate the live stream for the first stop of the 2024 gka kite surfing season and you know after experiencing all the different sides of kiteboarding, all the different disciplines, it's an absolute pleasure to see such good action in the waves because it is some of the hardest conditions to find. You know, when you've got the wind, you've got the waves, you've got the lineup, you've got everything comes together, it's a magical thing. And for me, it's a pleasure to be able to add to it. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to talk to you guys and also deliver any information you guys want. So either hit me up on my Instagram or hit up the GK Instagram. Hit up us up in the comments on the YouTube live as we are now. 
and uh, we're going to get back into the action. Yeah, and next up we are going to be having Pedro Matos is going to be going up against Hendrik Lopez. As action is on, we are green light now. The red flag is about to hit the sky. Those are the boys that are going to be battling it out. Those are the gladiators in our Coliseum. That is Punta Preda. Be ready, be ready, everybody. And as Sebastiano Agostino says, espectáculo is about to hit the water. And we will see Pedro Matos and Hendrix. Both of these guys are hungry. They're some of the younger athletes on tour. And we will have to see who is going to be throwing down. Okay. All right, so we are back. Those are the guys out in the water. Hendrik Lopez on the Cabrina. Pedro Matos out on the Duotone. And, yeah, a big shout-out. Um, bon dia, bon dia. Hey, from Florianopolis. So shouting out, Igor Thiago Marquez. Thank you for joining us here on the stream as we are going, going, going. Green flag is about to come up. And in a minute, we are going to be joined by Mitu Monteiro, if I'm not mistaken, and look and see what he has to say about the conditions out there as we are back with the men. All right, so green flag is in the sky, and we are starting off one more time. Pedro Matos, Hendrik Lopez, action is in the water, and we can get it going.
Pedro firing down here on that first wave already. Hendrik Lopez going to be answering back. These boys both are hungry. Let's see who is going to be getting there. Hendrik on the inside getting a couple of turns. Pedro also getting a couple. So that's going to be a good first wave for both of them. All right. So we are going to be going down because I can see Tom Court is down there on the shore. He's going to give us a little update of how it is on the front lines. Okay, guys, we are live here on the beach with the next round of the men's happening right here behind me. We've got Hendrik Lopez, one of the local favorites on the water. The vibe on the beach is epic. We just had a quick standby in order to get the men's back underway because the conditions are starting to pump. It has been a really good day of kite surfing so far, but the conditions are slightly variable with the wind direction changing by several degrees as we've gone through the afternoon so far. But we've got sets of maybe five to six feet coming through and uh, all the riders are pretty stoked to be out there. There's a lot of smiles on the beach. Everybody's getting ready down the beach behind me and uh, the event's just been going off. The atmosphere's starting to happen and as we progress through the afternoon here on this Sunday afternoon, it's only gonna get busier and the kite surfing action is only gonna get better. So make sure you stay tuned on the live stream, subscribe to the GKA social channels, keep up with us and uh, let's get back in to this live heat happening right here behind me. And yeah, thank you, Tom. There you can see already Pedro Mato and he is up and down on the wave 6.17 for Hendrix Pedro off the top a oh, big open hack there for Pedro Matos looking really solid throughout the competition 8.0, so he's up with the heavy hitters. Let's not forget Sebastian Rubedo, two nines. We saw Ayrton has had eight. Machu has had eight. Now we are starting to see who are going to be the, sub the subjects in this competition. And I can tell you one thing, quarterfinals in the water. Matos on fire, but Hendrix, local boy, and he wants to do some damage. Yeah, we've seen a good wave and some definite crowd cheers from the beach for the local support for Hendrik Lopez. And, uh, you know, he hasn't got it easy because Pedro Matos from Brazil is, is bringing his surf star to the table. You know, he's, his fins are out the back of the wave. Yeah, no, I mean, you can, he really does push on it and makes the most of every single turn. We've seen him do it before. He won one of the last events down there in Dakla in Morocco, which is a very similar wave to this, so he knows what it's like. This one's a little bit more offshore, but you know, obviously, him being himself a regular footer, so he's going front side throughout this wave. But he is up against Hendrik Lopez, who we can see there just kind of be coming onto our screen. Hendrik Lopez, local boy, I know Diddy is down here on the beach cheering him on out there on the cabina gear, so he is getting ready to rumble have a little look it looks like he might be on either the drifter or so i saw one of the things that uh theo de Manis was saying yesterday also that maybe some of them will be going on the motor x but i reckon he is definitely on the drifter and here we can see hendrick big open hack now meaning business getting past that first section going in for the second great Ooh. timing there from him mate that bottom turn was uh, a thing of beauty ah oh. Man, just couldn't, couldn't stick it. Strange, like, uh, rock bubble there as he came off the top, landed into the, to the base of the wave. You know, it shows how unpredictable this reef can be. I mean, it's the perfect reef, but it does bubble up uh, when, when you start to get onto that inside section. And as we've had a few questions on the tide, I see and on, uh, on the YouTube channel, yeah, we're coming up to high tide right now, and it does get the best it can be apparently at high tide this way yeah and it also starting to fill those rocks in so yeah half past three local time that's half past five ct central european time 
that is when we will have the most amount of water in here. The push is out. We're continuing on with the men. And then we after it looks like we're going to be pushing all the way through to the finals. So far, quarterfinals is on the water. Let's see what the matchups are going to be. We're going to have Matthew Lopez and Misu Montedo are going to be coming up next. Then Gabriel Benetton and Sebastian Rubedo. The Brazilian standoff is going to be that third quarterfinal. And then we are going to be seeing as it's going to be Woodley Hall versus Ayrton Costolino. So Woodley already making his way through to the quarterfinals here. The Australian, great work there from him. Pedro, 8.0, 7.30. Hendrick, 6.17, 5.57. Pedro in the lead, 15.30. Good start to both of them because they are even more than 10 minutes to go. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of time still left in this heat, so uh, plenty of time for Hendrik Lopez to uh, to catch back up. But Pedro's style just just keeping him through, sailing him through this heat so far. Look at this timing on that bottom turn, Perfect. smashing the lip right in between that section, and then staying in the pocket with a really nice re-entry, making sure he's nice and deep. You know, you don't, what you don't want to see on a kite is somebody going too far out the front of the wave. And uh, you can see with the, with, the, with the really good surfers, they're just on the money with those turns. Yeah, million dollar, million dollar right there, all the way through. Nice open hacks. He's looking. He was maybe going to go into the shower, didn't quite make it. And you can see one of the things I love about Pedro Star is he throws that board, let's that shoulder open and on some of those early turns really just dragging that hand all the way along great work here from the brazilian right into the beach yeah it doesn't get longer than that that's as long as a wave gets here at punta preta and i uh, suppose speaking to pedro matos the other day about his fins and you know he chooses different fins for different conditions and you can really see his riding style he releases he's releasing the tail on almost every turn He's busting his fins out the back of the wave, um, and he's really yeah, using that equipment to its full potential. And a lot of the better riders, it's interesting, they do change their fins, you know, depending on the conditions, depending on the day. Um, and it's easy to underestimate how much difference fins do make. Yeah, no, and I think it's actually one of the understatements of the kiteboarding industry is, you know, you come to surfing, you talk to the pro surfers. Oh, Hendrik on that last wave here with the replay. Forget about the fins and get the barrel all the way away. That is the best barrel we have seen so far. Judges, if you do not give that guy a high score, I will personally come up to the booth. <laughs> Insane there from Hendrik. Let's not forget, was only kind of a bow and a one-hit wonder, but still great work there from Hendrik. Yeah, he failed to close that wave out, unfortunately. But, I mean, the read on the wave... The, uh, yeah, like you say, the shade that he got in that one uh, was, that's the first, the first convincing shade make barrel we've seen so far today. So you can see, obviously, the high tide's already making a difference as the waves roll through onto the reef. Um, and I think it's only going to get hollower. Yeah, no, I mean, it is really starting to open out. So we can see there 6.60, which, I mean, considering he only had one turn and then the bow, that is a decent score. Shame he couldn't close that out with a couple more turns down the line. Pedro definitely going all the way along. All right, and continuing on, as you can see, both of these athletes all the way out the back, making their way through. So six and a half minutes left of this one. Pedro Matos here on your screen, representing Duotone and Brazil. I know his parents and everybody back there in Rio is going to be 
pushing and fighting on strong. And then here also Hendrik Lopez, local boy, who is throwing down and not taking any prisoners. Here it goes. All right, yeah, up and top. There we go. Pedro all the way along just opens those turns. Look at that timing. Smack. Oh, let's it go. Tail slide. And back down. Pedro also. The Brazilians are looking so strong here in Cape Verde. And he is milking every single wave. I can see Hendrik also having a wave, which we will get a replay of very shortly. But great riding there from Pedro Matos and Hendrix and let's have a little look see All right, well, Tom, nice to, you know, for you to come back into the booth after a little sunscreen spreading. Thank you very much. Sorry, mate, you know. It's got to be done. Sometimes, you know, in these Duty hot, calls. hot desert islands, Duty calls. you need to put sunscreen on backs <laughs> and fronts. And a big shout out. Hi to Dubai, Santa Teresa. Thank you for joining us in. The Brazilians, yes, Igor, Brazilians are absolutely on fire and he is on it and now let's see Artur I agree Artur Reyes is a very 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 powerful rider and we look forward to seeing him here again but you know any heat can be a final here at the GK as we move on continuing with the action and just look at the colors we have here Punta Preta Okay, three minutes, just just over three minutes left of this heat. It's been some absolute bangers being thrown out there. Hendrik struggling to to get a big backup score, which he's going to need pretty quickly if he's going to catch up with Pedro Matos. There's been some uh, some big turns being thrown. Yeah, he really has. And a big shout out to Poland. Hope you guys are okay. I'm presuming a little bit colder than we are here because look at the sun. It's about 25 degrees. Wind has increased. I can say the athletes are out on 10 meter kites, dropping from the 11s and 12s that we saw before. And when it comes to the waves, it is even pushing up a little more. I will say it looks like there's a bit more space in between the sets, but there is more size on them. Hendrik Lopez, he needs to get two scores if he wants to be able to get past Pedro. Here we go. This is a big wham, a big open face hack. And now we see Hendrik nice and close to the phone ball, looking to engage one more time. Great timing off the top, keeps the speed down the line. This wave is opening up. Here we go, turn number three. Bang. Boom, a little bit of an airdrop on the way down. This is the best way we've seen from him so far. Hendrik Lopez. This is what he needed. This is what he needed. Look at this, all the way down the line. We've seen the judges are really um, rewarding these long rides, connecting that whole length of the reef. I mean, I've lost count of how many turns that is now, but connecting that whole length of the reef and finishing off in the shore break, that is what the judges are really rewarding as we've seen with Pedro Matos there with his 9.23 for sure that was Hendrik's best wave um, look he, he it was so long he's running
out of the water. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to be able to have a chance up against Pedro, he needs to improve and get an 8.17 because that would equal 8.18. That would equal Pedro's backup score, and then he would need to go for that 9.24. So, I mean, that is no easy feat. A very, very nice wave. Let's see what the judge is doing. He is close when it comes to the time. Is he going to be able to get that out into the section? I um, don't know if he will be able to make it in time. Pedro is on another set, but a beautiful surf wave there from Hendrik. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, I, I actually love Hendrik's style. He's got a really good style. Really nice, open upper body lanky style as he starts slamming the lip but look at this and pedro just he just has power one he's similar to sebastian he keeps the board speed it's not all just about the kite he really does roll it through hendrick is now pretty much maybe back in position as we're waiting to see if he has a possibility to get back but yeah you can see Pedro just going off the back as the closing seconds here as it is going to close out. I don't think he is going to be able to do it. Yep, there it is. Pedro Matos hand in the sky. Brazilian claim he is moving through to the next round. Let's check the highlights of that heat. And we are back on the beautiful island of Sal in Cape Verde. We've got the next heat up with Machu Lopez and Mitu Monteiro. This is one of the biggest hitter heats. I mean, this could be seen. a final. This could be a final. I mean, in a way, it's a shame to see these two up against each other because, A, not only are they really good friends, that it's like, like you say, uh, student and the teacher, this one, because uh, Me Too is... The local legend here that has made kite surfing what it is today on the island of Cape Verde. And Machu is the local reigning, defending 
champion. Yeah, reigning, defending, contending, and making. He is the man of the moment. He absolutely killed it last year. And let's not forget, last year, he went through both Ayrton Cosolino and Mitu Montero to take the win. So he knows what it is to be in this break and to go up against these guys. Like you say, when it came to Mitu, he is the godfather of the sport, of the strapless, and of this location. So, you know, Machu and, and Ayrton, one of the things always talking about them, the, the amount of respect they have for me too, that is what is so important because they know what he's capable of. They know what he's done for the sport. And at a place like this, at a wave like this, where this is one of the only events we see me too competing at anymore, he could take the crown on any given day. So it is game on. F1 rider out there on the bandit. Me too, Montero with the orange kite. And then we can see with the blue do a tone with the Neo, that is at Machu Lopez. Ladies and gentlemen, if it is that time, crack open a cold one, get the popcorn, the salami, whatever you need to snack it out, stand up on your sofa as we have action thrown your way. And send out this link for the live stream right now to your kite surfing communities on WhatsApp, wherever you are in the world, because this is going to be some of the best kite surfing action available on the planet. This is one of the best point breaks in the world, and these are two of the best riders on the island right now and uh yeah machu is defending his last year's win against miti montiero who's one of arguably the biggest kite surfing legends from this island of all time and uh he's dropping into his first wave right now here we go yeah and we're a little bit closer down on the reef so this is going to be a very hollow wave from the start he's speeding across to be able to get past that section here it is oh he gets Ooh. the bow he does can he make this one work we saw it with hendrix he got a couple of turns in the bow me too making longer of this one two good turns and a decent barrel there from the cape verdian that's what i call an opener that is an opener that is a can opener uh, opening a can of worms but that was a great first wave. And as you can see, you know, there's no substitute for experience on this wave. I mean, look at this. He skirts an entire section, which looks like a mistake. But then, bang, pulls in, gets the kite perfect, shades all day, comes out on the high line, ready to take that bottom turn into that next turn. I mean, that is, uh, that's what you call well read. Yeah, I mean, you know, this guy has been kiting here since the beginning, so he knows what this location is all about. An insane already there from Mitu Montedo. So waiting to see scores to be appearing, but what it is and what amazing riding we have already seen from him. Yeah, but we've got Mathieu in his characteristic style during this event, sitting out the back waiting his moment to strike i mean we saw very interesting uh tactics from him at the beginning of the event not even catching one wave in his first heat actually now that i see this heat lining up may not have gone his way in terms of you know the seeding but it's interesting to see these two riding together. They're obviously great friends. They ride together all the time. They know this wave like the back of their hand. It's going to be uh, interesting to see the two different approaches. And I would say already it's, it's evident, right? You can see Me Too on the inside taking every wave he can. He's already taken an awesome insider, but it wasn't a big set wave. But he's definitely dropped a big score with it with a 7 point five three on the opening ride which to be fair is a very competitive score yeah and i mean that's good and especially you know on a shorter wave read it well made it happen all the way along and now it's time for Machu to open up so it looks like he is coming towards and going to be engaging on a wave Machu lopez let's see what he's going to be getting here from the judges here we go a little check turn to get himself into the right position here What's he got on his opening turn? That's very fast down the line wave, but look, he just he pulls out. He wasn't feeling it. I mean, one thing when we get into these bigger heats, one thing that is without a doubt they know is that every wave counts, and it is there has to be a potential story in wave. There we can see Me Too look like he took off on an inside there as well. We would be getting the replay of that, but maybe a little one hit wonder. Yeah, I think that was a big, big turn on the opening face of that wave but the wave 
wasn't really going anywhere. And what we've seen so far is the the judges really rewarding long rides. Um, so obviously the riders are looking for waves that open up down the reef. <clears throat> and when you're out there and you're sailing, you need to look for a wave that's going wide down the point so that you know when it starts to hit the reef, it's going to open out and deliver you that nice long face. But look, here we go. I think this is where we can see Mitu's second opening account wave which looks like he's uh he's putting some money in the bank he certainly is just waiting for the scores to come up on that one so it looks like definitely me too has the upper hand so far yep so matthew just having a little look see once again scoring wave selection and scoring potential is what we are looking for and a big shout out there to olivia who's given the love for matthew and also from recife brazil jorge carreiro bon dia bon dia hope you are enjoying it punta preda is definitely pumping beltran as we continue on matthew lopez dropping in this is looking like a nice wave opening up across the reef here we go bottom turn engaging nice open face car just to keep the speed down the line now probably one more turn before the wave starts to get a bit more hollow big Ooh. carving turn there from the Cape Verde and repping out Spain. Machu Lopez off the top. Can he keep it together? Oh, oh, just loses his feet. What a shame. Got caught on the inside. It's the difference between that front and backhand attack. See these two riders um, on opposing tacks. Me too with his front, with his forehand, much more capable of reading the wave without you know straining over your shoulder. You can see what's coming. But Machu with that steezy vertical attack it'll be interesting to see how the judges score that last wave because they were two insanely well timed turns but the wave itself sort of didn't deliver yeah kind of just caught him on the top on that third turn there such a shame and here we can see another wave here for me to these boys are tech for tech look at that timing boom open arts let's go drives and pushes off the fins looking for that section well, got denied and then coming down here this is where he tries to get a little shampoo as well a little extra shower but now he is going for me too montado who is in the lead at this rate we're going to need to start picking up a shampoo sponsor it's looking like there could be some barrels this afternoon could be some uh could be some nice rides to be had head and shoulders and pantene all the way mate <laughs> Pro V. Yes, it's nice out there. It, what I wouldn't give to be out there myself. I, I can tell that these riders are enjoying it together. Just two people on the water. A rare experience here on uh, on Punta Preta. It's a glorious place to ride. Let alone when you're riding with one of your best mates and mentors. I think um, this is a, a special moment in kite surfing history right here. Yeah, and to be able to be out there on the water with him, you know, and both of them just throwing down. And, you know, both of these boys are more than capable. We have 7.53 there for me to a 4.80 for that second backup wave. Matthew still yet to drop in. We're waiting for that score on that second wave as soon as that comes in. 18-minute heats, and we are just past that midway, that halfway point. Under nine minutes to go as we have the first quarter final in between Lopez and Mondeiro. We've got Julio on YouTube saying, Me Too for L'Oreal 2024, let's go. I ah. think, you know, maybe L'Oreal's the one. Yeah, a little extra spring in the old dreadlocks. That's what we're, <laughs> what we're looking for. But yeah, at the moment, it looks like he's got a spring in his step because he is in contention. Now I can see... Some speed out on the wave. It looks like Machu Lopez is going to be dropping in one more time. Here we go. Be ready. With priority. Actually, me too. Was, yeah, no, no. Here we go. They've got separate waves here. It's looking good. First opening turn for Machu. Taking both hands off the bar to get his upper body weight in so he can keep deep on the wave. Really winding into those bottom turns and slapping the section. Reading that wave nicely. Just, just drives in. Oh, beautiful vertical going past vertical there for Machu. Those are the turns that we know him for. Those are the turns that gave him 
the event last year. He's starting to get a rhythm as he needs to start to get a groove on because let's not forget that Mitu is already two decent scores on the board. That was a good wave there from Machu. So, scores. Let's see. Let us see. Free ride vlogs, mate. Is that what it's about? Free ride vlogs, yeah. You can see if you get involved in the comments below this live stream, you will see my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Do a few video. In fact, I do a video every week, free riding around the world in my home spot on the Isle of Wight. Big up to the Isle of Wight kite surfing crew. Mm. Shout out to my brother who actually mentioned. Uh, about our local spot brook earlier which is i mean if you think this spot is dangerous you wouldn't believe the launch at my local spot i can imagine and talking about dangerous machu lopez 13.43 733 so now in that first position machu overtaking and taking the relay so now this is where it starts to get interesting because both of them have two good waves so yeah. they want to improve on that me too has the better one wave but then the backup score doesn't equal it so me too is obviously going to be looking to improve five minutes over five minutes to go on the clock probably will time for maybe one if they're lucky two more sets this is where wave selection starts to be crucial and two of the best in the game out on the water yeah at the moment it's anyone's game it's far from a combo situation there's less than a point in it here and uh yeah it's only going to take me to another solid set wave um to clinch this i mean we've got machu at the moment with priority but like you say it's very easy you know you're going to get more than one wave in a set it would be very easy to get get knocked off the top spot here and uh you know machu has been really looking forward to this event he's been very busy over the last few months, speaking to him the other day, opening up his Duotone Pro Center on Boa Vista, which is another island here in the beautiful island chain of Cape Verde, not too far away, about 20 kilometers away, I think, in a straight line if you were to try and foil it. It <laughs> would be a very bad is that, idea. Is, are you, are you, I can see you've been looking into this, man. <laughs> it's already been mentioned. <laughs> it's already, it been, mentioned. already been mentioned. Um, not sure I trust any of the local fishing boats and safety vessels, but... Oh, you never know. You never know. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? As I start every one of my vlogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I normally find out. <laughs> All right, here we go. So dropping in, a Me Too about to take off. That is a bomb. In the, if I, excuse me, up in front, that is Machu. As you can see, the blue kite. And he is going to be starting to engage. Big open hat. You can see just drawing, painting like Picasso out here in Cape Verde. All the way up again. All right, deciding He's against that. Happy. They know that they, they are so close. He knows it has to have a big scoring potential to keep going and risk losing that position out on the break. Me too. That is a decent size wave all the way around. And is it going to be opening up? Because they are quite lumpy. Thanks. It looks like he is going to be going on this one. As it goes around, he is going to be risking it. All right, me too. No, deciding against it as well. Similar situation for him and Manchu. Three and a half minutes on the clock. <clears throat> is there time for another set? Looks like Manchu's straight back out, and he's, he's taking a smaller wave, but look at the length of the shoulder. I think this is the... Is he going to go? No, he's not going to go. He's decided against it. He needs... Well, he actually doesn't need anything at the moment, but um, me too needs just a... Just a very slight improvement on a 5-4-3. Yeah, Me Too needs a, if my calculations aren't wrong, he needs just shy of a 6. So a 5.9 something is what he would need to be able to overtake Machu. So let's see who is going to be taking the crown. We will soon find out. So yeah, he's going to need a 5.91 is the score that Me Too is going to be going. And I'm calculating here i do apologize if i'm not completely right but he needs a decent wave is the way to put it yep. if he wants to be able to go into first position two and a half minutes on 
both of them are out the back. Both of them know that if a set comes, they have to perform on a wave no matter what. Matsu, upper hand, he has the better score. Mitu knows he needs to get some love, but anything can happen. And this is the beauty because they could be on that wave one second before and it would count. Is there time? That's the question. Is there time for that one more wave? And does it need to be a big one? I don't know. It needs to be a long one, but maybe not a big one. Here we go. It starts to get tricky when it's sub two minutes. You've got to take whatever's given to you because long range ground swells don't deliver that often. But look at that. Bang. Oh, did you just. That left hand, that backhand, top turn is always a pleasure to watch. Last time I was shooting with Machu, um, it was some of the best kite surfing I think I've ever seen in, mm. in real life. He really does have a sort of magic touch when it comes to reading waves and, uh, and, and being in the right place at the right time. I mean, I reckon he, if he could, he could sleep out there on the ocean. The amount of time these boys throw out there. I mean, we were saying it about Ayrton as well. He has been non-stop throughout the whole competition. And here we can see, just coming back from Boa Vista, and yes, it is definitely a must when it comes to kite surfing destinations. One minute, and I can't see any energy. Is this, is Mito going to get a Hail Mary and going to have a wave thrown towards him? Has Machu done enough to take out Mito? We are soon going to find out as we're coming to the closing moments. 49 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, Boa Vista, I have to agree. I was there last year. It is an amazing island. It's an amazing place. And I'm actually going to go there for a little bit after this event, Joe, I think. I'm going to go for a little bit of a wing foil sesh from the 26th till the 4th. So if anyone's about, hit me up. It's, a good, it's, it's a good life, isn't it, mate? It's a good life. It's not a bad life. It's not a bad life. Yeah, well, I'm hoping to put on some different, uh, different trips this year, maybe some kite camps. Maybe some wing foil camps. So if you're interested in that sort of thing and uh, getting the most out of Mother Nature, make sure you uh, hit me up, DM me on my socials. And, uh, yeah, we can uh, go and shred some even better spots. All right, well, the, the buzzer has hit. But I have a feeling that Me Too was on this swell. I have a feeling that he was on this swell, which means this would count if that is so not official this would count if that is so so now me too montedo is going to be dropping in ladies and gentlemen he needs a good wave is he going to take it for match on the final moments here we go montedo first wow. turn big wow. off the top all the way down here we go close up nice and personal big off the top big open hack again driving <laughs> through those fins this is a very good wave here for me too he was waiting for it did he get it on the final seconds one of the best the goats one of the best waves of the day look at that i mean talk about saved by the bell do you think it's going to be enough jay i do not know and i'm going to leave the tension out there and wait for the scores to come in as we are going to enjoy the highlights from that last heat. And as soon as we see it, because Me Too is all the way down to the shore. Oh, Who is it going to be? And I can see Matthew also frustrated out the back as he knows Me Too has another wave. We will have to find out. Let's get the highlights and find out because Matthew had a wave. Me Too had a wave. We will be back. All right, I've just been told we're going to get the replay of that last wave from Machu Lopez. Let's see as he had a barrel. Here is that replay. So Machu answering on that second wave. Here we go. Nice all the way along. And I've been told I could hear the crowd going wild. Opens it up and look how that one is going. Oh, does he come out? He does match you. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to tell you how hard it is to get barreled front hand, let alone backhand. And uh, that, was, that was a special moment on the closing, uh, closing seconds of that heat. And that is, uh, let's put a big smile on Matthew's face, but that is a close run heat because Mitu's wave was insane too.
All right, well, while we're waiting for those results to come in, let's see the highlights of that last heat. Okay, and we are up straight into the next heat with Gabrielle Benetton and Sebastian Ribeiro and Joe. What a final to that last heat. Oh, absolutely, mate. I mean, that is what we're talking about. Those close ones are what we want to see. And now, Gabrielle Benetton, Sebastian Ribeiro, who is it going to be? And yeah, both of them already starting off on that wave. So looking as Me Too Montedo, ladies and gentlemen, has taken the win. Me Too Montedo has kicked out Machu Lopez. Incredible riding from both of them. But it is Me Too who has come up on top. Mr. Miyagi throwing down that last helmet, that last wave. Machu with an absolute killer. But, yeah, it came down to the ocean. So, a big congratulations to Mito. We're going to try and catch up with him very shortly. But now, look at the action out there. As we can see, Gabrielle Benetton going backside and waiting for Seb to get some action.
And a beautiful wave there from Sebastian as we are getting ready to go. And moving away, 6.80 there from Sebastian Ribeiro. And it looking like a beautiful second wave as well. 6.47 for Gabriel Benetton. Those are the boys throwing down on the water at the moment. It is going to be a battle of the Brazilians. And now we are going to go down to the beach as I know that Mitu Monteiro is going to have a smile on his face taking the win of that last heat. Okay, I'm here on the beach straight off the water with Matthew. That's got to be one of those heats that's going to go down in the history books. Yeah, uh, it's insane out there. It's big waves. I'm a little bit like sad the good one, the clean one didn't came my way. My, my waves were a lot bumpy and I didn't, I didn't manage to do all I wanted to do. I, I dreamt of something way bigger, something way more vertical, more gnarly. And I really wanted to display this action for you guys, but... Ah. And then the last one that came, um, I wasn't a good one actually, it was still on time, but the red flag was already up. And the one from behind that I caught a barrel. And I didn't even think that it was already... But it's part of the game. I'm happy it's me too, uh, the guy who pretty much taught me how to do this uh, together with a lot of other people and I'm super stoked, such a stage here for everybody on the beach, huge wave, the best wave in the world by far and yeah, let's stay home there, enjoy the action and thanks for watching. Yeah, I mean we can see the passion on the water from both of you guys, it's obviously a great local representation here and it must be uh you know it's always sad to lose a heat but when you when you're up against one of your you know local legends and best friends it's uh it's got to be a, a good experience nonetheless for sure for sure it, just exactly how you said bro it's he's a legend um he's 40 he still gives a lot of hard time and this is his wave this is the wave that uh he taught all of us how to ride it and I'm such a, I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, he did this to us and he's still kicking the ass here. He got me this time last year, I got him, it was way different conditions. But yeah, I'm super grateful for all which happens in my life. Thanks to my sponsors to put me here. Thanks for you watching and let's wait for the best along the year. And let's bring it on. There we go, one of the most stylish riders in the industry. That's what we like to see. Good vibes, good action from the kite surfing world. Um, back to you. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, congratulations, Matthew. I mean, a sportsman in and out. Great. And we could see here, you know, the respect he has for me too. Very happy for him to be out there and continue on. That guy is going to have a smile. So, Gabriel Benetton, Sebastian Ribeiro. Pretty much wave away. We just saw a beautiful wave there from Gabriel on the drone. And here it is close and personal right in the pocket. Up and down all the way around and getting the hype. And then in the back here we can see Sebastian Ribeiro as he is moving it all the way as well. Look at these turns. Both of the guys move for move, turn for turn. That is what we are looking for. And even get a little, almost getting the lip on his head there, Sebastian Ribeiro. So far, as it comes to the scores, it is Ribeiro with a slight lead. And it looks like he's going to be increasing that. But both of these guys are going to have good scores coming their way. Watch out, quarterfinal number two, the Brazilian standoff.
All right, so I tell you what, it looks like we have Me Too Montedo also coming down on the beach with Tom while we're waiting for the action to hit out here on the water. Okay, here on the beach, straight off the water with Me Too. That's got to be one of those all-time most memorable heats right here on Punta Preta. How's that? Well, it was so nice to be out, you know, because in my first heat, the wind was a bit tricky. Now the wind was a bit stronger. Um, I had a few nice waves, and then the last one I used my priority, you know, like to have it. And these waves just open a lot, they just surf till in the beach, you know, till then. Um, but it was nice to be there with Machu in the water, you know, like, uh, and yeah, with this condition, man, at home, with all the people on the beach support me, so it's so cool. I just want to say thanks everyone there at home and also here on the beach to support me. Um, this is kind of like a, it pushed me, you know, like to still here, still on the water. Thank you, guys. Yeah, keeping the passion alive and also demonstrating how amazing this place is and how good the potential for kite surfing is in general. It must be a really good feeling not just to be riding with one of your good friends, one of your local uh, shredders from this island, but also, you know, to, to take the win over what is the defending champion. Yeah, you know, like here, uh, me, Machu, Ayrton, Hendrik, you know, like uh, Luis, always we spend some session here together. So it's kind of, we go in the water, we have a lot of fun, you know. But uh, it's hard to have all these people on the beach support us, so then it's different, you know. So it's so cool to be there. I'm so stoked. Mate, it's just great to see the passion that you guys all have for the sport, for the sport, and for everybody here and at home. So stay tuned for more action this afternoon. Yeah, congratulations, me too. Thank you, Tom, as we are on Gabriel Benetton on another big heat. So, Benetton in the lead, 16.60 versus 16.44. So, he is in the commanding seat. Five minutes to go. Both of these guys are more than capable than getting bigger spells than that. And look, Gabriel just has the power pushing all the way. All right, so another big wave at the moment. Benetton, 16.60. Ribeiro, 16.44. This is what we are talking about. That is what we want to see. And now here we are going as there are more sets coming all the way along. There, do a turn, about to drop in. Here comes Sebastian Ribeiro. He knows he needs to get a score. Engaging down the line, big open hook. He is keeping the board speed, keeping it going to get past this section. This wave is opening up. Just kind of a couple of check turns and now this is where he's gonna to start to get really unforced error. There from Sebastian, that is unusual. Gabriel also having a kind of straight line and speedy Gonzalez's way out as he just floats right in front of Sebastian, giving him a little wink, saying a little high. And under the lip there for the Brazilian, Benetton going all the way down to the shore break. Foam climb here. And now this is where it hits that final shore and jacks up a little bit more. A nice wave looking to improve on a 7.87 backup score. And then that bird's eye view, just you can see the colors, you can see how Punta Preta is firing for the third day, hands in the air. And you can see Leo there, they're stoked, they're happy, and they have the vibe. Yeah, you can really start to feel the energy on the beach now. The local crowd's here in force, and uh, everyone's coming down to experience this amazing day out there. And the riders are pumped. I mean, especially after that last heat, a bit of an upset but you know what a great vibe what a great attitude these riders have for each other full respect for the ocean for nature and for each other oh and there is a big number gonna be dropped that last wave from Gabby look at him he just floats and psychological warfare doing that right in front of your contender that always is a knife in the back yeah it's actually 
a really important strategy in competition. I mean, I remember from the freestyle days, if you can stomp your first trick right in front of your competitor's face, it always gets in your mind. You yeah. know? It always puts the other person off. And that, you know, if you can take the first wave while someone's on the inside, it's, uh, it's an instant inherent advantage. Yeah, no, and I mean, Gabriel, he is looking very powerful at the moment. An 8.73, 8.43, both of them pushing through. Less than two minutes to go. And we can see, just see Philip tuning in. Hope you're doing all right, mate. Enjoying the boys throwing down here. He was out there with Principe trying some of the new stuff that might be appearing very shortly. And it looks like Principe went a little bit too hard. So shout, shouting out to him over there in Tarifa as the Levante is blowing strong, I've been told. Yeah, pumping big air. The famous Levante winds coming through. Wow. Testing going well by the sounds of it. Big up, Philip. Big up to the whole Geotone crew and everybody pushing the future of the sport. Whether it's kite surfing in waves, whether it's throwing down big air, whether it's sending it in the Olympics. It's all going to go on this season. Yeah, and we can see Benetton in the lead, the core athlete, is rocking it out there on the new section for their new wave kite, which is working very well here in this beautiful location that is one of the seven wonders of the kite surfing world, Punta Preta. And we are starting to see waves stacking across the horizon and we are already in quarterfinal number two. So we have already had Pedro Matos is through. He is in into the next round and 30 seconds to go. Twenty seconds on the clicker. Sebastian knows he needs to get one. He knows he needs to have a good wave, and it is starting to rack up. He looks back. He looks forward. He is, is going to be milking this one to the final seconds. Last wave for Sebastian Ribeiro. Can he do it? Can he make it happen? Off the top, he's going down, but the wave closes out on him. Can he move it all the way down, Tom? I think the way, you know, sometimes if you make it around those long sections, this inside, like I said yesterday, starts to deliver. The smaller waves do seem to be delivering right the way through onto the inside, but is it enough? I mean, Gabriel Benetton's a real upset here again. The core rider just delivering two uh, massive scores. Here. Yeah, and waiting for it. It isn't going to be that, so it is going to be official. Gabriel Benetton making it through to the semi-finals. Parabéns, 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 brother. And a congratulations to Sebastian Ribeiro, who still has the highest heat score, but unfortunately is out, as it is Benetton who moves through to the semi-finals. Let's take the highlights of that last heat.
and we are back to the sunny island of Cape Verde. Next up, Woodley Hall versus Herton Cozzolino. Another big hitter. As we start to progress through this event, we are in the semi-finals and it's straight into the action. Ayrton with his helmet on, you know he means business, but look at this flow between turns, variety of top turns. He's gonna skip this section like a pro and just, you know, he's got the ability to flow around almost anything and make the most of what there is or isn't. I mean, that wave was done for all intents and purposes and he still managed to squeeze in a little strapless back roll there. That was opening the account for this heat and it started right out the back. You see, it's a big wave. Um, big wave to start with and just slamming those turns and a variety of turns too. You see how he's opening up his upper body to really wrap that top hand hook, laying back in the wave, rubbing his hand on the face and then, to be honest, it looked like it was done. But no, look at that. Most people would struggle just to do a strapless back roll anyway, let alone over a dry reef on a tiny choppy wave while staying in the game. I mean, that just shows how good Ayrton Costellino can be. Woodley Hall has his work cut out for him in this heat, that is for sure. But let's see a replay of his first wave. A little foam bounce there. It's like he's riding the Geotone whip, which well, he had a little trouble there holding, holding that tail, keeping his feet in the right place on that board. That's a very snappy first board, like snappy turn board. It turns super fast. Um, so you've got to be a very methodical and timed rider in order to get those turns right. But as we've seen, it does work. Okay, let's go to a beach interview now with Gabrielle Benetton. All right. Wow, Gabrielle, it looks like backside riding has something to say. Yeah, of course. It's so hard to ride backside here, but thanks God today the wind is more like side offshore, so it gets better. And it was like best heat of my life, you know. For me, that was the, my final, you know, because Sebastian is like my best friend. He teaches me a lot of things. And in my opinion, he's like the best in these conditions, you know. So beat him on a heat like this with firing waves is I don't know, my dream is like, came true. <laughs> I mean, we can see the smile is well deserved. One of the things the judges are saying about your riding is you go past vertical. You really open those shoulders all the way up. How does it feel to hit Prunta Preta with that fire? Yeah, I don't know. I never read a backside like this, you know? That was like my best riding ever. Like the waves were big, I was just going like straight vertical and like perfect. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Well, I'm going to let you rest up as you're going into the semi-finals. Gabrielle, congratulations. Let's move it back to you, Tom. Great to hear from Gabrielle Benetton uh, there. I'm he really is really very happy after that heat. What a result for him. Stoked on those waves, but the, the ocean is really starting to deliver consistently. And if you were watching the heat behind him, there, we've seen some massive waves from Ayrton. Some huge hits coming down the line and we're waiting for scores to drop from the judges right now. But Gabriel Benetton, what a smile on that guy's face right now. Oh yeah, he has had an absolute ball out there and you can see, well, you know, kind of like just for asking him there, backside riding, showing that it is possible here at Punta Preta and just going vertical as it is. And here we can see Ayrton Corsolino. This is another guy that is on a mission. Yeah, indeed. I mean, he, he's not going to let anything stop him. He, he's riding those waves right to the inside every time. Um, and his wave selection is almost um, unrivaled. Like, he, I haven't seen him on a bad wave yet. Um, he knows exactly what he's looking for. He's probably one of the riders that spend the most time you know, out here. He's always on the water. 
He's like a Duracell bunny. I don't know how he keeps his energy up. I don't know. It must, have, must be something in the water over here in Cape Verde because I reckon anybody, you can see all of the Cape Verdeans at the moment meeting Montedo already through to that semifinals. Also, we have Pedro Matos and we are waiting to see who else is going to be joining them because we just saw Gabriel Benetton. Ayrton pushing as hard as he can because he knows now Machu, last year's winner, is out. But, I mean, of course, Mitu Montedo always a force to be reckoned with. So let's have a little look. At the moment, we can see already it is going to be Pedro Matos versus Mitu Montedo. And the winner of this heat in between Ayrton Cosilino and Woodley Hall is going to be going up against Gabriel Benetton. Yeah, what a result for Benetton. He is going to be smiling for days. He certainly is. I can see you can do an old Colgate advert out there. He is nothing but stoke. 12 minutes to go on this. Ayrton already has a 7.63 and waiting for that second wave, as you were saying, Tom, looking like another big score is going to be coming his way. Yeah, I think he's going to double up on that 7.63 for sure. Like I said, he's one of the best people at reading this break. You won't see Ayrton take a bad wave, or very rarely. And even if it is a bad wave, he'll make it good. So it's like one of those, uh, one of those impossible people to compete against, actually. And you have to be very, either very, very lucky to get past him, or incredibly skilled. Yeah, and also, you know, let's not forget one of the things everybody has been saying throughout this whole event: wave selection. The wave selection here in Punta Preto is crucial. Now we are getting to the big dogs. These are the heavy hitters. Every single one counts. All of them have potential to score tens. They have the skill set. It now comes down to see who takes those ones. And I tell you what, look at the rollers coming into the point. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's, that's a wave that's going to run down the point right there. You can see it opening out. He's coming in deep behind the section. Narrowly missing the uh, the foam ball there just to set up for his first bottom turn. But, yeah, I don't know. See, I, I thought that was going to be a wave that would run. But here we see Ayrton making sure he's on the next best thing. Oh, Bang. Oh, big open hack. You can see it's getting big as the waves in front are almost blocking them. And Ayrton all the way along up. A couple of check turns just to get them back into position. And this is where it starts to hollow out. This is where they start to make their moves. So Cosolino here on the inside. Is he going to be going for it? No, big top turn there for him. Huge top turn, um, cranking those fins. I find it really interesting, actually. Look at, look at his D-power throw. He has a huge D-power throw. And you can see he's like one of the riders that's using it the most. Um, he's really sheeting out a lot of the time, making sure he's killing the power in that kite. But Woodley Hall, oh, Woodley Hall getting snagged in the lip. His line's actually getting caught in the lip there. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a, a burst eardrum from something like that. That's, uh, that, was a, that was a lip to the face. Straight, it's not going to stop him, though. Straight onto the next wave. Looks like he's picked it straight up, going for a little bit of shade. Nice body position, but not deep enough. Uh, but, yeah, considering he wiped out on that last wave. Oh, it's not. Superman oh. in his way through there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not holding him back. That's what I call powering yourself all through a face. Woodley, obviously, you know, coming from Osno Shy when it comes to waves. And you can see here Cosolino as well. So good moves for both of the guys out there. But it is Corsolino who is your number one so far. He's got a 15.76. Let's have a little look at the numbers that we've seen here in these quarterfinals. We have now Pedro. He had a very good one. We can see Gabriel 17.53. And then when it comes up to Machu and Me Too, it was 15. So, you know, 15, 16, 17 seems to be in the name of the game. Sebastian, even though he's kicked out now, he had an impressive 19 total. And that is what we are really looking for. Those big, big bombs. Eights and nines all the way. Let's see who can get a 10 across the board today. But so far, it is pumping without 
anything stopping us. Here we go. Look, we've got sets just continuing to roll in out the back. Seven and a half minutes to go in this heat. Woodley Hall with two relatively low scores, considering. Um, up against Ayrton with two pretty high scores. This has got his work cut out for him. Woodley Hall catching up here with less than 10 minutes on the clock. and let's not forget so Tom while we're waiting in here I heard you mentioning you know looking at foiling across the Boa Vista is that going to be the next vlog mate oh well you never know might be something up something along those lines <laughs> I think uh, it's probably going to be a vlog about doing this sort of thing to be fair I mean a lot of the time I'm making videos about sports and about doing sports and about engaging in sports and how good it can be for you not just personally for fitness wise but also mental health wise and you know like there's so so many good things about uh, engaging in all sorts of water sports you know from mm. kite surfing through to wing foiling through to surfing um e-foiling even um and yeah now i look to to make videos about doing challenges with with the sports that i do on my youtube channel yeah so uh, looking for looking forward to seeing that and you can see there some of the replays of Ayrton. all right Ayrton looks like is he coming in to change? No, he isn't. Okay, just riding it to make his way back out. So far, he is in the lead comfortably. And here we can see the last replay there from Woodley Hall. He's been getting some nice waves. Mm. Good wave selection. Really nice flow down the line. Sort of bouncing off the foam at the top of the wave just to drive around this section. And not letting, it, not letting that wave put him off. Will it be enough, though? Sitting on a 6.66 versus a 17.13 with five and a half minutes to go. It's uh, time is running out for Woodley Hall. Yeah, it's about one hour until the high tide as we are getting ready here in the booth. And watch out, paparazzi, mate. Yeah, here we are behind the scenes. We've got uh, all sorts of things going on here. Everything from sun cream to food to anything, mate. So that's all what's happening down here. Edson Corsolino coming down near the rocks. He is literally trying to get himself. Look how close he comes to the rocks there. I mean, yeah, all of the, the waves here are close to the rocks. Uh, high tide, apparently this wave is at its best, which is right now, I believe, high tide. So, you know, riders like Ayrton know this wave like the back of their hand. He can tack right up onto the inside but this goes for what i was saying earlier about getting back up wind quickly yep is absolutely. that's what you need to do if you're shy at the rocks and you don't come inside enough you will not get back up to the point quickly so like you know from a com competition standpoint he's you know come right into the inside so he can use the power of the wave just to leverage himself back up wind quicker yeah, no, that is definitely, uh, I think, an, an advantage when it comes to a location like this. It does seem like, I've just been told, the wind has increased. It's about 18 knots now, so it does feel a little bit more breezy coming through the competition area, and we can see with how the guys are really being able to get back up there. Here we can see Woodley Hall, nice engaging through. Big, oh, nice hack there from the Aussie. Bang. Oh, just loses it. Doesn't manage to get that tail pressure back after that top turn but doesn't stop him straight back out So, three minutes to go. Ayrton comfortably. 17.13, a 9.0, and an 8.13. Those are scores that could win you the event. We saw there also Manchu has been up there. Me too. Getting in the high eights. That's where it is. That's where it stands to be. Quarterfinals. The winner 
of this will be making his way through to the semi-finals and they will be going up against Gabriel Benetton. Coming up next, Pedro Matos, Mitu Montedo. And after that, Gabriel Benetton, unless anything big changes in the near future, could be Ayrton Corsolino. It is starting to stack up and the boys are here to get some fire out there on Punta Preta. Yeah, it's going to get exciting as we come into the semis and then into the finals. I mean, things start to move quickly. Quarterfinals are upon us already today. It's been an absolutely epic day of action. The waves are delivering. The wind is delivering. This is what we needed for this event. And uh, we're going to cruise through, I believe, all the way on the men's kite surfing action today yeah that is what it uh, talking to the race director just a few moments before it looks like we are going to be continuing moving on to the semi-final so it is go 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 conditions are there wind are there the crowd is stacked because at the moment there is a cape verdian in the semi-finals that is me montedo there's a cape verdian here in the quarters battling to go through which is Ayrton Corsolino obviously those are two of the biggest local boys let's see if we are going to have a final or not with the Cape Verde flag flying high here we go Ayrton Corsolino just making the most of the last minutes of this heat with a nice delayed wrap not the biggest wave but does he need a big wave to make things happen Oh, you know, it's two absolutely superb turns there. But I don't think it's going to improve any of his current scores with a 9.0 and an 8.13 on the table. 17.13 total score. He's a clear 10 points ahead of Woodley Hall. It's going to be tough. Closing minutes. Oh, nice little grab there with uh, letting the fins loose and a little bit of a 180, just adding some style. And Ayrton at the moment coming in on that last minute, less than 45 seconds. All right, here we have Woodley, who unfortunately is comboed out, Tom. So there's no way he's going to be able to get two waves in that time. So it is going to be Cosolino who's going to be making it through to the semifinals. But I tell you what, shout out to the Aussie as he has been ripping all comp long. Oh. oh, hands in the air, as you can see there on the screen. Ayrton is hungry. He has the fire. He wants it, and he is showing it and giving the crowd what they want to see. And it looks like he's just maybe dropped his kite in there as well. But hands up. Look, that's <laughs> the energy. That is the body language. The crowd goes wild. Now we're talking. Ayrton Cosolino, ladies and gentlemen. What a barrel. That was one of the, the best barrels of the heat so far. Other than, well, Machu's barrel was good, but that was clean. And he disappeared completely and pushed his way out the end. I mean, that, uh, what more can you ask for? Yeah, absolutely. He looks like he... So Ayrton, just you can see in the waves there, in the mix. It looks like his kite is down, but I wonder if he's going to be able to get that one in the air shortly. I can see someone get, trying to give him a hand. There we can see Pedro. But yeah, you can see the kite is in, and there we have the Red Bull athlete. Look into the sky. He is happy because what a heat. Yeah, he knows he's done well. He doesn't seem like he's in too much of a hurry to get that kite back up. I think he's just taking a rest. I think also he knows he's out of the impact zone and he is just going to be chilling. But what an uh, action is this, this, this we is what I, is, is this what I was talking about earlier? Is this a classic deep water pack down we're about to see here from Erte Cosolino himself? So ladies and gentlemen, get out your pencil, get out your pen. This is how it's done <laughs> in a stressful moment. <coughs> That was a real highlight there from Ayrton. Going for a barrel in the last seconds of that heat. I mean, he knew he already had 
the score that he needed, but he threw it down anyway for the crowds. Um, it's a tough thing to get barreled on a kite. Um, here we go. Let, let's have another look. It's really difficult to get yourself into that right position, but that bottom turn, he sees little his backhand tweaking that line just to make sure the kite's in the right place, and then just getting his body position perfect for that exit. And then finishing it off with a couple of big slams and just full commitment. Welcome back, everybody, as we continue on with the action here, Kate Verde. Next up, Pedro Matos Mitu Monteiro. It does not get much better than that, Tom. Yeah, this is an exciting pairing. And as we move into the semi-finals of this men's kite surfing action day here at Punta Preta, the waves are building, the wind is getting stronger, and the action is getting hotter. Uh, these guys are the best kite surfers in the world and uh, however it pans out, we're in for some exciting action in the final. I can see Olivia Hollingshead Ayrton versus Me Too final, fingers crossed. I mean, anything can happen at this stage. There's no one way or another. These guys all know what they're doing out there. They're all professional athletes. They're all completely aware of the spot, their equipment and how they use it. So it's just down to Mother Nature now to deliver them what they need to uh, to get through the next rounds. Yeah, no, and you know, Mother Nature throwing them a bone. We've seen some absolute skeletons being thrown out on out here because there has been some bombs opening all across the reef. We just saw Ayrton with one of the nicest barrels so far. But he got an 8.5 for that last wave with the barrel there from Cozzolino. And now it is semi-final time, semi-final number one. A Pedro Matos, Mitu Montedo coming your way. I'll say it again, open a cold one or get some popcorn as we have cinematics coming towards you. Yeah, it's looking absolute fire out there. And I'm starting to to get a bit jealous sitting in this hot box that we are in on the beach about not being out there on the water myself, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. It is very hard to not you know, kind of glance off to the left and look at it in person and have to keep it on the screen. But it's great to see the action and to see the white in the eyes of our athletes out there right now so 18 minutes of action here for this semi-final and let's see who is going to be making it through to the grand finale all right so there we can see out the back there's some of the sets you can see the crowd starting to pack in as our athletes are getting ready out there with the duotone pedro matters with the uh, F1, that is Mitu Montedo. Mitu took out last year's champion, Machu Lopez, in that previous heat, getting a 15-point total score. We saw Pedro Matos in that last one, a 17.40. Also very, very strong contender. It is going to be a battle of the ages. Who is going to be going into the grand final? We will soon find out as the green flag is in the sky and both of the boys are circling out the back. Yeah, this is a real battle of experience versus energy on the water out there right now. And a little question on, on YouTube just about helmets, and it's an interesting one, but I would go as far as saying that it is completely up to every individual rider as to what equipment they choose to use and uh, you know whether they choose to use a helmet or not. I mean, being a natural ocean sport, sometimes a, a helmet 
can impede the way you ride. It can impede, you know, especially with lines of a kite. It can get snagged on things. It can, uh, you know, it's not always a good thing to have one. That said, it is the rider's choice to use a helmet, especially on a spot like this. And we've seen Ayrton starting to wear his helmet as he takes a lot of risks with his riding. And, uh, yeah, I think it's becoming more and more of a choice, a personal choice for each athlete to, to start doing that. But we've seen these decisions in the surfing world as well as, you know, the big wave riders now. Um, it's up to each individual rider what they choose to, to use. Yeah, and here we can see Pedro Matos, two nice open hacks. Just kind of getting loose, both of them, right on the point. They know they have to take off on the set ways. Every single one has to count. One of the things I really love about Pedro is how he really drives through those fins, opens that shoulder, pushes his way along. Me too, we saw before. One thing I will say about Me too, he is a lot further up on the point. I do wonder if he is going to be looking for that little shade, those bows that we saw in that heat before. Pedro there just oh. looked, cuts back, roundhouse all the way, pure surfing style, but still not a long way for those two. Those scores, good to kind of get them up there, but we know they're going to be increasing them. Definitely, definitely good to get chalk on that board early, especially in the heats, 18 minutes, um, 18 minute heats with a 15 second swell, as we've said earlier. 22 minute heats with a 15 second swell. I mean, it's still, it is not a long time. So it's nice to get some chalk on the board early, even if it's just two or three turns. All right, so both of them are out the back. They've had a solid six minutes. Pedro with one score, looking like it's going to be around the five average for that one. So, you know, as you say, Tom, nice to get some, you know, chalk on the board or some ink on the paper. But Me Too is waiting. Both of these guys know that they can do it. They've been in the position. They've won competitions. They've won right-handed competitions. They are two very powerful athletes. Me too. Obviously local here. He has got a lot more experience at this wave. But Pedro Matos is hungry for the title. He's been putting the work on off in the offseason. And now we're waiting to see if he can take out probably one of the hardest riders to go out against here. The waves are big and it is yeah, it is also cool. And we can see Matos and Benetton backside final. We will have to find out. Obviously, you know, Pedro being a front side rider, it's gonna be a double or nothing. Who is gonna be taking it? Who is gonna earn that first spot in the grand finale? 50 minutes of action, and we will find out. Yeah, I think this the one thing that makes this style of kite surfing so interesting to watch is not only the skill level of the riders, but it's also very much down to how nature is delivering and how the waves come through. Like you can be the best rider in the world, and a lot of the, these guys are the best riders in the world, but it's down to the, these waves to deliver for you. It's down to the rider to translate the wave, and it's down to all their strategy of how they put together their heat. And we've seen like a lot of upsets so far throughout this event, and uh, you know it, it really is anyone's game, especially at this level. Yeah, and you could see there, obviously talking about tactics, you can see Mito was going to have a little look on the way, but decided against it because he wants to keep priority. He wants to keep priority on the point to make sure that he can take and have first pick of a set to come his way. 5.57 there from Matos, the Brazilian so far in the lead. Early days, though, 14 minutes to go as we have the battle out there in between Montedo and Matos. Yeah, both big hitters. Pedro Matos hailing from Brazil. Very much used to the Brazilian waves around Rio de Janeiro and uh, other spots up and down the Brazilian coast. Um, I don't know whether there's a point break like this in Brazil, though. Um, but there's very few right-hand point breaks like this in the world. Um, but his surfing style has really been carrying him through every heat so far just his ability to link turns the bottom turns flowing through the wave effortlessly but here we go as Mitu takes his first scoring wave 
Yeah, here we go. All right, first big turn, letting off a lot of spray off the top, going engaging for another check turn, keeps the speed. Can he get past that section? It does look like he can. He is going. Is it going to close out in front of him, or is he going to get more off the top there for Montedo? Sometimes it's just worth keeping with these waves for as long as you can because they just open out and keep delivering. I think that is going to be a good score for me too. A lot of connecting turns. I mean, there was a bit of a section in the middle that he had to skirt around, but I think these two opening turns, look at this. Ooh, high line. So he didn't really use the kite to get around that section that much, you know. He, he, he did keep high on that wave and generate that board speed, so I think the judges will like that. Yeah, and the kite Oz, kite or Oz, we will find out the fins that Matt, that uh, Matos is using. We'll get that info for you as soon as we can see him on the water. It's definitely, you know, obviously a lot of the guys and girls in the surfing background. Fins is a big thing, and Pedro has multiple sets, so we'll find out exactly. And now, talk about fins. Look at the shark out the back. Pedro Matos is taking off on a bomb. Look at this. What a wave. It's a thing of beauty, this wave. It is. Where's he next going to pop up? Oh, he's cut back right into the section, waiting for this thing to reform. Realized it's probably not going to. Yeah, Pedro. So now Mitu's going to have position once again. Pedro, 6.50. And uh, we can see Mitu with 6.53. So he has, in one wave, better score than the two. But then Pedro with that one turn is probably going to be increasing that. But yeah, still the boys yet to land a big set wave. They are continuing on as we're just over 11 minutes in this heat. And now we will see who is going to be making their way through into the grand final, the first semi-final of the competition on your screen right now as Brazil versus Cape Verde. All right, so both of the athletes are already back in position, waiting for another set to come through. So it is Montedo with a slight lead, but early days, early days, as Pedro looks like a small score is going to be coming in his way for that one-hit wonder, meaning he will probably go through in first position. Me to Montedo having a look. No, deciding against it one more time. So both are already ready as we have just gone past that 10 minute line. So more than halfway through the seat, 22 minute heats. Top two waves count out of 10 possible rides. What are the, af what are the judges looking for from the athletes? Surfing 100% and going to give us a textbook run. Keep your eyes out. Me too, Montedo. Does he get it? Can he come out? Oh, he does. That was a Big nice. barrel there. He handled that well. That was the doggy door out the front of the wave. Really made the most of that first section, which is a rare, a rare barrel section. And now he looks like he's going to work it all the way through to the inside as well as the wave sort of peters out down the reef. But there's more to give. Talk about punching his way out through the face, like you say, doggy door there. And here, Me Too, as he's got that barrel, he wants to get some turns on this so it can be scoring potential. Are we going to be seeing the air? There's the kite going high, lands it, and <laughs> airing <laughs> off the end. This is going to be interesting to see how this is going to be scored. Oh, and then follows it up with yet more turns. I mean, this, these are the biggest scores we've seen so far. Waves ridden all the way to the beach. We saw a barrel. 
and air and multiple turns on that wave. I, it will be very interesting to see how the judges place that score, but I've got a feeling it is going to be high. Yeah, I reckon it is going to be high. Kind of hitting the refresh button here because that is going to be interesting. And yet, yeah, that is definitely going to be a very nice score there from me too. He read it really well. We've seen him do it before all the way getting the tube. He, he is positioning himself a little further down on the reef, but all the way up the top. And he's looking for those barrels because he knows this wave. And that is kind of, I reckon, it ace up his sleeve. Yeah, I mean, wave knowledge is everything, especially for, for barrels, for airs like seeing it coming and uh, we see there he scores an 8.37 for that wave that's a big score it's going to help him a lot and it's going to put all the pressure onto Pedro Matos yeah those are two good scores there for me to an 8.37 and a 6.53 but hey this ain't over to the buzzer Pedro Matos big outside reef oh, off the top keeping the speed Matos means business here we go the Brazilian he know he needs a score he knows he needs a score he's Ready for a shreddy, as they say, massive turns off the top. It would be interesting to know what fins he's using because they are generating some serious buckets of spray off the back of this epic wave. And look, he's going to continue working this onto the next section. I love these drone shots because it really allows you to see how this wave wraps down the coast. Look at it right the way from the left at the top, bending all the way down towards the beach and towards those beach bars with all of those spectators chilling with cold ones in their hands. I mean, what a setup we have here. You can actually hear the cheering out the window here from the from the crowd as the afternoon starts to heat up. Big up to everybody on the live stream. If you've just joined us, you can see the numbers going up with people tuning in as we head towards the finals of the men's kite surfing final here in Cape Verde for the GKA World Championship. It is heating up here and look at the action going on in front of our eyes right now. Some big waves being ridden, some big moves and it is not easy. If you're a surfer, you're watching this, you will appreciate how hard it is to surf a wave that's this fast. If you're a kite surfer watching this, you will really appreciate how hard it is to be this skilled, both on a wave and with a kite. I mean, we're seeing Me Too is on fire. So that was some, uh, there was some serious, serious scores dropped there. I think there might have even been a, a double, a double cover-up on that last wave. Look at those crowds building on the beach. We've got the local crew coming down to support me too. And all the local boys that are out there on the water. At the moment, all the pressure is on Pedro Matos from Brazil with five minutes left in the heat. Yeah, there we can see. So at the moment, Me Too in the lead, waiting for a score to drop for Matos. There you go, 7.10. So only 1.9 points difference in between these two. So it could come down to that final wave. Let's have a little look out the left-hand side. Both of them are in position. So both of them are in position. I'm going to say I reckon Me Too might have priority as he is closer to the point and to that upwind mark, Tom. Yeah, yeah, he does indeed have priority currently with the biggest in fact two of the biggest scores on the board at the moment it's uh you know pedro is going to need to pull something massive out of the bag to uh to advance here yeah and there we can see the finals are on our way semi-finals are in the water who is going to be making it through to the end show we will soon find out So welcome back. If you've just joined us on the live stream on YouTube, make sure you get involved in the comments below. Ask us any questions you want to hear about this epic showdown of some of the best kite surfing, wave riding in the world here in Cape Verde, the sunny island of Cape Verde at the epic wave of Punta Preta. We've got the crowds building, the atmosphere's going off, the Sunday vibes are on the go. 
I can feel it, Joe. Oh, I can tell you what. You can feel it all the way across the board. And now the Cape Verdean drums are starting. You can see those knees starting to hobble. Because, I mean, one thing, the, one thing that they can do very well down here is dance. They have the <laughs> rhythm inside them. You can see even the little babies. They're starting to <laughs> rock to side to side with a flow that can't be mimicked. And talking about flow out on the ocean, Mito Montedo, Pedro Matos. Mito in the driving seat very strongly with an 16.70 and he, we can see already that Pedro is comboed out with only three minutes on the clock. Man, I, me too has got some pressure here. He's definitely got the local support behind him and I have to say he is riding very well. He's definitely had the lion's share of the best waves in both of the last heats that he's been in. He seems like he's just connected with the spot and sailing through every heat that he's been in so far. Yeah, and a big shout out to Clayton. Thank you that you're enjoying that, the commentary and the action that is happening down here. And strapless religion, I can tell you, my Bible printer presser is massive and firing. Two minutes to go, and let's see if we are going to have another set coming our way. Pedro Matos, sticky situation, comboed out. He needs to get a groove on, and they would have to be two big scores. Me too with that last wave, I'm going to say, has half stuck the nail in the coffin. Yeah, he's definitely driving the nail home, that is for sure, with every bang of the Cape Verdean drum. And we can see there, what size kites are they on? At the moment, we can see they're on nines. The wind has increased a bit, but then, you know, Me too, he is very tended to go on smaller kites so you know we can't really look at him too much he is the one that goes on the smallest nines and tens all the way yeah i mean it's interesting because uh you know kite size makes a big difference but it makes a bigger difference if you're yeah if you're when you're sailing upwind versus on being on the wave right so just obviously the, you want a bigger kite to get upwind quicker to be powered when you're riding upwind but as soon as you get onto that wave face you want a, the smaller kite that you can have so it's a real toss up between being positionally available on top of the point and riding that wave and look, look here we've got me to using his priority just in the last 40 seconds of this heat just to to dominate his competitor tucking under the lip his timing is perfect his center of balance is there look at those slack lines through that bottom turn not putting him off at all as he just jams in under the lip what well, we got a little float section and uh, a long open sort of uh, crumbly section is he going to get round it or is he just going to ride in for a bit of for a bit of local support oh man i mean that is what we we're talking about and you can see also matos here as well with a kind of a last run but as being combo it is gonna be it there it is me too montedo ladies and gentlemen is going to be making his way into the great final at his own spot, Punta Preda, Cape Verde, and the respect also out here for Pedro Matos. What a ride for all of them. I mean, we do have to still wait. Let's not call it too early, Joe. We do have to still wait for that score because, I mean, Pedro seemed happy with that. I think we, we didn't... Yeah, maybe we can get a replay of that last wave from Pedro Matos. Ah, oh, there you can see that tuck up there from Me Too all the way along. And yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Those are the turns. Pedro Matos also, that final wave. Has he done it? We've seen buzzer beaters before. He was almost in a combo situation. We've seen Pedro win heats on the final buzzer again. But we ha there it is. So red flag is in the sky. And it sounds like someone's car is going off as well. Yeah, that's not an event official buzzer. That is a car alarm going off. But uh, everybody's pretty excited. The vibe is palpable here on the beach in the sunshine. The sunburns are coming out. The red backs are appearing as uh, this day gets underway. And we are going to wait for those official results to come in as we are waiting for it. So it is official. 
Mitu Montedo has done it again. Mitu is in to the grand final here for the GK Kitesurf World Cup in Cape a big congratulations also to some amazing riding there from Pedro Matos. And now as we continue on here, what a day. Punta Preta is firing. Let's check the highlights of that last heat. And we are back, coming up, second semi-final. Gabriel Benetton versus Ayrton Cozzolino. Hold on to your hat. Gabriel backside, Ayrton Cozzolino going frontside. Will we see a Cinderella story in between Mitu Montero and Ayrton Cozzolino? Or is the Brazilian going to put a standpoint and stop his run? Wait and see. 22 minutes of action, all of the athletes, everybody is here. The crowd is mobbing the beach as they know there is fire about to happen. Punta Preta full power ahead. Let's see semi-final number two. And yeah, here we can see both of them out the back. Gabriel just having a little touch seeing getting a 2.80 on one of those waves. All right, so Gabriel Benetton is about to go on this bomb. We can see the core athlete. Here we go, backside all the way around. Look at the crowd starting to get involved. Here we go, another turn here for Gabriel. Had a brilliant quarterfinal. And unfortunately, there we can see another wave just not quite forming. Ayrton Cosolino dropping in as well. Big turn off the top. One of the things we know about Ayrton is his speed. And coming into the inside to say hi to his local crowd, Cozzolino starting to get some scores just to be able to get some numbers on the board. And now both of them are going to be going back to the break. And I've just been told that we have Mitu Montedo is on the beach with Tom Court. To back heats. How does it feel to go through that one? And how was it choosing the waves out there? Man, it's so nice, you know, like to be out there. Um, I'm so stoked I passed my heat one more. Um, yeah, so like now let's gonna see what's gonna happen um, after. And, uh, and the conditions amazing. I have a chance to score some nice wave. Man, 
I'm so stoked, you know, like to be here on the water with all these people here supporting me. I'm so pro so stoked, man. Yeah, the vibe on the beach is pretty incredible. This could really be a Cinderella story. It's going to be interesting. You're now through into the final, and uh, yeah, how are you feeling in yourself? Man, it's a lot of pressure, you know, because I'm at home and I know like everyone push, you know, like want to be, I want to see me like in the in the final. Um, so, you know, I try to disappoint nobody, but uh, it's so nice to be there and have all this crowd, you know, like behind support us. And uh, and yeah, man, I'm stoked to be to be here. So cool. <laughs> there we go. The vibe on the beach is hotting up this Sunday. Everybody's stoked to be here. Back to you. Thank you very much, Tom. Congratulations, me too, as he is in to the grand final here for the Cape Verdean. And there we can see Ayrton, huge drop into the pocket. This is one of the best ways. All the way along, and he holds it, gets a little cover up as well. Ayrton, watch out. One of the biggest airdrops we have seen until this date. And he makes it all the way down the line. We will get a replay of that afterwards. But Ayrton also breaking it up and getting a little shampoo at the end. What an insane ride there from Ayrton. Going to be interesting to see how they scored that. But that airdrop was absolutely on the money. Look at this highlight replay of it. Big air drop all the way out the back. Comes around, over, makes it down. Edson Cosolino with the best wave of the heat so far. Looking for a big score. And I mean, that's what I call commitment. Tom, me too. He seems happy and he seems amped. May he seems very stoked with, with everything that's gone on. I think he's more than happy to be past both of those heats he's just happy to be out there on the water with his friends his family everybody on the beach and i just you know i get the personal vibe that you know all of the guys here all of the local riders from cape Verde are happy for him and they're all happy for each other they're just happy to be spending time on the water together and uh yeah two two men on the water at this perfect point break could not be better we could see a Cinderella story for the 40-year-old. He is local legend and uh, commanding all the respect right now. But yeah, look at, I mean, look at Ayrton as well, though. Ayrton is pretty much unstoppable, if you ask me. He's looking very strong out there on the water. You just see on that last wave, serious re-entry, airdrop, probably four or five feet straight to the base of the wave, taking it, no worries. It would, uh, yeah, seem that just second wave in, he's on a 9.43. I mean, that is a serious score, especially as a, as a backup score this early in the heat with 15 minutes to go. Yeah, and here we can see backside also, Gabriel Benetton, one of the most stylish backside riders, all the way up, had a great quarterfinal and now looking to try and gain a spot into the grand finale. But he has an on-fire Ayrton Cosolino, 9.43 for him. But Gabriel, I just love how he really you know, engages that bottom turn and then lets that tail loose at the top. Front side versus back side, it is on. I mean, for me, that was really nice. Those linking turns, really, really nice style. But yeah, he's going to have his work cut out if he wants to, uh, to hold a flag up to Ayrton. But... Backside style, linking turns without any hesitation between turns, for me is some of the st some of the most stylish riding out there. Yeah, no, and you know they can when they go kind of that pass vertical when they kind of prop the board up and kind of stretch it back and then around. But I mean here, Cosolino all the way down into the shore. Best surfers out there. Definitely. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Float re-entry off the lip. Takes the drop. No worries. Straight into another backhand smack. Skirts the section without any working of the kite. Tucks in under the lip and then just, he's just giving himself time. He's not rushing and just using that board to his advantage. 
Yeah, you can you can tell and just pushing his way through the core athlete there. And then Ayrton Cozzolino answering straight back all the way along. We got a battle on our hands. This is the duel that we wanted to see. David versus Goliath. We'll have to decide who is going to take it at the end. 22 minutes of action. Again, top two waves are counting out of 10. And the judges are looking for 100% pure surfing. Comment there, where is Machu? If you've only just joined us here on the GKA live stream, make sure you get involved in the comments. Follow along on all the social medias, and uh, we are going to be here for the next few heats. But the answer to that, Machu, unfortunately, is out of the event. He went through, he, he got knocked out in one of the previous heats. Unfortunately, it was a narrow call, but he just did not get the waves that he wanted. because you can see just as they are pushing their way through who is it going to be to make it here into the final Cozzolino 15.50 Gabriel Benetton 7.18 and I tell you what the ocean is throwing them a bone I think we're waiting for scores as well because uh, Gabriel Benetton's had some had some good waves so far they are really trading hammers here yeah no I mean it is blow for the I mean it comes down semi-final Conditions are there. You can't be an excuse that, you know, we don't have the waves. It does not get much better than this. You really can tell just dropping in those bombs are coming across this right-hand point break. And now the riders are really just going for it. consistent sets. I mean, we're seeing three to four to five sets a heat. And then a lot of the riders, what they're doing is they're using those little inside ones that seem to be giving them those barrels. Yeah, I think it's been consistent throughout the event so far that the inside has been delivering pretty well. You know, like if you can make it round that fat section after the first peak of the wave and you get into the inside section, you're going to get at least three, four, maybe even five turns all the way through onto the beach. And that seems to be what's scoring the highest with the judges today. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what they are looking for is just linking it. But already, Gabriel, 13.67. He has now got two big scores. Ayrton has that big first score, but the second one is what he's looking to improve. 7.07 for the top score for Gabriel. So both of these boys know what they have to do now as they're coming to pretty much already halfway through the heat. They've got the base scores on the cars. Now it is time to start to go for those big ones. Here we go, Atten dropping, sorry, yeah, Atten dropping in, here he is, bang, first turn, top of the reef, got speed, look at that, he's carrying so much speed through this bottom turn, it's insane, and then just timing these hits so well, and then this is what I was talking about, wave starts to slacken off, fatten out, it's about how you link those two sections, and then onto this inside turn section you never quite know what it's going to throw at you but he's looking to improve a 6.07 here as his secondary wave it's definitely not one of the biggest waves out there uh, and you can hear the crowd every time every time Ayrton does a move out there you can hear the crowd going wild and starting to make some noise. It's kind of like a matador with the with the balls. It's ole, ole. He's getting getting the vibes all the time as he, he is the local boy out here. Okay, looks like there's a few issues with the internet stream there. If you're experiencing that at home, apologies. But, you know, as I've said, Paradise doesn't always have 5G. It's just the way it is. But it is heating up here on the beach for the second round of the semifinals. Heat number two of the semifinals here against 
Gabriel Benetton and Ayrton Cozzolino. Two of the best kite surfers in the world. The skill level is there. And uh, they are smashing some lips, taking some names, and uh, trading waves. Make sure you get involved in the comment section below the live YouTube stream or on Facebook, the GKA channel, the GKA Instagram, at GKA World Tour. This is the first stop for 2024 of the GKA Kite Surfing and Wave Riding World Tour. And as you can see, we have some of the best conditions in the world at one of the best point breaks in the world here in Cape Verde on the island of Sal. It is uh, just an unbelievable day for it right here out on the weekend. On the Sunday, there are hundreds of people on the beach getting burnt as we speak, soaking up those cold beers and watching these riders as they destroy this point break. Look at that, Ayrton just stalling for the barrel. Can he <laughs> pull it through? It's just quite unbelievable, to be honest, how he manages to stay on the board sometimes. He is like a variable Spider-Man when it comes to keeping his feet on that board. Um, even in the big air game, Ayrton is quite an unbelievable rider. I mean, he he's geeing up the crowd there. He's feeding off everybody's energy. He wants to try some big moves before the end of this heat. I know that. He's got a pretty confident lead now with a 9.43 and an 8.10. 17.53 combined two-wave score. But Gabriel Benetton isn't that far behind. I mean, he's, you know, on a 13.67 combined score, but with a big nine-point-plus ride, he could. He could answer back. To be fair, I'm not that good at maths, so going to have to uh, trust me on that one. But... He can definitely answer back if if the wave comes his way. Here we go. He is taking. He is on another wave. Let's see how far this one is going to take him down the line. It's tricky to make it around these sections, especially backhand. As you see there, he just gets clipped by the white water and taken out. And Ayrton's going to take the psychological advantage. Bang! Oh, very unlike Ayrton. But don't see his board there. Don't see his board there. It looks like his leash might have snapped. He's definitely got his hand in the air. He's no. Yeah. He's, his leash has snapped. You can see his board at the point. He's got his hand in the air. Ayrton has lost his board. Mid heat. That is a. It's going to be a team effort here. Someone's going to need to get Ayrton his board back. But it gives Gabriel Benetton a small crack of hope here as Ayrton's board just gets destroyed on the reef. Looks like it might even be broken, that board. Definitely got something hanging off the nose. It's going to need a new stick. It's going to need it quickly. As you can see, without a board, uh, it's uh, it's difficult to get back in. Like, he can't actually get back in. Because you need to be able to have your board to create the pressure in your kite to be able to ride upwind. And that's how kite surfing works. Typically, you've got to create your own apparent wind by generating friction against the pull of the kite, which is very difficult to do without a board. But it is indeed a big upset as these massive sets start to roll in. I mean, look at that point break. That just doesn't get any better than that. But I'll tell you what the worst thing is, and that is not having your board on you. That would be the worst thing in this situation. And as we can see, Ayrton's leash has snapped. And he is body dragging his way down the point. Gabriel Benetton's taking off on one of the biggest sets of the day here. What can he do? 
Ah, uh, let's see. That is a very nice. It's stacking up. Ayrton, I can see all the locals running down. I've never seen so many people carrying so many boards. I think he was has an option of five different boards for Ayrton down the end. But yeah, 9, 4, 3, and 8.0 just dropped out there. As after this heat, Tom, we're going to have a 25-minute break because obviously the winner of this heat will be going into the final. So we will have a break. So we will get an interview with the winner, a little breather, time for everybody to get excited because then we are going to be having our finals coming our way. Yeah, everybody is excited for the final. Who is going to be in it? it is... Uh it's been a day of hot action. There's been some big upsets, but at the moment it's looking like it's going to be a uh, full Cape Verdean final. It does look like so far, unless anything else happens. Gabrielle, 7 and a 6.60. Oh, Ayrton putting in the work early already. And now we can see it looks like we are going to be having a sunset standoff so far. Once we finish the men, we are going to be doing the podiums and then going on a standby because then we'll be coming back to the women. So make sure after every, all the action is here, we are still going to have the girls going out there to throw it down. But, I mean, at the moment, some of these waves just coming through. Absolute beauties. And here we can see two minutes to go. And it could be the old Hail Mary and the Cinderella story of the double Cape Verdean final man and that is gonna really up the atmosphere on the beach here two of the biggest wave riding legends in the world up against each other in some of the biggest biggest wave conditions that this has seen in a long time gabriel benetton just smashing his way down the line on his backhand and uh definitely holding the flag for those goofy riders uh waving it high yeah no definitely he has been going all day long and had some of the best backside riding we have seen until date but now you can see Ayrton going from that nine to ten meter as well as the wind does seem like it's dropped off a bit i'm reading 16 to 17 knots here on the wind meter we'll wait to see that updated but yet yeah, the waves are definitely there We've got some great sets coming our way. As you can see, both of the athletes just destroying Punta Preta. One minute to go, and both of them are going back out. Yeah, it's, there's, uh, it's not over until the fat lady sings, as they say. But it's going to be hard in 45 seconds to get another wave, I think, for either of them. Absolutely. No, no, I mean, maybe there looks like some lines, but I don't think, I got a feeling it's not going to arrive in time. 17.53, Cozzolino, 13.67, Gabriel Benetton. And they are turning around, but I can't see much energy out there, Tom. No, not in the next 15 seconds. So we are looking at moving through into an all Cape Verdean final right now between Ayrton Cozzolino and me too Montero and that has got to be an all time for this event yes it is there it is so a uh, big congratulations to Gabriel Benetton some of the best backside riding we have seen but a big shout out to Cozzolino Ayrton Cozzolino making his way into the final here in his hometown we are now going to be going on standby on a break as we have 25 minutes one heat break before we will be continuing on watch out hold on to your hats it is that time for a little toilet break grab a cold one grab a coffee grab whatever you need because finals are coming here for the GK Kitesurf World Cup Cape Verde Keep the window open, keep us live, and we'll be back with some top banter for the finals coming soon.
right, so welcome back everybody as we can start to enjoy the beautiful vibe. And you can see everybody down here getting ready as it is becoming that moment. It is becoming finals as we are going to be starting off with the mini final in between Pedro Matos and Gabriel Benetton. And then the Cinderella story of the grand final, which is going to be in between Mitu Monteiro and Ayrton Corsolino. There's about eight minutes until the start of that heat as we are going to be going into sequence. And you can just see the vibe out here. Let's have a little look at the path of how our finalists made it all the way through. Mitu Montedo, for example, he started off in the heat with Ayrton, where he lost against Ayrton in that first round. Mitu making his way, powering through against Matt Maxwell from the South Africa. Then he was joined against Arthur Mar and Marais from Brazil, where he won that heat to advance through. In the quarterfinals, taking out Matthew Lopez, the winner from last year. And here you can see the vibe on the beach as everybody starting to smile and loving the action. And then in that semi-final where once again Mitu Montedo took out another big heavy hitter contender, Pedro Matos, to make his way into the grand finale. Ayrton now waiting to get out there. And here you can see just everybody with a vibe down here on the beach. As finals is here, Cinderella story, Ayrton Corsolino versus Me Too Montedo. Who is it going to be? Who is going to take the bacon home? But before we get into the action of that final, we will have the mini final, which is going to be in between Pedro Matos and Gabriel Benetton. This is what it's all about. This is what we were waiting for. Smiling, the crowd is here. Punta Preta firing right hand down the line. It's about six to eight foot. And there you can see, we've got surfers out there making the motion, just having it, the vibe. We've got the Cape Verdean starting to get the groove and the dance on as we are a go. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. In about five minutes, we will be starting the mini final here of the GK Kite Surf World Cup, Cape Verde.
And there we can see the youngsters also just giving a hey and a hi. And as I can hear there, so we are one minute away until the red flag is going to hit the sky. Juan Antonio, our race director, just saying it is a go, go, go. There you can see the bottom section here of the competition area where the athletes join and make their way onto the water. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, welcome to the GK Kitesurf World Cup here in Cape Verde. And we are on and we are green light. Red flag is about to go up, first to come out on the water. Let's see who those athletes are going to be. There we have them, Pedro Matos, Gabriel Benetton. Those are the two boys that are we going to be battling it out to see who is going to be third and fourth on the podium. The Brazilian standout is going to be happening. Red flag is just going up in the air. Hold on to your hats as we are about to start the mini final. And then we will move on to the Cinderella story of the grand finale in between Ayrton Cosolino and Mitu Monteiro. And we are going and we are ready. There you can see the waves. Those are the boys that are going to be battling it out here for the mini final. Pedro Matos, Gabriel Benetton from Brazil. I hope all of the galera estáis preparados para ver a vuestros atletas con fuego. So we are on as it is one minute to the start of the mini final. Who is going to be third place and who is going to be fourth place here in Cape Verde? We will soon start out. All right, there you can see in the blue is going to be Gabriel, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and in the white is going to be Matos. Both of these guys knows what it is to compete against each other. The core athlete and the duotone athlete all coming from Brazil. Very, very powerful riders, these two. And I hope you guys and girls are ready. And those cold beers or co hot coffees and popcorn and snacks are ready for the action as it is the finals here of the first event of the Qatar ATK Kite World Tour, the Kite Surf World Cup here in Cape Verde. Okay, so it is on. We have 30 minute heats for the finals. And here it starts. Gabriel Benetton is going to be the first one to throw down. Backside rider representing core there with that section four. And it looks like he is just having a little look-see, starting to get it in. We've been seeing that throughout the day where they just, you know, kind of have a look on some of their sets. They know how important 
the set waves are here. But let's not forget, they have more time, but that doesn't mean they have more waves. Ten wave counts. Top two waves are the ones that get the scores. Here we can see everybody down here on the shore. Aaron, we can see, starting to get themselves ready. Starting to drop in. Here we go. All right. Gabriel Benetton going again. I can say that because of the backside, the size of the waves. We're going to have to see if we can start to see these boys. It is getting big, nice, open face hack there from the Brazilian. Now, this is where they navigate around that section. Driving bottom turn. Just has to eject a little bit earlier because he was not. He was going to get caught by the foam ball. And coming down the line, this is where the wave starts to hollow out a bit. But deciding against it, wants to go and get himself back into position. Pedro Mato speeding across the competition area. Boom! Off the top here. Pedro all the way along. Another big open face hack. And we're getting that time in the afternoon where the sun is right out in front of us. As we are going to be getting it from all angles to make sure you guys and girls at home enjoy the show. Thank you one more time for joining in here on the stream. It's been great to be hanging out here with uh, Tom Court and everybody. Throw some things on the comments. Let us know what you guys and girls want to know. At the moment, they are out on 9 and 10 meter kites. Is the ones they were pumping up just before they were going out. So it looks like it, that is the name of the game. It's pretty much been like that all day. It was lighter this morning where some of the athletes are out there on 11s. But 9s and 10s is the one that is going now. Anderson Kite. Cuida para Madros. Let's see who is going to take it. Two very strong Brazilians. And here we can see Gabriel Benetton just dropping in here. That replay of that last wave. When it comes to scores, let's have a look at some of the numbers as it is at the moment. Pedro Gabriel has a 4.70 and a 0 0.50, but Pedro a 5.7. So Matos in the lead so far in this mini final. All right, Gabriel Benetton racking it up all the way down the line as he comes along. Already some big scores out there. And this is what we're looking for. This is what we want on the water. Keeping himself busy, 4.70 and a 0 0.5. And we can see also... All right, just under 25. We can see Pedro Matos now also looking like he might be taking off on a wave. And we're going to be waiting for this one. There he is all the way out the back. Matos, big open face hack starting as we come all the way down. Let's see what the Brazilian has here for this wave. He is going hit for hit all the way down the line. Matos wanting to get a second score and waiting for that number to hit. All right, and we're going to be 
we are going to be waiting as we can see the guys going back out to the back and get another set let's go down to the beach as i have tom court with an interview with me to montero okay guys welcome back to the beach here and i am with me too yet again he's passed his heat and he's into the final how are you feeling today man so stoked you know like to be down there in the final and also to be with ayrton so we're gonna have like a brilliant podium so man i'm so stoked and also my mom is here i think it's the first time uh she's gonna be uh, on the beach look at me compete you know so there's a lot of emotion going on um yeah man i'm so stoked so now i want to go in the water have fun with ayrton and and then that's it yeah yeah it looks like the conditions are really stepping up this afternoon i mean the wind is pretty much the perfect direction the swells still pulsing uh, I mean, it couldn't be really, it couldn't be much better. Yeah, actually, this is not the really Punta Preta, you know, like, because actually here the wind is really offshore, side off. But the wind is side shore, man, we have some nice wave and everyone have a lot of fun. There is a few girls who wasn't water training. Man, it's, it's a really nice show, you know, and you have a lot of people on the beach as well. So I'm so stoked to be here to be part of this event. And how is it riding with, with Ayrton? He's obviously one of the best riders out there. Um, how are you feeling in general? Well, with Ayrton, you know, like for me, it's like kind of like a little brother. So we spent a lot of time together. We did a lot of it together. So uh, I think now it's going to be just another session together, you know. So I'm going to go in the water like that. Because um, like the goal I have already, you know, I'm reading the podium with him. So uh, yeah, let's see. I'm going to do my best for sure, you know, because uh, I want to be like first. But uh, already to be there with him. So I'm so stuck, you know, like it's so nice. There we go. Good friends, good times and good vibes out there on the water. Back to the studio. Thank you, Tom. Great to hear. Me too. The best of luck to you in that big final. As we continue on the water, Gabriel Benetton and Pedro Matos. And here on the stream, yes, we will be. Maybe we'll be running the women's today as we are going to be waiting for them to appear after the men. So we're going to have a 20-minute break where we're going to do the podiums. Then the women are going to be coming back out onto the water. Beautiful replay, as you can see there, of some of the last rise there from Gabriel Benetton. It's about six to eight foot on the sets is what the information I'm having in. A little bit less than this morning, so I'm going to call more around the sixes than the eights, but we're having some very nice conditions come through. Wind is about 15 knots, as they can see the guys have gone back to tens, and even I'm seeing the elevens pumped up again as we have action out here. And a wave counts when they exit the wave, so that is what gives you the score. A wave will count when they are exit off of the wave. So they have to, if they engage onto the wave, that is opening the scoring potential. And then when they exit the wave and finish it off, that is then when the wave count. With the 10 wave possibility, the top two waves are the ones that give the athletes their score or see if they can make it through to the future rounds. Well, wow, nice of you to turn up, Tom. Oh, How's it going, here we go. We are back. Sorry, I had to be uh, down on the beach with the crowd there. Uh, there's a good vibe on the beach. I can tell you that right now. We've got the uh, battle for third and fourth going on as we speak. 19 minutes on the water. Big shout out to Chucky, who was uh, missing me on the live stream there for the five-minute break that I took. 
but uh, apologies for that. But look at this. Back to the action. Yeah, here we go. 14.87 and 14.63. It is about as close as it can get. The Brazilian standoff already as we have 30-minute heats for these finals. So it means a little bit more action, a lot more talking. And then uh, the Cinderella story coming up next where we will have already Me Too Montedo and Ayrton Corsolino. All right, beautiful replay there from Pedro Matos. Here you can see, and even getting a little bit of a cover up there, a little bit of shampoo. Shampoo. Yeah, if you're out there, you're looking to sponsor a world tour, <laughs> and you're a shampoo <laughs> company, get in contact. This is the place to this be. This is the place to be. You want to spend some of that marketing budget on a decent hairstyle, it is here on Cape Verde. It certainly is getting the style and getting the groove. And I tell you what, the two boys that are going to be coming up in the finals have as much style as it can go. Cinderella story of those two. But now out on the water, look at Pedro wow. firing. Wow, wow, wow. Look at this. What a wave selection. Bang. Slight bit of white water from the wave before. But this is shaping up to be an insane ride. Super vertical attacks. Really nice shape of wave. And, uh, yeah, skirting along the in inside there. Yeah, Pedro milking this one all the way down. 8.30, 6.57. So he, I reckon he's going to be improving on that backup score. Pedro's going out there in the semifinals. He was hoping to get in the finals, but Mitu Montedo and the experience took it to him. And once again, Mitu making another final. This is the only event in the season he competes in. He's won it before, and he's in a final once again. Yeah, and he's just telling me right down there on the beach. His mum is on the beach to support him and to watch him for the first time ever in competition. And what really stands out to me about Cape Verde and the locals here is their passion for supporting each other, their community, their family, and their love for sort of the friends and family that they have. It's, uh, it's a real inspiration. It's great to see. It's great to see them support each other. And it's also great to see how important kite surfing is to, to them here on, uh, on this small desert island. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, I mean, one thing about this desert, it is hot over here. Probably about 25 degrees sunscreen is on all over the place. Totally and was. it is so nice just to be chilling. And there we can see also, I think that, Ooh. if I'm not mistaken, is someone in the water that shouldn't be. Just a random, you know, having a little section. Why not in the middle of a final of a world tour? Yeah, there we go, yeah. At least he's wearing a helmet. He's obviously got excited <laughs> seeing the crowd. He was like, i got to get a wave. I don't care. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a moment of glory for that man. Yeah, there. look at that. He's going to get some uh, some digs for that in the bar tonight. That is for sure. Yeah, he'll be like, you know me? I was in that <laughs> mini final. Did you see that turn, babe? It was it, radical. It was epic. Unfortunately, he failed on the bottom turn. Not sure who it was, but hey-ho. We'll find him later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. I know our... I know our race director will be saying a few beautiful things to him. There you can see the boys keeping hydrated. Nice little bit of our Coca-Cola to keep the energy up. As we can see, look at that is the vibe that we have down on the beach. We've got everybody starting to get ready as the mini finals is out there already. We have Matos who has a total of 15.77. Benetton, 1463. The Brazilians really throwing down. But the moment, the magical moment. Cinderella story, two Cape Verdeans in a final in Cape Verde. It doesn't get more perfect than that. No, it doesn't indeed. And, you know, just speaking to me too just then, and I know Ayrton's going to feel the same, that, you know, they're already, they already know their first second. They already know they're on the podium together. True. I don't think either of them would mind the result. They're both going to have smiles on their faces. And that's, I think, where, when we're going to see the best out of both of them. They're going to be relaxed. They're going to be there to have fun, 
and they are just sharing time on the water together. And for, for them and for this island, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, I mean, they have so much mutual respect and that, that's one of the cool things to see, you know, the sportsmanship. And it's, you know, that's one thing that from one generation to the next has to be laid out. That's what you want to see is like, you know, as you say, Tom, they will be happy with any of the results, but <laughs> there's going to be absolute war on Punta Preda. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Neither of them are going to take any prisoners. And uh, Ayrton is jacking himself up on some high-energy protein bars right now, I can tell you that. Got look shackers at, in the crowd. Look at these guys on the beach working on their sunburn. Big up. Definitely, uh, definitely working on mine. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, we're, we're trying to get there. I reckon, to be honest, with the with the sun that's coming through this booth, I reckon we're going to get T-shirt burn, mate. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually frying. It's definitely hotter than 26 degrees in here, that is for sure. Yeah, they've got the old Swedish Cape Verdean sauna here. <laughs> and there, yeah, we can see Gemma out of the back, double-handed with the camera and the microphone, getting ready. It looks like, obviously, we can start to see our media team getting out onto the beach as we are coming to those magical moments and a little dance from the Portuguese man of war here, Mr. Cardoso. So, Pedro Matos in the lead. Gabriel Benetton second. 12 minutes, half an hour heats. These are long heats because let's not forget they only have 10 waves also. I mean, 10 waves is a lot of waves. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of sessions you'll go out and you can spend two hours on the water and you'd be lucky to get 10 waves. Very much so. <laughs> Very mean, much so. Especially, I mean, surfing. 10 waves on a kite, maybe, maybe less... Maybe more achievable, but mm. I mean, most surfers, I would know, probably get 10 waves, less than 10 waves every session. Yeah, no, I mean, but hey, you can see in Punta Preta, we saw averages of seven waves in the previous hits. Let's see if that is going to be increased. At the moment, they're at five, and they're a little over that halfway through. So obviously, you know, looking for the set waves over here in Punta Preta, they're going to be holding those because they want to, you know, have the maximum scoring possibility. Matos, 8-3 and a 7-4. We see Gabriel, 7-6 and a 7. Very close in between them. More than 11 minutes to go. And it looks like there's some motion in the ocean. Let's see who's going to be jumping in next. It's all about wave selection out there at the moment. Looks like Pedro Matas got a small lead, but it could change any point. I mean, Gabriel Benetton with double sevens on the board. It could all change. So they are out the back now. And it looks like, yep, there he is. Cool rider, Gabriel Benetton coming in. Tom, I'm going to say one thing. I reckon the wind has dropped a bit. Yeah, the wind is dropping maybe slightly. I mean, the conditions have varied throughout the day. But as we heard uh, from me too, it is great wind direction. It is unusual to have this sideshore wind here. It's mm. normally a lot more offshore. Uh, so this is actually oh. perfect conditions like with uh, enough wind strength and side to side off conditions we we can see the best out of these riders right now um, we're going to see different moves different possibilities vertical hit, vertical attacks and nice barrel opportunities i think if the uh if the waves open out and we get those sets coming through for that final as you can see the waves are starting to run a lot longer than they were earlier Getting down through the uh, through the section to the reef, building all the way through to the inside. Yeah, you saw a nice wave there from Gabriel. Let's have a little look at the scores. What's going to be coming through? I reckon, 
he might be improving as there are some nice numbers coming his way. It was a very big wave. And as you were saying there, that side shore really allowing them to get those hits. And here we can see that wave there from Matos. Boom, off the top. Yeah, side shore wave riding is really nice. And actually, it's a, it's a good point about kite surfing in general, how the wind direction changes your riding style or the ability of things that you can do with a kite because you can pretty much ride waves in almost every wind direction except dead offshore but yeah you can ride onshore waves side shore waves side offshore waves um and it changes the nature of how you ride so you know it's easy to think that wave riding on a kite is always the same the timing of the kite steering was always the same but it couldn't be more different. Like you have to be a very adaptive rider in order to change your riding style, even to a few degrees of wind change. And I think that's uh, you know it's an important thing to explain, especially for surfers that are watching. And I saw a few comments on the YouTube channel earlier about you know how kite surfing just looks a bit easy to ride waves, and you can use the kite to support you and things like that. But actually. It couldn't be more different, you know, to be multitasking on a wave, to make that wave the best it can be and to make the best out of that wave whilst controlling your kite, whilst controlling your board, whilst reading the wind direction, whilst reading the reef and how the wave's going to develop actually just adds layers of complexity. Mm. And if you don't do it, you probably would struggle to understand it without a thorough explanation. Yeah, I mean, you have to try it, and that's one of the things we do recommend to anybody watching and starting to enjoy the kite surfing world. Get yourself to a school. Give it a go. It is such a cool sport to be able to harness the power of the wind. And then when it comes to the discipline that we have here, getting on a kite with a surfboard just opens up a can of worms. And, you know, we've been talking throughout the stream as well. Equipment, depending on those conditions, like you're saying there, Tom, you know, you might be wanting some sort of equipment or other. We've seen on these offshore locations, a lot of the athletes looking for a little bit more punch in their kite, a little bit more of a powerful kite to be able to keep them on there. You know, when you go to onshore locations, you kind of really want to be able to depower that kite so you can stay on and really get some of those turns. Again, knowing your, qui knowing your quiver, knowing your kit to get the best out of it. But yeah, I definitely recommend if anybody is watching this and liking what they see and want to get into kite surfing, head down to an official center. There's for sure loads near and every location worldwide you know we have our partners here f1 and do its own supporting the stream you go on there go on their web pages they can tell you different locations shoot us up here on the comments where you're at or where you want to go and have a holiday and we can tell you who to go in and have a shout at and one of the most important things i will always say when you go to a node lo a new location and you are a kiter or a surfer pay your respects talk to the locals ask them how it works and then you ha never have any problems yeah, exactly, Joe. And, you know, I know a lot of people sort of dismiss kite surfing in some ways because it looks complicated because of the distance of the lines, because of the kite, because of how, you know, how uh, complicated it appears. But once you, you know, just put one foot in front of the other on your learning journey, you'll realize that kite surfing is one of the best ways to unlock the pleasures of the ocean, you know. I always uh, compare kite surfing to you know, standing on the top of a powder-strewn mountain with a snowboard, you know, you can choose your line down that mountain. You can go any which way you want. You can ride any style you want. You can hit the park. You can hit the powder. You can drop cliffs. You can jump as high as you want, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's there's not many sports in the world that offer that freedom. How it is here, you can really tell just, you know, and to, there's something about the water. There is something about the ocean that is, you know, it's just refreshing. You know, those, those early morning surfs or those early morning kites and you can, you know, when there's not a lot of people out on the break. I mean, you know, we, I saw an interview with John John Florence about pipe and he was saying that one of the things he loves about the contest is that he can get pipe to himself and a friend and doesn't get much better than that. And, you know, kind of a similar thing that is happening over here in Cape Verde. You know, these guys... They are out there with their mates, having a ball, having a surf, and here we can see the two Brazilians enjoying Punta Preto at its full power. Yeah, exactly. Time on the water with friends. 
time on the water in general i mean it doesn't get better than that look at that that's that's verging on triple overhead that set that's that's a big wave it's starting there. to get some size obviously punta preta knows that Ooh. it's grandsons and its sons me too montedo and Ayrton Cosolino are, are getting ready to go into a big final look at this snap leashes boards on the rocks recovery efforts going on there um yeah, I mean, there's always a good support crew. Everybody's always down to help each other. That's what I was saying earlier when Joe wasn't in the box. There is such a good vibe in the kite surfing community, and that's driven by the fact that at any point you could need help from somebody. So it's not like in other sports, specific sports, which I won't name individually, where you can cultivate some relatively bad attitudes towards non-locals or you know people coming and joining you out on the water. Kite surfing is a friendly sport, full of friendly people, where everybody that engages in it knows that at any point they could need someone's help. So it really creates a good vibe on the water. Yeah, and it's all about a community. I mean, let's not forget, surfing is the one of the original tribal sports. It's about looking after the people that are around you and giving that extra hand and that extra help. And you can see here, Kelton Lopez with Pedro Matos. Kelton hailing out from Cape Verde, lives a lot of time over there in Portugal and spends a lot of time here with Pedro. And that's what it's about. You know, you compete, can, can compete against each other. It's one family. I think, you know, that's one of the things I love about the GK is the riders. They are ambassadors on and off the water. And, you know, they, they are something to look up for for the future generations. Yeah, and going back to, you know, being an ambassador, if you're, a, if you're a hopeful young Grom looking to be a pro sportsman, there is no better value you can have than being a nice, amiable person. And it's as much about that as it is about being good at the sport itself. Obviously, to be the world champion, to be the best, is uh, one of the main parts of being a professional uh, sportsman. However, there is only one place at the top of the sport and only one person can be the world champion so if you're not the world champion you got to be a damn nice guy absolutely and there's one word that i would love to say and that was in the times of sean connery the highlander there can only be one mate there can only be one and if not chop off their head and that is what is going to be happening in the, the heat coming up next because two friends two batting it out on the water there can only be one champion here in Punta Preta. And who is going to have bragging rights? Because both of the boys are from here, Cape Verde. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a good result one way or the other. And there's going to be a lot of smiles about town tonight. That is for sure. Yeah, no matter what, they know they're going to have a Cape Verdean champion. So here you can see both of them are already at eight waves. So they've been getting plenty of rides down here. As we are in the final 90 seconds, there we can see Serena Luce, and that is Giada and Julia Giada, Joshua's wife, also one of the event organizers. A very, very big thank you for them to putting on this great event and, you know, doing the old wave dance yesterday to make sure this swell hits the reef here in Punta Preta. Yeah, exactly. I'm so pleased that this forecast came in. We were talking about it all day yesterday. If you uh, stuck with us on this live stream feed, uh, about the forecast and how it was going to hit and uh, here it is in person live and direct straight to your screens um, out here on this tiny Atlantic island chain just getting pounded by this long range groundswell uh, wrapping onto the reef perfectly side shore wind we could really not ask for more uh, for the GKA first stop of the 2024 season yeah, and we can see that what is a mini final? A mini final here, Pedro, means that it is the battle for third and fourth place. So that is before the big final. So third and fourth place will be decided, and you can see how close it is. And I'm going to say one to John. You're drooling watching these conditions. Mate, you should try watching these conditions in the booth with the <laughs> real thing happening three meters away from you. You don't even want to imagine what we're doing with yeah, with your kite in the back of the car in the car park. I mean, think about that. <laughs> All right. Well, there it is, waiting for it to be official. As it stands, it does look like Pedro Matos has taken that heat. We will get the official result to you very shortly. But before Just we do, let's grab some highlights and a short commercial break.
Welcome back, everybody, as it is time for the final. And we can see everybody starting to get back onto the water as it is one minute to the start of the grand final. And let's see the faces of those two warriors. There they are, Me Too Montedo, Ayrton Cosolino, the Cinderella effect, the Cinderella story. Two Cape Verdeans in the final for the Cape Verdean event, the season opener. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, as we are going to have a battle on our hands. 30 minutes of two of the best wave riders in the world, and they were brought up here in Cape Verde, so they are in their back garden. Let's not forget Ayrton representing the flag of Cape Verde and Italy, and Mitu Montedo here for Cape Verde. Mitu, white Lycra, F1 rider. Ayrton Cosolino is in the blue, ride, blue Lycra representing Duotone and Red Bull. All steam ahead, pedal to the metal. Your grand final here for the 2024 GKA Kite Surf World Cup Cape Verde. All systems are go right now, and uh, the excitement on the beach is palpable. There's hundreds of people turned up to watch this right now. The swell is pumping, and we have the green flag up. So let's get into this. 30 minutes of the world's best kite surfing. Here we go. Ayrton is opening the account straight away. He's not wasting any time. Here we go. Tucking in for a little shade straight off the bat. Timing perfect and out into some massive tail blows. Just, just delivering for him right there straight away. I think he's going to be happy with that first chalk. He certainly is. I mean, we've been saying about body language, and here we can see Ayrton straight off the bat, like you said there, Tom, all go. And you can see he just pulls in here, nice little bit of shade, not as deep as we've seen him before, but still, as the buzzer goes off, and there, boom, a couple of nice hacks making it happen, and we're waiting for some scores to hit. Me too, also had a little wave, but pulled out early. 30 minutes of action, plenty of time. Let's not forget top two waves are the ones that count. They have 10 wave rides each as we are here for the grand final Cape Verde in the beautiful island of Sal here. The perfect right-hander that is Punta Preta. Yeah, that's it. If you're watching live on YouTube, make sure you get involved in the comments. We can see the viewers going up. If you've just joined us, this is the final of the first stop of the Qatar Airways GKA World Kite Surfing Tour with some of the best action that you're going to see on the water. Oh my goodness, did you see that replay? Wow. Me too, pulling out all the stops there with a big air attempt. And straight back into another wave. I mean, he is feeling it today. Oh, does he? Did he? Oh, I thought he was going to come out there for a moment. And one of the thing you can see is the beach is mobbed. All right, here we can see. Going down, this is Me Too, and look how he just, the power and how he tucks in here. Bormer gets underneath the lip all the way down, and this is where Me Too is the specialist, breaking. I thought for a moment he was going to come out there, mate. I know, I know. It was looking good for a second. And just on that wave before, you saw him go to the air. Massive, massive punt. Looked like he was going to land it. Just didn't quite manage to hang on to it, but you can tell that there is no... No, hole, no holes barred. Yeah, and it's looking like Ayrton has two big numbers about to hit. Here we can see the ladies also, as they know they're going to be coming up next. We can see there from the left-hand side, Muna White, Mikaeli Sol, also Daniela Moreno. And if I'm not mistaken, that was looking like Camille Losseran, some of the top women athletes, as they will be coming up next. As soon as we finish this final, we'll be going into the podium ceremony for 20 minutes, and then it is back on the water with the girls, Tom. How exciting. It's such a pleasure just to get this event running in such good conditions here today. It's so nice to see such good action. I mean, these boys are indeed on fire, as Elena Beto 
on YouTube is saying, and also the ocean is on fire. It's just delivering, pumping set after set onto this reef. You see Ayrton just art, artfully negotiating that bottom turn. And, and throwing himself into it. The body language, Tom. He, the, I mean, Ayrton is hungry. You can see he wants this. Yeah, you can see he wants this. You can also see that he knows exactly how dangerous Me Too can be on his day. Like, Me Too is relaxed. He's in front of his home crowd. He's got his mum on the beach, and he is ready for Shreddy. And Ayrton all the way down to the line. Big scores. He's already got an 8.25, a 7.93. We've seen him do it before. Can he do it again? Ayrton, he knows what it is to be up against Me Too. All of the Cape Verdeans knows what it is to go up against him. But just look at the power, how he is not leaving anything in the tank throwing linking making sure he keeps the speed to get past the section i mean these boys you can tell know this break like the back of their hand and yeah the boys are definitely on fire there elena están rompiendo punta preta question coming in on youtube are the judges scoring the airs and i would say yes judges definitely Definitely scoring the air game. Uh, the air game's a big part, of especially this break, because I think you know a lot of the air game in kite surfing's been evolved and developed by riders like Ayrton Costellino right here. And strapless airs, let me tell you, are not Oof. easy, especially landing back into the same wave. You don't have, it's not like big air, strapless kite surfing where you're keeping the board on your feet with just the wind pressure. You're having to air downwind and keep the pressure, keep the board on your feet and land back into that same wave. So air, the air game is definitely getting judged high, barrel game getting judged high, but the overall expectation of the judges is to make it as much like surfing as possible. And also these big hacks that our athletes are doing, you can see me too. This wave is one of the biggest sets we've seen so far. He stays right up on that foam ball because he wants to get into that hollow position. We've been seeing him do that before. And if he can get in there again, he needs to start to get on because he knows Ayrton is on it. Me too, getting caught on the top and going down there on that one. So that's not going to be the score, as you can see. And now we are going to have Ayrton, as it looks like. Cosolino is about to drop in. And there's a replay here of Montero. And, uh, yeah, that, that wave was unfortunate. See, he uh, ended up getting sort of stuck in the foam ball and had to delay his down-the-line push for a few seconds, which I think will overall detract from the flow of the wave. But, you know, you have to react as a rider to uh, everything that... Um, everything that comes. And we can see there answering the question about Ayrton's board. He is on an SLS, one of the boards that is gonna be coming out next season. So making sure it works. And I tell you what, it looks like he is working for him here, throwing it down the line. And I mean, Tom, he's now, you know, we've seen him going for barrels, he's going for airs. Now this is where you can see the professor starting to make his equation and bring it into line. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, there's no better person to be testing new boards than somebody like Ayrton. He puts things through, the, through their paces, pushes them to the limits, and, uh, yeah, you know, often riding a lot of unreleased equipment and, and putting prototype SLS equipment through its paces and testing. And, you know, if, you know, Ayrton can make it work, well, actually, Ayrton can make pretty much anything work. I, I was wondering but what you were going to say there. <laughs> I, was I was like, okay. Well, let's go uh -huh. with that one, yeah. Yeah, let's go with that one, yeah. Well, he's on a prototype board, let's put it like that. Yeah, no, but yeah, it's good to good to test it. And hey, final of the Cape Verdean event. I think that is test approved. You can there see the Cape Verdean boys also there. We saw Wesley Brito. Let's not forget this is a double event as we have the sister tour of the GWA Wing Falling World Tour. It's going to be coming at us very soon as well. As I said, after this final, we are going to be going to the podium and then back to the ladies. The beach is packed. It is mobbed. And everybody wants to see who is going to be the champion. Me too, Montero or Ayrton Corsellino at the moment Ayrton definitely in the driving seat for sure with just over 20 minutes still on the clock uh, there's plenty of time for this heat to continue um, we've got 
Another question on whether Ayrton's riding Switch or not. He is, indeed. Ayrton is riding Switch. We talked about this in the last couple of live streams about how kite surfers really do push the boundaries between Switch and regular. Um, obviously, by the nature of the sport, you have to ride Switch and regular both ways anyway. But it means that as a kiter, generally, you've got the capacity to ride both goofy and regular one way or another. Probably not to the standard that Ayrton is showing us right now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but he could ride this wave backside or frontside. He's just ch picking and choosing his moments right now. Yeah, but I mean, you know, let's not forget that Ayrton has grown up on this wave. This is where he learned his moves. This is where he calls home. And you can see he just making every turn. And look at the size of some of those bombs. Solid double overhead Bang. out here. All the way down. Is he going to tuck in? He's kidding it right Bang. on the spot there, Tom. Mate, look at that wave. That was just a runner. Is it going to steepen up through the inside? We've got this little f fat section here that you often have to pass through. You know, he's going to call that a day. But, you know, still five or six of the biggest turns on the biggest face we've seen. And Tom, look at the beach, absolutely stacked all the way along. As you can see, people all the way down the beach watching their champions. This is what we want to see. Look at these conditions. Me too, Montego dropping in. <sighs> look at this setup. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. It is world-class action going on right there at a world-class spot with uh, world-class viewing conditions. I mean... You the, the spectators are less than 20 feet away from the edge of the water right now. You are in the action if you're standing on the beach. And uh, it couldn't be more worth the trip to come to an event like this. Yeah, no, and to be able to score these conditions inside the waiting period is a dream come true. 9.10 for that last wave there from Cosolino. And here we can see Mitu just waiting for a score on that one. Mitu still waiting to see if he can land one of those outside bombs. It is getting so close still, though. 18 minutes of action as this is the final. We got half an hour all the way. And I can tell you one thing. No matter who wins, the beach is going to explode. You just wait until we see the Cape Verdeans are going to grab the winner up on the shoulder. And bet both of them are going to be coming out. It is going to be a party no matter what. What a way to start off the season, Tom. Yeah, it can be much better, Joe. I mean, this is what you hope to see from a kite surfing event. And, you know, in the past, I've, you know, seen kite surfing and riding waves on a kite board somewhat underrepresented, under I think, by the conditions that they've got for events. So, it, because it's really difficult, obviously, you have to schedule an event like a long time in advance. You can't tell if you're going to get the conditions, if you're going to get the right, you know, things to, to, to line up in order to create something really special. But as you can see right here from the crowd standing on the beach, this is a special event at a special spot with special conditions and two of the most special riders on the water to this island and to the local crowd. Yeah, that's a lot of special and that is what it is. Absolutely. It couldn't be anything asked less than this. This is what we wanted to see and this is the show that we are having. Recapping how it's gone so far, Ayrton Cosolino, he has had an average of plus 7.5 on each one of his waves. He's had a 7.93, 8.25, 8.23, 7.35, 9.10. in the lead with a total of 17.35. Then Mitu Montedo, he has had a 2.67, 4.25, a 4.47 and a 6.83. He has 11 point three zero so at the moment Ayrton is about six and a bit points over and there we can see Serena lose given the vibes as she is getting ready to be going out what a final the boys are throwing down come on Kate Verdi keep sending us the sets send us the sets we've got more more comments on Ayrton's board which is a duotone SLS prototype that we've got fresh information about and uh, also big up to the Canberra Sands crew mm. 
back in the UK, big up to the UK crew, all the UK wave riders down in the West Country, everyone back home on the Isle of Wight for me, and uh, everybody that's watching from uh, around the world. Look at that. Does he it's, come out? He, I mean, if he did, that would be a miracle. It would be a miracle. <laughs> Ayrton looks like he's going to be answering back. Ayrton going for a big air, lands it perfectly. Can he get past this section? He is flying down the line. And just look how he keeps oh. up speed. And he gets past oh. it. How did he manage to land that? I mean, that was a classic case of kite control. Yeah, he, you know aired the section, chased it down the line, and then uh, saw that there was going to be a moment that he wasn't going to make and just let go of that bar to release some pressure from the kite. This is uh, its all about kite control. Yeah, there you can see the rewind of that one as this is Ayrton making his way down as well. There, how he kept on his feet there, and then he just got that extra pull. It's incredible. One of the things that amazes me about Ayrton is oh, we've that got a kiss cam. Control. We've got a kiss cam. Kiss cam. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, wow. Love that. Maybe we need, to, uh, hey. we need to make that a thing. We do need to make that a thing. Sending the love Smooth. all the way down the stream, ladies and gentlemen. You can see right there exactly how stress-free this island is. Oh, yeah. Bang. Caught in the action, red-handed. Caught in the act, indeed. <laughs> yeah, now, if you're okay, a little bit of history in between Mitu and Eto. As we said, Mitu has been pretty much kiting since the beginning of time. He is 40 years old. He is one of the godfathers of our sport. Ayrton has been kiting. I know he said that one of his first ever events was back there in 2014, if my memory serves me well, and he has been a multiple-time world champion. One of the things we always say about this, too, is that respect they have for each other because let's not forget me too pretty much was the one that started the strapless movement and that is why both you know especially Ayrton and Machu looking up to him in this whole island putting it on the map and yet yeah, just you know such a family vibe and you can see here on the beach and this is the battle so now there we can see is that me too no, high line that, yeah it is me too it hard to see too. with the sun me too, taking the high line, just catching a little bit of shade, another another hair parting at the top of the wave, coming out, making it work, but the wave just did not keep going for him. Struggling to put some big scores together at the moment. Yeah, and we can see there's some numbers, but Me too not there. And another question out here on the stream is, is, are they usually chaired or shouldered to the beach as they do in surfing? I can tell you one thing about this event, Cape Verde. They are going to be throwing him up into the sky. You just wait to see as they are all packed up and ready to make the noise. I can start to hear the drums and kind of the tribal music coming down. The vibe is going to be here. What a final. And then we can see Me too. He's looking for that barrel, Tom. Yeah, it's one of those waves that um, it, it, it's not a hollow wave, but there are a lot of sections that do open out and uh, do present opportunities to get bowed, to get shade. Not always as open as you might like, but if you're a skilled rider, you can really, you can fit up in that lip, inside that oval shape tube. And uh, it depends a little bit more on the wind direction as well. With slightly sideshore wind like we have today, it's probably gonna be less barrelly than it would be if it was offshore, because offshore wind creates a bit more of a hollow wave. But having said that, <laughs> look oh. at that. Is he no. He makes Surely it not. out. He makes it out. Bosh. There you go. Well, there's your answer. That's how it's done. That is how it's done. Following straight up. I mean, these boys couldn't be having more fun out there. They are absolutely electric. And we can see all the crowd right in front of the vibe. Cosolino making his way out as well. But Me Too, he, I know Me Too is searching for that Hail Mary because he's doing the same as we saw before. He's gone all the way up. He's gone all the way up, and you can see here, look at the repeat of that barrel from Ayrton. I mean, what a shot. Look at that crowd. Boom. Bang, bang. Like, I don't even know how he got out of that thing. And here it looks like we might have a better angle of that one here. All right, stool. there's the stall. He's got his hand in the wave, hand in the wave. Boom. Pops out the front. Nice little stall, using everything at his disposal to kill speed, to stay inside the right section of the pocket just to get that cover. We got me too looking for an answer. Here we go. There it is. Looking good. It's popping out too. Straight into another turn. Nice wrap back into the section. 
I mean, they're trading barrels here, man. This is, uh, this is special. This is definitely special. 8.5 for you for that last wave there from Ayrton. We are going to have to see what Mitu's was. I think Mitu was a little deeper, but not as long. I mean, yeah, that's... I th it's difficult to say. It's difficult to say. I, I think, you know, it's how many barrels have you had in your life, Jay? I think I could count them with one hand, mate. <laughs> 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 I've got how many barrels? I'll, I'll, I'll specify how many <laughs> barrels have I exited? Enter? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, exited yeah, yeah. is a different story. That's what I'm saying. You know, there's already been more barrels in this heat than I've had in the last two years. Oh man, they make it look way too easy. And to, you know, one of the things that really impressed me on a kite, you know, getting that kite in that position, getting the line so it's not pulling you through the wave. These boys just make it look too easy. Yeah, I know they do indeed. Oh, me too. All right, me too is back on the hunt. He's back 8. on the chalk. Eight point three seven for that last one. He is now back in contention. That gives him a possibility. Neves a big wave, and now Ayrton. Look, he is stalling. Here we go. Cosolino dropping that, in. That's big. That's big on the outer reef coming in there. Look at this top turn using the full face, dropping down, stalling at the bottom. Can he slot? No, the wave is not going to deliver there, but. He will continue down the line nonetheless. Yeah, that second section kind of closing out on him, but moving it along. I mean, he has a 9.0 and an 8.53. Big numbers there for Ayrton. And Me Too having a little look. Nine minutes to go. Plenty of time. Let's not forget, we've had 18-minute heat, so there's still loads of time for these boys to get action out there on the water as we continue on here for the finals day of the GK Kite Surf World Cup Cape Verde, the first event of the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour 2024 season. Yeah, this is uh, an exciting explosion for the start of the year. We've got some serious scores dropping here. We do, and one thing of information, Ayrton only has one more wave left. Let's not forget about that 10 wave option. So Ayrton Cosolino only has one more wave left. Me Too has two more waves left. So now it looks like he's going to be dropping in. All right, Me Too, here it goes, coming down. Off the top, first check turn. It looks like making his way out. Going to have to do a foam fly just a little bit late on that one. This one doesn't look like it's going to be giving him the magic so far. Let's see if he can do the old Expelliarmus and make it happen. All the way down Harry Potter, mate. You can't miss Harry Potter. <laughs> I mean, to know all the spells out of that book would be uh, would be something special. But, yeah, these, these guys definitely showing some magic. That is for sure. Yeah, the old half-blood prince, mate. Yes, sir, that's <laughs> how it goes. Everybody's got to love a bit of Harry Potter. I know that's one of the, you know, those books, those series that has gone a long way worldwide. And, yeah, you can see Me Too just, again, not quite getting the one he was. So... Both of these athletes, final wave for them. So, it's so a 10 wave. Count. What happens though if they end up catching 12, 15 waves in a heat? Is it their best scores, scoring waves that count? Or it's once you've had 10 waves, you've had 10 waves? Once you have 10 waves, you might as well go out. Okay, so that's straight in for a cold one. Even if there's seven left Even on the clock. Even if there's seven minutes left on the clock, you have to negotiate your time. So, so, it's, so now one final wave for both of these athletes. That is where we are at. And as it stands, it looks like Me Too Montedo is out there. So these guys are going to be circling and hovering to see who is going to take the best wave. And you can see all of the tourists, everybody coming down here on the beach, who is it going to be? Who's going to be our champion? Ayrton is in the lead. Me too in contention. So it is going to come all down to that final standoff. Big up to the Norfolk crew up on the comments on YouTube. Uh, Mark G. Big up, man. It's good to... Good that everybody's tuning in from all over the world. We've got people watching from all over the place. It does not get that much better than this uh, in terms of kite surfing. And I know people that chase waves uh, around the world, whether it's for surfing or kite surfing, should really appreciate these conditions because it's rare to, to get everything to line up to be in a place like this at a time like this. It looks like there's only, yeah, like you said, there's only one more wave, one more scorable wave each. Do you think they've been counting their waves, Joe? That's the question. 
I doubt it. I very much doubt it. Maybe because it does look like they're kind of having a little look-see now. So we will see what is going to happen. So I forget we're going to have the podium then move over to round number two of the women after this. But who is it going to be? Yeah, we probably should be talking about the wave riding. It's true. But as you can see the wave riding yourself on the stream happening right in front of you, it is obvious that these guys are absolutely shredding. I mean, there's some technical aspects to riding waves on a kite that a lot of people don't know. So it's interesting to explore all avenues of this amazing sport. Absolutely, and Joseph will. It, it, I agree here with Tom. So if you're enjoying yourself on the stream, we are try and uh, bounce off in between the wave riding, all the info on the history, a little bit of everything. So to get the ins and the outs. And yeah, that's what we got, the cameras and the drones. So looking forward to what an absolute banger of an event we have had here. And we can see great conditions, great riding, great athletes. That is what it is about here for the GK Kite Surf World Cup. And great sportsmanship, you know, as well. We've got such a good crowd on the beach, such a good group of athletes, such a good team. Um, you know, everybody's here for each other. Everybody's here to have fun. There's Ayrton dropping into his last wave. He looks like he's committing to this, arcing that bottom turn, destroying that lip, cutting back nice and deep, wrapping around on his second turn. How's he going to get past this next section? He's gone to the air oh! with a massive... That strapless back roll aerial, did he ride out of that? It didn't look like he ride, rode out of that from that angle. No, it, it didn't. He didn't quite make that. Big shout out to Jürgen Vlodar, CEO over there in Mauritius. Hope you're enjoying the show, mate. And yet yeah, I definitely agree with you, Ken. Well, Tom is going to have to stay with us all year long. It's been a pleasure <laughs> sharing the booth here with my man. It's been a long time since we've seen each other and absolutely killing it here on the commentary. I mean, with conditions like this, what a way to start off, Tom. Yeah, mate. I mean, for me, I've always been passionate about the sport. It's sort of everything I've always been about in my kite surfing career over the years. Um, and that's just sharing the stoke of kite surfing, regardless of the uh, discipline, whether that's freestyle or whether that's wave riding at a top level like this. But look, here we go. Me too on his last wave also going to the air failing to stick that landing that is if i'm not mistaken 10 waves each for each one of these riders with three minutes still left on the clock 30 minute heats uh, and non-stop action i it, mean it has been crazy i mean i've i've asked the question our system says 10 waves that's the information i had but you know what we're just going to keep going on and commentating and just enjoying the vibe i can see sandro piso from italy connecting in here and saying hi hey, sandro maestro we miss you mr piso one of the original strapless freestylers that are coming out of italy such a cool guy on and off the water Hope to see you again soon, brother. Thank you very much for tuning in. So, it looks like we got sets out the back. We know it's going to be a Cape Verdean champion. Who is it going to be? We will wait for those official results as I am just waiting to get now. So, it is official. It is going to be 10 waves. So, it looks like we could be calling it soon. But you know what? We're going to keep the suspense, Tom, and keep it until the end as who is going to be our champion here in Cape Verde? Will it be Ayrton Costalino? Will it be Matt, um, Me Too Montedo? I don't know. But one thing I know, there is going to be drum sounds and fire here on the beach very shortly. Yeah, it's going to be interesting hearing from the judges the final call about these last few scores dropping. I guess this is an unscorable wave, but look at this out the back. Oh my goodness. He went for the barrel on that massive section that pinched him right there and uh, yeah, closed him down. Yeah, and, and you know, this is when they are just starting to enjoy themselves. All right, Ayrton Cosolino dropping in. Let's see what he's got for us. Deep behind the section, looking to stall to get himself into the right position for this wave. You know, kite surfing is all about prediction of what's going to happen next. It's just like a game of chess. You need to see five moves ahead in order to be good at riding waves like this. You need to know how your kite's going to be positioned, what's going to happen with the wave. It's even harder in many respects to read what's going to come next than it is in surfing or other, other water sports, you know, because you've got to control all the elements in your hands. 
Yeah, and it's a, you can see it's about, you know, six, eight. There's an occasional even 10-foot sets coming through here, I've just been told. And some of those waves are looking at least double overhead. And, yeah, Pete, oh, we have got about 16 knots out at the moment. The boys are out there on their 10-meter kites, both Me Too and Ayrton. Ayrton on the Rebel, we can see Me Too there on the Bandit as we are coming in to the final moments of this heat. And we can see... And we can see what is happening. So we are in the final minute. Final minute, ladies and gentlemen. Last 60 seconds. Will we see a golden run? Who's it going to be? Ayrton Corsolino or Me Too Montero? I don't know. It's a close run thing. I mean, Ayrton has been heat leader and dominating in the scores pretty much all the way through the event. So he's going to be a tough guy to knock off that top spot one way or another. I think we've just heard the horn. That is the end of the heat. These guys maxed out their waves. They got 10 waves each, which is unbelievable in 30 minutes. But Ayrton just going for one last victory air just to finish off the end of this incredible heat. Yeah, and now we're going to be waiting for the results to come in. Is it Ayrton? Is it Me Too? Who is going to be the champion? Bear with us as we can see as they are going to be making their way in. Let's catch the highlights of that heat. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The winner of the GK Kitesurf World Cup Cape Verde is Ayrton Corsolino. He is the winner of this event. Ayrton Corsolino, your number one over here. What a way, what the action. Now we are talking about it. This is what we wanted to see. And he is holding that Cape Verdean flag up high incredible and there we can see his girlfriend Marta also giving him that hug what a moment I have goosebumps out here congratulations Ayrton Corsolino you are crown champion at your hometown here and you can see tears in the eyes that is what it's all about And there we can see the two boys, Ayrton Corsolino, Mito Monteiro, Cape Verdean flag is in the sky, and the event organizer, Joe Silva. That is the respect that these two athletes have for each other. This is what it's all about, and incredible. That is what we want to see. Amazing riding there for both of these guys, and what a way to do it. And there we can see Bigfoot is going to get Ayrton. He's going to be getting them very soon, as I know they're going to be bringing him up towards us. What a way to finish it. And there we can see his sister, Diddy, so happy for Ayrton. This is what it's all about. Congratulations, my friend. You are the champion here. And now you can see all of the family just going down. Marta. Besitos y todo. Little kiss. That's, I mean, that's the only reason he's won this contest, to get a kiss. There he is. Your champion, Ayrton Corsolino. As we continue on, and now we're going to be making it as Ayrton will be coming up towards us here. 
and we will be getting an interview with him. So Ayrton Corsellino, your current number one world champion last year, and he is the champion here for the season opener. That is what I'm talking about, and you can just see the respect that everybody has for him. And now he's going to be coming up the beach, your number one, and there he is. Getting the champ up on the shoulders. Now we are talking. The party has begun. And Mitu Montedo in the sky as well. Cape Verde and Cinderella story. Congratulations to both of those athletes. What an amazing final they have put on. We could not ask for a better finish. This is what it's about. That is what we wanted to come here. Punta Preta delivering. And there it has his two sons up on the shoulders. Now I can start to hear the drums are hearing. The drums are hitting. And it is all coming along as our champions are going to be moving towards us. When anybody get up here to the top we're going to have Tom Court is going to be grabbing an interview with our winner Ayrton Cosolino to see how he feels and just incredible riding from both of these athletes Ayrton proving why he is number one in the world and Mitu Montedo 40 years of age he is the GOAT only rides this event comes here and always hits the upset into another final the duel the dynamic duel there on top of the shoulders. Ayrton Cosolino, Me Too Montedo. Just look, this is what it's about. Look at the vibe and enjoy Cape Verde. Okay, we are here live on the beach with the winners. We Ayrton won that heat. Ayrton, how does that feel? Oh man, I can't believe, man. It's been so much years like fighting against me to, to get this win, man. He's such a land, a legend. It motivates me every day, man. And uh, thank you to my people. Obrigado, galera. Can you two thumbs up? Can you thumbs up? What? What a vibe here on the beach. What a heat that was. How was it out there? Man, it was a lot of fun to be down there. You know, like we do everyone here to support. So I'm 41, but this guy, I need to care for you know, because uh, I got to be there, you know, like. But it was really cool. I'm so stoked with my result. And thank you, everyone. Obrigado, pessoal, for support, okay? Cadena. Okay, so there we have it. That is the for the GK Men's Kite Surfing World Cup here. Our winner, Ertin Cosolino, second meeting Montero, and uh, what an event that was to start off the GK season. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Tom. Congratulations there. Ayrton Cosolino on top. So now we are going to continue on with the podium ceremony. So we're going to be going on standby, ladies and gentlemen, as we are going to be going an, into the women's heat next. So everybody stand by as in about 20 minutes we start with the women.
And welcome back, everybody, as we continue on with round number two, heat number two of the women. Julia Borgi going up against Barbara Stagello. Same conditions out there. We are going to have 17-minute heat, three-minute transition as we are getting ready to go. All right, so there we are. It is on. We have Barbie Sargello is going to be going out there on the Duotone, which you can see there front and center. Julia Borgi, the youngster here from Cape Verde, is going to be on the F1 as they're going to be battling it out. 17 minutes of action. Round number two of the women. And as we've seen there before, your new champion here of Cape Verde, Ayrton Corsolino, who has been throwing down like no tomorrow. And he has taken the crown here, world champion last year, and taken the crown this year. We knew he had it in him, and he has proved why he is the man to beat in the world at the moment. And also a big shout out to all of the athletes who have competed here today. Conditions have been epic and challenging due to the size of the wave. And there you can see coming in, that is Barbara, Barbara Stardello from Italy, La Italiana, Forza Italia, starting in. If you're from Italy, shout, shoot us up on the stream. Once again, a big thank you very much to everybody who's got involved in the stream. Really cool to see all of the comments. It's been an absolute pleasure being in the booth here and together with my friend Tom Court. Uh, we have enjoyed the action, being able to show it to you guys and girls live. I will say it's great to see it on the screen, but if you can ever come down to Cape Verde, it is a destination to get to. Such great conditions, such a good vibe as you can see. This is why it is called Paradise. All right, here we can see Julia on a nice wave here on the inside. Local goal from Cape Verdea. The daughter of Giada and Joe are then organizer and the main hondo down here. And she's already jumping up on a wave. This girl, we've seen her growing up. We've been coming to Cape Verde for probably six or seven years. And oh, flacking that tail out. Now we're talking. That is what we want to see. And that sun just getting right in the middle there as we are coming to the golden hours of the day. And one thing is for sure, it is definitely past five o'clock. There are going to be a few cold ones being thrown around left, right, and center when we finish today. What a great event. What a great location. And this is why we come here to Punta Preta. All right, here we can see Barbara dropping in. Duote Napoli, the out of Italy. So far, waiting for some numbers to come up on the board. I'll try and get you those to you very shortly. All right, looks like Julia is going to be around the four-point average for that wave. And waiting to see for that last wave there from Barbara. What an amazing event it has been so far. We've had epic conditions left, right, and center here at Punta Preta. 
It doesn't get better than this. The Cinderella story. Ayrton Cosadino, Mitu Montero, the two Cape Verdeans in the final, banning it out, and the beach goes wild. Ayrton taking the win. He was hungry. We could see it in his body language. He was out for the win. And also, Mitu Montero, the GOAT, taking out some of the heavy hitters of the tour and proving that even though he doesn't compete at all the events, he still has what it takes. Yes, mate. I mean, that was a serious showdown right here. And with some of the best conditions that we've seen at all events so far, it just keeps getting better. Even for this ladies' heat, it is firing right now. I mean, the wind direction's gone more side shore, and uh, it's, the waves are coming through super consistently. So uh, the vibe is high on the beach. Everybody's pumped, and uh, it's the perfect time for the ladies to show their stuff. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. You can see people here still connected to the stream. Thank you very much for joining in. I'll tell you what, Camber Kite Surfing, I agree. There's going to be great party vibes in Santa Maria tonight. I know there's going to be a few dance moves out there today celebrating what they have just achieved. Yeah, I think it could be a good vibe on the streets of the town. That is for sure. There's not one of these riders that not everybody on the, on the island doesn't know. So it is going to be... a uh, I think Ayrton's probably going to be carried down the high street. I reckon he is, and he might be carried back home at the end <laughs> if, the pa if the celebrations go a little bit too hard. But wow deserved there for Ayrton. And here we can see Barbara dropping in to another wave. Let's see if she can get some turns on it. Just straight lining it a bit at the moment. Unfortunately, going across that front edge and going to be closing out. And I tell you what, we can see the vibes and the groove still down here. And you can see just there. Catching that front edge, and unfortunately, it is not possible. And yes, Liv Ramos, Julia definitely is incredible. She is a very young athlete out of here of Cape Verde. As I said, I've seen this young girl grow up as we've been coming here, and it's so cool to see her in the water. One thing, this girl, 24-7 smile all year long. Yeah, and that is... Uh a special attribute, uh, something that we value highly in the kite surfing industry, you know. People, happy people in a happy place. There's no need for any, uh, any bad vibes out here, that's for sure. And that's something that they're very keen for here in Cape Verde. And we see here the wave action going down. Um, they've obviously been watching the, the guys all afternoon warm as they warm up for their heats. And uh, they know what's up when it comes to, to getting down the line here. Julie Borgi already placing a 4.07 on the board. Let's have a look at that replay. You can see she gets into the, you know, gets into position, starts to get some of the turns. Nice little mid-face hack there. Coming down the line, she already has that 4.07. Let's see how that second wave is. Definitely in the commanding spot at the moment as we are continuing on. Round number two of the women here for the Cape Verdean World Cup. And just under nine minutes to go out of this heat. We're going to be running through round number two. So that means there's two more heats after this one. And then we'll be closing it out for the day as the sun is high. Sunset is at 6.30. And I don't know about you, Tom. There's going to be a few sunset hyperineas and beers being open as soon as this is over. Well, there's definitely some icy beverages on, on, the, uh, on the cards because it is uh, above 30 degrees in this little box we're in here. But look at this set. Looking out of this window that we've got here, I can see an absolutely massive set peaking on the horizon. Oh, what's going on there? Some swimmers seem to be... Just in saying hi. Enjoying the shore break. Just yeah, saying hi. I'm, I'm envious, mate. It'd be nice <laughs> to have a little cold dip right now. And I didn't, I didn't know we made a, you know, a studio Cape Verdean sauna. <laughs> no, but turns out it's good for you. Look at this set rolling through. Absolutely great turn there, right in the pocket. Pocket jam, but there's a big closeout section. And uh, there's a real art to staying out the front of the wave enough not to get snagged in the white water when you get around those, those long sections. But Barbara Sedgero, Sedgero local, local lady, one of the Cape Verdean... Uh, locals from here. It's been uh, amped to get on the water all day, I know. I think she was riding that board yesterday. Uh, we saw her in the smaller stuff, but she's uh, obviously no stranger to this spot. She's ridden here a lot. See her artfully skirting around this section and getting two more jams in before the end of the wave. I think that's going to be a high score. 
Yeah, that was definitely looking like scoring potential there for her. And it's looking like it is. She's already got a 4.7, the local Cape Verdean here, Julia Borgi. And let's see as that six point, maybe six point something. I'm seeing some numbers being rocked around on the judges panel. We'll be rocking that second score up. She has a 4.70 and waiting for that third wave. We already saw there in the heat with Ayrton and Me Too, both of them over the wave count. And there we can see Diddy. Oh, there yeah, we can. Someone, oh, someone's shy. Someone's that. shy on the stream. Live I wonder why. on the stream. Uh -huh. There we go. That is an appearance uh -huh. right there. That is what I call an appearance. <laughs> Diddy always in power, getting the vibe down here. And can you, can you leave the rest up to you, mate? Good to know everyone's having fun. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Diddy Absolutely. looking after everyone on the beach. Nice to know. It is. You can't, you can't hide. Can't hide anywhere. And Diddy, yeah, always. Uh, Ayrton's... Ayrton's sister and Hendrick's mum always the vibes there with Diddy sending love out to her. But continuing on with the action, just under six minutes. So yeah, Julia, 6.0, 4.7 as we continue on. And there you can see some of the athletes on the shore just enjoying the breeze, hair in the wind, and checking out the golden sunset that is starting to appear. Yeah, there's a vibe out there. Everybody's having fun. Girls having fun on the water, it looks like. Everyone's having fun on the beach. Everyone's on an absolute high from that last final. Um, it's always a pleasure to witness such events in sporting history, especially when it comes to the beginning of the year. I think it's, uh, it's a very special thing to start the season on a high like that because it adds momentum to the rest of the year. Yeah, it really does. And, you know, it, it gets traction as well, but also... Talk about setting the bar high. I know, I know. It's true. You've got to, you know, aim high, set the bar high, shoot for the stars. Always, mate. Shoot for that galaxy. The higher, the better. And there we can see Cape Verde just proving why it is one of the best wave locations in the world. And it is great to see here full force. So, Julia Borgi in the lead, 10.70. Up against Barbara Sardella, 4.44, equaling it out. Four and a half minutes to go on the ticker as we continue on round number two here. GK Kite Surf World Cup, Cape Verde, Punta Preta. I've got a real feeling Julia's going to do quite well in this event, you know. She's showing a lot of potential. She's reading the wave really well. She's been, uh, you know, skirting those sections. Not afraid of back. She's not backing off on the big sets. And she's obviously put a lot of time uh, into riding this wave over the last weeks. Yeah, and obviously knowing the spot and being one of the local girls, you know, having that local knowledge. We've seen it. Two locals winning here. You know, Ayrton and Mito, we've seen it out on the water. Some of the, some of the like, wildcard locals also putting, you know, some damage in early on in the competition. It's a wave that experience does pay off. And I tell you what, it looks like it's working for her now as she is comfortably in the lead. Yeah, 10.70. I mean, that is uh, it's a good combo. She's comfortably out there. She's comboing Barbara at the moment. So there's work needs to be done. With only 3 minutes 15 on the clock, it's, uh, the time is running, running short. All right, right here, we go. Wave. here we go. Here we go. That's better. Wave. She's got a wave. Wave to go, just dragging that hand. Getting nice and up high on that wave. You've got to get high to get that speed down the line mm. and then draw out that bottom turn. As we've seen, you know, with the men, it's a really a lot about that bottom turn game. And, uh, you, you know, the, the difficulty is, is getting to the lip and then getting back down again. It's always the, it's always the tricky one here. Yeah, I'm going to say it almost looks like she's a little bit too powered on that kite, kind of getting yanked down. You can see some of the, you know, they're actually the girls out on 10 meters when the guys are out on 10 meters. But, of course, it's that upwind ability as well, being able to navigate through those light wind conditions to get you out there. You need to have it. And here we have Julia. Oh, nicely under the lip. Can she keep it together? It looks like she can. And I can hear the crowd starting to give her the vibes as their local mm -hmm. young wonder kid is coming to action. Two minutes to go. Even going for a little switch stance action at the end there. <laughs> I mean, that has advanced. She is definitely one of the local favorites. 
I've had the chance to, to catch up with her actually on the beach in the last couple of days. She's super friendly. I mean, like you expect everyone to be here, you know, very uh, approachable, super friendly, up front and a uh, very, very keen kite surfer just uh, on the water every second of the day that she can be. Um, yeah, putting in, the, putting in those hours deserves everything uh, that's, uh, that's on the scoreboard right now, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. And now, you know, maybe going back out to see if she can get a final schmackaroo. But, yeah, 90 seconds already, a 6.60 and a 6.0 for her. So two good scores. Julia coming in to action as we continue on round number two. Next up, we'll be going into heat number three as we will be seeing coming out here onto the water is going to be Charlotte Carpentier from France versus Sonia Bunter from Germany. Charlotte spent a long time here in Cape Verde, but originally out of France. She's been one of the veterans on tour. She's, you know, won the best trick events on the strapless freestyle where she started to come from. But hey, now obviously spending time here in Cape Verde, your wave game is definitely going to go up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, these are the sort of places you got to hang out if you want to step up to that next level you got to come to places like this you got to search out those waves you've got to look at those forecasts and um yeah spend some time in the challenging conditions that make some of these waves as good as they are you know it's not uh, it's not easy kite surfing as we've said before over the last few days it's often light wind it's often side offshore it's often not the place you would probably go out for a safe easy session but you know to get good to, to really understand how to, to work it properly, you've got to yeah, pay your due diligence. Yeah, and there it is. All right, Julia Borg, she's going to be making her way through. Let's catch the highlights of that last heat as we continue on with the women here in Cape Verde.
All right, we are, we are back, everybody. As we continue here, Charlotte Confantier is going up against Sonia Bunter. 17 minutes of action. Both of the athletes are out on the water. Charlotte, the core athlete, and Sonia Bunter rocking out here. And let's see who is going to be getting that third place. Here we can see Charlotte dropping in already. Uh, she's got a nice wave. We just saw Julia Borgi taking the win. And Charlotte now just coming down the line. Uh, you can see everybody uh, vibes down here on the beach, giving the shouts and, and the good lucks out there to the athletes. And now, as we are going to have Carpentier going up against Sonia Bunter, it's going to be a core battle as they are both core riders. There we can see Charlotte out the back and waiting for some scores to drop in. Julia Borgi in the heat before had a 12.6. Oh, so that's a very nice title there for her. And now let's see how they can do. And there are the vibes. Here we have the girls down on the beach. Julia getting the love. And here we can see Charlotte off the back. Just coming off in here. That's what we would like to see. Just enjoying smiles left, right and center. What a great time, and Julia Borgi taking a win there, Tom. Yeah, Julia's going to be really happy with that, definitely. I mean, she has been a notable, a notable presence on the beach for the last days, you know. She's been out there, like I say, every every minute that she could be, you know, in between gaps in the heat and, uh, you know, just before sunset, sneaking out for those quick sessions. And as we've seen, you know, like, that pays off. I mean, that's, that's what Ayrton does he takes every available minute he can to be riding and that's what it's all about for him it's about the love of riding about the love of being on the water and uh, i think you know there's a lesson to be learned there for any rider practice makes perfect mate practice makes perfect a shout out here to daniel Bridi, as we can see saying go charlotte bonventos thank you very much from brazil and now as we have both of the core athletes charlotte and that is looking like Charlotte just about to drop in. Kind of hard to see with the sun, but look at the view from the sky as those beautiful waves are starting to come in. Here we go. Perfect looking wave. It's got wrapped all the way into the reef. Nice bottom turn, just rising up there into the pocket, using that wave to get down the line. Not using the kite too much and just keeping it flowing. I mean, that's... What we want to see, it's difficult to, to see into the sun. That, that we, all we need is that drone. There we go. There it is. Unfortunately, she did not get past that section. Yeah, just missed that. Just such a good shot, that. Just sums up the whole spot. And, uh, you know, keeps us keeps us with some, some perspective on how beautiful this place actually is. I can see Diogo here just signaling us to see if we need anything. It's getting very close to be that time of the day. And Bunta <laughs> still yet to land a score here. And it looks like she's just about to have one of the waves. 12 minutes in. Second to last heat of the afternoon. Let's not forget, we're going to try to get through round number two of the women, heat number three. And then coming up next, we are going to be having out here on the water last year's winner and your current world champion. As let's not forget, Muna White is going to be waiting for those athletes very shortly. But before that, we are going to have uh, Simona Schwarzman from Switzerland. And she's going to be going up against Daniela Moreno from Spain. Yeah, some more excitement here on the water. And these ladies are battling it out for round two. Just getting through into the quarterfinals. It's going to be 
perfect for tomorrow because we've got yet more swell on the way, I believe. The forecast is actually even bigger for tomorrow. Um, we knew the swell was coming. We were a little bit over-enthusiastic probably with our forecasting and maybe a bit too excited yesterday when we were calling it to be arriving in the day. But tomorrow is looking just as good as today, if not better. Yeah, keen is the word, mate. We were very keen. Frothing. Frothing. Oh, I love it. Like Frothing. the top of a cappuccino from your favorite coffee shop. Yeah, or nice cold beer being <laughs> freshly open. You can see it's that time in the afternoon. But, yeah, forecast is looking great for tomorrow. So, obviously, you know, we will be continuing on with the women as we won't be making our way all the way through. And it will look like we will be opening up the barrel as we will have our sister tour, the GWA Wing Foil and World Tour coming out. So our wing foilers are going to start to pay the dividends with Prince of Pressa. I mean, that for me, so that for me is going to be really interesting. I've been doing a lot of wing foiling um, over the last few years, and it's a really interesting sport. Um, it's a sport that a lot of people seem to be very, very interested in as well, and a lot of people are getting into. Um, and I've done a lot of uh, different sort of uh, long distance challenges on a wing. I've ridden a lot of waves on a wing. Um, and it's something that I'm going to find personally quite interesting to watch at this wave because it's a high consequence wave for a wing. It's shallow. It's relentless down the line. Um, you know, wave riding. And if you do get it wrong, there is no way out. And, you know, unlike a kite... You know, a kite may seem more complicated because you've got the lines between you and the kite, but actually, you you can put the kite behind the wave. Mm. You know, you can't put the wing behind the wave. Nope. If the wave gets you, you've been got. I mean, that's it. And not only that, you, you're wrapped up in your foil. You've got two leashes. You've got, you know, all manner of things that could burst and go wrong. And uh, for me, that's it's going to be it's going to be good to see. Yeah, especially in wave locations, the old repair shops are very happy when they see some of the wings turn up because that is when damage starts to happen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I imagine kite and wing repair is quite a good industry on this island. It is we almost as good as physios on CrossFit, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. That's one thing we haven't seen too much of o over these events in the in the last years is uh, is physios. But we assume all the riders do go home and do at least 40 minutes of yoga after every one of their sessions, and it's probably why that they're, they're still so fit and performing so well. That and the fact they're 10 years younger than us, mate. I'm just going to. I mean, I can only I can only personally speak for myself. And that's why I'm still able to do what I do, you know, it's the yoga. Yeah, I'm pushing to touch my knees. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see families out here. It is a vibe down in Cape Verde. Everybody, I mean, obviously, this is such a beautiful location to come on a holiday as well. I mean, you know, we are rocking mid-February and there is a about 25 degrees. So there's a lot of different hotels. You know, you, you, we have a big thank you out to the Melia Hotel who puts us up over there in Las Dunas where we can just chill, cruise and, you know, enjoy the the luxuries that it is and you know Cape Verde is definitely a place to come out and have a holiday if you're into kiting you have the perfect waves that are Punta Preta or you can go over to Kite Beach where it is new and kind of you know just easier on shore there's flats to get into it when you know Mito and Joe they have their kite school over there some of the best pizzas on the island kiting pizza and beers and the sunset I can't you know I don't know how I can top that yeah, it's true, you know. I mean, since literally since I've got here, I've only managed to get out for one session myself personally um, because this event has just been pumping the whole time. But I'm looking forward to spending a little bit of time after the event's done to get sort of acquainted with the island, let's say, and to, to kind of go and explore some of the spots, both for kite surfing and for winging. And then I'm probably going to take a little dip over to Boa Vista as well and see what they're they're doing over there and I'm around here on the islands until March 4th so there will obviously be some vlogs going out on my YouTube channel about that so uh, if you want to know more about some of the different spots on the island make sure you uh, tune yeah, in tune in to the Tom Court Freeride vlogs on uh, on YouTube obviously for a soulless shameless plug Absolutely, and I think, I think there's going to be more than a gander over there in Boa Vista. Looking forward to, to checking those ones out. It's been great having you here in the booth as well, Tom, with us today. It has been a long three days, but I mean, 
with conditions like this and seeing that Cinderella story at the end, all worth it. Yeah, mate, it's an absolute pleasure. You know, I always, like I say, want to give back to the sport. Kite surfing is a sport that's given so much to so many people and nothing, you know, nothing says that more than on this island. In particular, having the locals so passionate about kiting, so passionate about the future of the sport and the future of the you know, next generation of riders coming through. Um, it looks like what's, what's going on downwind? It looks like they're struggling to maybe stay upwind now. Um, we've got some people obviously enjoying the sunset down there at the front with what looks like a, a oh. cold beverage. Oh. I'm now I'm drooling. I, I can know. see a cold beverage, and now that is what we're talking about. Yeah, it was Sonia Bunter. She was going a little bit further downwind. Here you can see Charlotte Carpentier here on the inside, just making her way up. And you can see everybody's just vibing down here on the beach as we are coming up to probably a little bit less than five minutes to go here. Everybody's just cruising and perusing and chilling out there. And what a day of action here for Punta Preda. You can see people out there on the point waiting to see the action. As coming up next, we are going to have coming out onto the water is going to be a heat in between. Um, Simona Schwarzman and Daniela Moreno is going to be the final heat of the day. And if that is what I think it is, <laughs> I am personally going to give our Portuguese videographer a kiss because I have a feeling, Woo! I can see a feeling that he has just done the old Mary. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say it. This is a beautifully cold Coca-Cola. <sighs> and we are back <laughs> in the studio but it is bearing in mind about 30 degrees in this little box. So, you know, you do need to keep drinking these cold beverages to keep your body temperature down. But it is, what time is it? It's almost 6 p.m. local time here on Cape Verde. We know it's getting late in Europe. You're probably just finishing work thinking, God damn it, I wish I was in Cape Verde right now, ripping a sunset session at Punta Preta with all those girls on the water. And... You probably, you know, you're not wrong. Yeah, it's a good place to be. You're definitely missing out. But you can see the amount of water moving here. And let's just chill and watch Charlotte Carpentier making her way out to the back. All right, just coming up on less than four minutes to go as we enjoy the vibes down here. What a day it has been. Cape Verdean flags are high and in the sky. And there we can see that is the country that has given so much to the sport and to do this discipline. And that is the flag. And at its prime location, that is Punta Preta. What a place. What a spirit, no stress, Cape Verde here, Island of Sal all the way. Exactly, this country and this island chain has given a lot to the sport. It's given a lot to surfing over the years. It's given a lot to water sports and, and the local vibe has given a lot to everybody that comes here. So we hope that you know by being here as a world tour and by being here as a sort of uh, organization that supports sport we can help protect these amazing environments that we that we love to play in because this is a superb spot you can see some very enjoy people in loving it right there yeah sending the love left right and center through the stream and you can see just everybody just vibing down here right now as we're coming to the closing moments of the afternoon Coming up on next, we were going to see out there on the water is going to be Simona, Simona Swatchman hanging out of Switzerland, Daniela Morena. Simona saw her out there training. She's got some good moves. And Daniela obviously coming out of the Canary Islands. No shy, no person when it comes to wave riding. Let's see what they have as they are going to be doing the final heat as we are just about two minutes to go in this one so far. Charlotte Carpentier in a commanding position. Yeah, if you've ever been to the Canary Islands, there, there's some amazing places to there. And I would say they're probably the closest, it's the closest place to here. So it's like very, 
the Cape Verde is very similar to the Canaries in many in many aspects. Uh, geographically similar, we get similar swell here. I think um, it's slightly further south in the Atlantic Ocean, and maybe Cape Verde is slightly more exposed, but they have a lot in common. You know, like a similar island chain, atolls out ex in exposed ocean. So it's a great place to be. It's a great place to grow up if you really are into water sports. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it, it, it runs in their DNA. You can see the surfing, the kids, the, you know, the vibe, and it just is, you know, back to roots and keeping it simple and just enjoying the pure things of life. And here we can see that's looking like that is going to be again Charlotte Carpentier dropping it down, and then we can see more athletes about to go in. So Charlotte... Nice little over tucky there. Let's see if she can keep Headed it down the line. The end of the end of the wave again. The, the later part of the wave is peaking. Look at this. It's going to be a real heavy close. Oh, now. can she make it down? Let's see if she comes out the other side. I would say that is a foam ball. It's a L'Oreal advert waiting to happen. That could be a L'Oreal or Dyson's new model of a washing <laughs> machine. Extra, <laughs> extra spin and extra clean. I mean, she walked out of it. That's yeah. a good sign. That style. That's a style a right there. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we are coming up. So scores, we have a 4.13 and a 2.10 Charlotte Carpentier. Sonia Bunter, unfortunately, only a 0 0.67, making her way all the way down the beach. And it, that is not going to be enough less as we come to the closing minutes, Tom. Less than five seconds to go. It's closing out. One, one wave on the board. Not enough for Sonia Bunter. Hard conditions out there. Mm. And Charlotte Carpentier taking the win with that last wave. So let's check the highlights of that last heat as we continue on for the final heat of the day, round number two of the women. Welcome back, everybody, as we are now going into the final high heat. Simona Schwartzman versus Daniela Moreno. These two girls are going to battle it out to close out what has been an amazing day number three here for the GK Kitesurf World Cup Cape Verde. Yeah, making the most of those last rays of sunshine. You can see the vibe is looking good down there. We've got spectators chilling on the rocks waiting for these ladies to deliver some top turns. Um, interesting choice of kite there. I would say that's probably, that core kite is not, not a typical wave kite. I mean, I don't know too much about the models exactly, but 
<laughs> that looks like <laughs> less than a wave kite to me. Yeah, it's looking, I think it's one of the XRRs. I couldn't quite get it there. Let's have a little look, see. As we see if we can get yeah. closer to, I think it was looking like XR the XR8. Yeah. But we will see because the black with the Alulu is the XR Pro that we've seen as one of the best core with some of the best big air kites on the market. They really push him back. And a big shout out to my buddy Janet coming back from injury. It's so cool to see him back in action. Yeah, you know what? I nearly had a session with Yannick the other oh. day. He's he, he's actually studying in, in the UK right now. Is he? Yeah, he's studying in London. So big up, Yannick. We haven't actually... We haven't actually hung out yet, but we I, we nearly had a session, but he we, he didn't quite make it. But yeah, with with Yannick and also James from Mouse, big up shout out to Mouse Case, the guys from uh, from Mouse. They were big supporters of uh, big supporters of kite surfing and uh, getting into the industry as well. If you've ever dropped your phone and broken it, you know how important it is to have a good protective phone case. But Absolutely, I've seen you throw that thing left, right, and centre, mate. I know I've uh, done some done, damage. Done my <laughs> done my fair share of phone throwing to to make sure that these cases are protected. But yeah, it was uh, you know a good. Uh, we were going to link up with Yannick, and I know James go, has gone out for a few big air sessions with him recently. So he is back on the water and making a recovery. So it's great to know. Yeah, and I mean, Janik was one of the original guys to start getting in the contra loops and start, you know, kind of doing some of the new moves that we're, we're seeing on the big S scene. I mean, these boys, you know, Principi, Cassati, you know, the likes of Jesse Richmond, all of, you know, Liam, Cohen. It is insane and ridiculous. Also, actually, you know, of course, we just found out that the cold Hawaii up there in Denmark that's going to be rolling out is now an official event for the Red Bull King of the Air. I mean, in the winner, we'll get a ticket. So that is awesome as well because, you know, reaching out across the world to different locations to be able to qualify for what is the Red Bull King of the Air, that other discipline where, you know, showing how high and absolutely out to lunch those riders are. Yeah, it's true. Uh, look, we've seen got a kite down right now, and um, that's not looking like a good situation for her right now in the middle of this heat. But yes, going back to the Red Bull King of the Air, I mean, it's one of those iconic events and it's actually, you know, I rode in, I rode in the Red Bull King of the Air for the first two, two years. It was back in Cape Town for the first time, and I can tell you, it's probably one of the scariest events yeah. on the planet to participate in. And it's definitely, you know, although it's nice to have said that I've ridden in it, it's not something that I envy anyone going into because I've come out of that event injured twice and I've only been in it twice. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is balls to the wall and it is a great event. I mean, both of us have worked it there as well behind the scenes and you know you were doing making sure and spotting and getting all the the editing in i was on the beach in the commentary and it is just a spectacle and a show and you know in the end i think it's also important that there are events out there that push the show of the sport for the, you know people who don't know the technicalities don't know the ins and the outs can just enjoy absolute epic vibes you know i mean it's like coming here today even if you didn't know what kite surfing was you would have seen the action there today of people surfing where they've been pulling there i mean look smiles on the crowd smiles in the water and hopefully daniela will be able to get this kite back up because it looks like she's in a sticky situation yeah it's light wind out there i mean when you drop your kite in light wind it's hard to relaunch but it looks like the f1 it's got it's got some relaunch it's got some relaunch we've got the vibe Got the wind dance going on, got the wave dance happening right there. And uh, yeah, so I mean. It's the wiggle and the wobble, it's mate. It's the wiggle and the wobble. And it looks like there's a few sets rolling through on the horizon, too. Yeah, no, now Daniela looks like she's going to be able to get back out. It is just coming past six o'clock, so we've got about 45 minutes. Oh, a little canister as well. People are starting to get in the groove. As they were saying down there on the commentators, it is looking like there is going to be a vibe in Santa Maria today as everybody is celebrating that their two sons, Me Too, and, and we could see Ayrton Cosolino taking the wind here, and there is going to be a party and music happening without a doubt as we continue on.
Yes, well, it's a good vibe, man. It's always a good vibe, and that is the most important thing in kite surfing. You know, like, I, like I explained earlier on in this stream, it's all about the vibe. It's all about connecting people. It's all about connecting talent and new energy from all over the world. And nothing represents energy like waves like we have here on the island of Cape Verde. Yeah, you know? and hopefully that wind will keep up a little bit so we can get this Look final at this heat. Set. It is coming through. Look at the bumps coming out there. Now we are talking as Cape Verde is starting to continue to deliver 11 minutes to go. There's the Coca-Cola being popped. And there you can see on the, the vibe just smiles all the way along the shoreline. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of support for these ladies out there today. And uh, in, in many respects, they're getting the best of it. I mean, this is, this is prime time. This is two people on the water, sunset session, Cape Verde, Punta Preta. I mean, if dreams were real, this is, this is what they look like. I mean, this is what I dream about. It would definitely be that kind of a dream. And you can see here, Daniela Moreno, all right, starting to get a groove on, coming down the line. Let's see if she can keep this one up. So far, no scores on the board, but she Boom. is on a nice wave. Yeah, the Canarian all the way down the line. This is a nice wave. Ten minutes left in the heat, and she, you know, if she can get some good chalk here. What's that? Is that a S surfer in the wave, a swimmer, or Surfers a getting ready to go out. Definitely <laughs> surfers getting ready to go out. They know there's ten minutes left, and they are keen to get out on the water. One thing I will say at a location like this, the respect of the surfing community yeah. some of the best day and they are not in the water you know you come to some locations where there 100%. isn't respect and they are right in the middle and in the, it, you have to really pretty much kick them out here they are on the shore respecting shouting giving everybody the vibe but wow simona on an outside bomb all the way to the left i mean it's true i've ridden here i've come here myself personally and i've ridden here with just three or four of the local guys and you're out there with six or seven of the best surfers on the island kite surfing amongst them in the lineup and there is nothing but smiles and respect and there's not many places in the world where as a kite surfer you can be on a world-class right hand point break and be shackering and high-fiving the surfers that are in the lineup you know and yeah it's uh, unusual it's really unusual the vibe is good the tolerance and acceptance and you know just respect between the people enjoying the ocean is really inspirational and i think there's something to be learned there for everybody um and yeah i mean that applies across you know multidisciplinary activities in the ocean i think and there you can see Daniela is happy. There you go. There's the groove. That guy's got his groove <laughs> on. That is the flow, oh, is the, the Cape Verdean style. The Cape Verde drums just starting to bang, bro. That's it. Tapping of those feet. Yeah, so 3.57 for Daniela on that last wave versus a 2.0 from Simona. So these girls are very close in between them as we're coming to that midway point. Who is going to take it all home? We will soon find out. As we are there, eight minutes to go out of this 18 minutes heat as they continue on for this day number three here in Cape Verde. Exactly. Coming up to the closing hours of this fine day. What a way to end it. Ridiculous how this has been going on. I mean, we have been on the stream solidly, Tom, for 10 hours now. Right. Officially, we have been on here for 10 hours, and we've had nothing but bang from the start. I did wonder why I woke up with a sore throat this morning. <laughs> it was it's a strange one, but, yeah, I had an early night even. I still woke up with a sore throat. Well, you know, maybe that was the wrong, that was the wrong way <laughs> to go. Maybe it was the wrong way to go. Maybe tomorrow uh, it won't be a sore, but I don't think so. Yeah, and we can see, so now we're going to have a little look as we're going to have updated rankings also. So, Ayrton Cosolino in first position on the 2024. Mito Montero second, Pedro third, Gabriel fourth, Hendrik Lopez fifth, and we can see joint fifth, Sebastian Ribeiro, Amachu Lopez, and the Aussie Woodley Hall. So, those are the official overall rankings at the moment on tour. As you can see, coming out of this first event now, women out here on the water, 
and we can see there's Joe and Julia who just had a really good heat and as I said 24-7 smile all the way. Wow, looking at some of these shots. Looking at some of these shots from the uh, the men's final is it unreal. Yeah, Ooh. just the, the st you know, make sure to check out the socials today. You're going to get the vibe and feel the energy, you know. Ayrton at that podium, we could see he, he, he was in tears. The emotion, the raw, just pure raw emotions. Taking a win in his hometown up against Me Too. He has been wanting that for a very long time. Gave him a hug just before we started, and he was just all in tears. And here we can see Daniela Moreno. Mate, she's killing she's it. She's on here. it. This is a great wave. Great wave. Great linked turns. A long, long down the line ride some nice high rises on the wave and sort of rides it all the way to the end of the line another look, good one for her and look at that drone shot too yeah now it's That's where that golden perfect. hour starts to happen where the colors really start to pop out again daniela i know someone who's going to have a smile and there we can see everybody getting the shot everybody wants to have a piece of the action you know. down here in sours we have the locals and a lot of the people from the hotels coming down to see what has been happening here on the island of Sal here in Punta Preta. And Daniela Moreno is going to be getting another good score. This is one of the best performances I've seen from the young Canarian athlete. Yeah. If you want to see highlights from the men's, make sure you check out the GKA Instagram account and also the Geotone Instagram channel as well. We've done a collab post. It's looking good and uh, really, really cool action from today. Look at this. Hard riding a bike on the sand. Yeah, and a big shout out to all of our partners. Thank you to F1 and Do Atone for making the extra push to make this event happen. And to everybody, all the institutions and everybody, you know, uh, Joe and Gianna from Nautic Sport Events here in Cape Verde. We cannot do this with you. And obviously, a big shout out to the live crew and to the media and to the GK crew. And as I mentioned, there's the teeth, there's the smile. And you can see people waiting to see if there is going to be a change in the results here so far as we continue on. And I tell you what, we can start to see that sun is about to take a dip in the water, mate. Yeah, we're closing up to the end of the day here with 4.20 left on the clock. It's a good amount of time just to finish the end of the day. Closing up with this final set by the looks of it. Lines to the horizon. Some good scores being being placed. All right, so continuing on. Look at her. She's happy. She's stoked. This is what we want to see from a competitor. Yeah, exactly. She's pumped. That was a nice way to end the day right there. With a smile on your face, a double wave score of 7.74. .74. We've got Simona answering back at the very end of the reef right there looking for a shore break slam. Um, but obviously it's getting harder and harder to stay at win. It is definitely getting harder because let's not forget whoever wins from Simona is going to be going up against Capuzin de Lenoir, ranked number two last year in that next heat. So we will have to see who is going to be making their through. And then there will be Simona, either Simona or Daniela will be going up against Muna White, your current world champion. Two and a half minutes on the ticker as we continue on. Yeah, and just taking a look at some of the highlights. 
that we have seen of this event. I mean, we've seen, there's been so many good, I mean, one of the best bowers we saw there from Ayrton. We've seen Mitu throw it down all the way from the top. Sebastian Rubeda with still the highest combination score of the day, even though he got kicked out earlier than he wanted to be. Uh, always a force to be reckoned with Sebastian Rubeda. Just coming up on 90 seconds, as we can see, Daniela Moreno there on your screen trying to make it out to see if she can have a final stand down but she is comfortably in the lead with 4.17 to 3.57 meaning that she is going to be moving her way through to the next round if she can keep that score because if I'm not mistaken it does look like um, Simona is a bit further out I have a feeling she's not going to be a get into position in time but still waiting for the action to happen as we are now coming to the final 60 seconds that is one minute ladies and gentlemen to a close of day number three yeah and what a and what an event lineup we've got so like talk us through the next couple of days Jay. what what have we got coming up well obviously we're going to be continuing on with the women as they are going to be getting through to see who is going to be crowned our queen here in cape verde and then our sister tour of the gwa wing four world tour is going to be coming in as we're going to see the wing foilers pay their dividends and come here to Punta Preta. last year we saw some amazing surfing out there with the wings and see who's going to take it. It was Muna White and Wesley Brito who took those top spots. And now Daniela is going to be dropping into yet another wave. And she is going to be closing this one out. Here we go. The young Canarian athlete. Already a nice top turn. The crowd is starting to give them the vibe. The sunset is behind her. Yeah, Golden hour. Closing this heat down in the final seconds. I'm impressed. She was on the beach a minute ago. She went back out. She's already in the lead, but she's ready for more. Yeah, she's ready for action. And she is officially, as that time is over, she is going to be closing this one out. So congratulations there to Daniela Moreno as she moves through to the next round. And there we can see Daniela making her way off. So she makes it through to the next round. What a day here for Punta Preta. Well, that's it. That's all, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. It has been one of the best days of kite surfing competition we have seen yet. A big congratulations to all of the athletes getting in the water and throwing down and to Ayrton Cosolino for taking the win here. I'm Josie Ashler. Thank you for joining in on the stream. Tom, thank you for being here with us. What a day, mate. What a day, Joe. Exactly. Yes, I have appreciated being here. I am Tom Court, and this has been the GKA live stream. See you tomorrow.
Resort Group believes in Cabo Verde and may you be very successful because success of the Resort Group is also the success of Cabo Verde. Thank you very much.